I realized I never started recording. Don't worry, YouTube, you only missed one, uh, one, one race. And if you hear, like, random voices in the background, don't worry about that either. Oh, oh no. Yeah, well, don't well they, can, they can clearly see who's, uh, who's, who's talking, because I still, I do have the Discord overlay up. Fair. Bingo. Also, I'm gonna be way behind, as I go. I wasn't expecting it to hit that person. I haven't done 200 CC in so long. How was I right up against that guy and got hit by zero of his turtle shells? Magic. Bingo! Okay, I gotta figure that out better. I'm in a I'm in a 150 CC mindset because nobody wants to play 200 CC with me. Every time it's like, hey, we should play 200 CC, and they're like, no, I'm scared. Eh. 200 CC is too scary, Tom. I never want to play that ever. It's kind of like me doing, doing high-end raid content. And at this point, I'm just like, mm, nah, I'm good where I'm at. The casual mindset is real. It gives you, it gives you life experience. It improves your hand-eye coordination. Makes it feel fast as well. Yeah! Too. You go fast, you eat ass! Yeah! Man, I wish I could. I don't know anyone to uh, have a consent <laughs> to it. But I can't do this. <laughs> and Tiger Tiger has the right idea. Oh, 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 the, the emotes. I was like, what do you mean you can do this? Where are you going with that? Uh, talk, yeah, I was talking about the emotes. <laughs> Don't make that alarm feel about that, sorry. That's why they won't let me have the keys to uh to set up Mario Kart nights uh anymore. Cause I wanna play 200 cc and nobody else does. Yeah, speaking of uh speaking of which, uh you managed to sneak into one game and just Play one race and then just oh yeah and then the left. Right well, I mean, I I, re I entered back in because they because uh there was confusion as to whether or not it was a viewer who just changed their name to mine. I fixed it. And uh -oh. also, man, to have the same uh, me as you. I fixed the overlay. What was the what was the so issue? So you go into the properties and you go to the link. Properties. It'll sh it'll say limit speaking equals true. Capitalize the T in true. That is. So all this time, it was a capitalization problem. Seems that way. That's real dumb. There we go. Case sensitive, folks. It works. Yep. Woo! Uh, so all this time... It. <laughs> what? So all this time, it's just... It was a case of case sensitivity. Yep. I'm... A little peeved at that, to be perfectly honest. Ever I'm so slight, ever so slightly peeved. I would be too if, if that was the, the uh, if that was the problem all this time. It's like, wait, are we dealing with passwords here? Case sensitivity. <laughs> we are escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalization: streams. What you got going on, Popsky? I still, I still gotta get back to you on like on the on the on the, the stuff for like what I what I'm looking for in a theme song, and yeah. I never and I have yet to do that. I'm just uh, writing tunes. That's, that's my day job, pretty much. Getting all of that commission money. Um, not as much as I would like, to be honest. With you. Uh. Not many people, people. Not, not many people commissioning or uh, or like the price or like what they're what they're requesting is lower than uh what you're like the, I like the price negotiation. Yeah, I'm not getting that many commissions. Ah. Yeah, it could be like that sometimes. Yo, anybody here need a theme song? Yeah, we got an artist from for you right here in the call. Hey, that's me. Too bad we don't have the uh, command in this particular chat, but if you go with Proton John, you can do, do exclamation point Botsky to do it. And you get all the information there. Oh boy. Oh! That baby Luigi, man. 
Oh, it's Poppy. Wisdom that requires a money and a face. Tris, do you have a face? You don't have a face, do you? Wait, you're a tree. What? Wait. Why would a tree have a face? Should I be concerned? Should we be concerned? Now nah, we're fine. Trees can have faces. It's like uh, it's like in, in the before the third chapter of Paper Mario when you enter the forest. Oh yeah, right. There's also uh, yeah. For, I remember having like uh one particular decoration that was like one of those uh, is it, yeah, it's one of those long decorations that you could put on on a tree that bas that basically puts a face on it. And mm -hmm. I've been. Well, I I pretty much grew up here in Florida for my whole entire life. My dad, and is a natural born Floridian as well too, and he he was basically grew up around the South Beach, uh, yeah, around the South Beach area, like Miami, West Palm Beach, that kind of area. So he is pretty much a big Miami Dolphins fan, and we got so much memorabilia when it comes to the Dolphins. All about that, uh, all about that that orange and teal. Yeah, pretty much. And also, as of late, uh, as of recently too, like for the past couple of years, we've been collecting like a bunch of uh, garden notes as well too, with um, a dolphin theme as well too. I'm surprised, uh, g given the fact that your your family are such big uh, dolphins fans, I'm kind of surprised your name isn't Dan after after the old quarterback of the. I, uh, funny enough, my actual the original name for my my original name was supposed to be Will, and my whole entire name was going to be a pawn. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Corey's just short for Dan. True, Mecca. Jesus Christ, we don't need any more Dan's in this group. Like, there are, there are a know. lot of, yeah, a lot of Dan's. We are, we are trying to start only Dan's. <laughs> what are these days? <laughs> yeah, because we got Motion Dan, we got Dan the Enigma. Uh... And that's it! <laughs> <laughs> Two Dan's, too many. But there are only two. Two Dan's, oh. too many. Oh, oh yeah. I was gonna say on the on the whole Garden Gnome thing as well too. Uh, Garden yeah, Gnome. Yeah, 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 because uh, again, with the whole collecting memorabilia, uh, there's like a whole collection of Garden Gnomes that you can get like for the various uh, football teams and we got a bunch of things uh, on the Dolphins as well too. Back in 2000, I think for Christmas of 2021, or was it? Yeah, it was when the uh, it was when the inauguration happened. Uh, they actually, of all things, decided to make a a, a garden gnome based off of uh, of the Bernie Sanders. Thing that happened from the inauguration. Oh the, oh, the the glove one. Yeah, the glove one. Yeah, they actually made a garden gnome based off of that meme. I can't be mad at it. It's. <laughs> It's not that really that bad of a meme, but yeah, it's I, I'm funny. just like, <laughs> I'm just impressed that they actually made that of all things, all being a garden gnome and also being to the dolphins as well too. It's wait, it's a wait, it's attributed to the dolphins? Yeah, it's it has the it has the it has the yeah it's it has the colorings of it and also has the dolphins logo on it and is in the style of the Bernie Sanders meme. But it doesn't look like Bernie Sanders, it's just the pose that he was in from that. I thought it was like uh, a... Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it does oh, look like Bernie Sanders. It has the glasses, it has. It basically has the beer. It basically looks like Bernie Sanders if he was a cardinal. Good lord. While also being a fan of the Dolphins. Capitalism just ruins a lot of things. It's, it's very bizarre. <laughs> Football is a sport. Go Packers. Football is a sport. Go Dolphins. Yeah. I gotta go to the doctor at some point. It feels like there's something in my throat and there's nothing in my throat. Speaking of doctors, uh, how's the uh, vet appointment for the for the pup belt? He uh, so he he's got he's got like seasonal allergies, so they uh -huh. gave him a, they gave him a shot for that. And because of his allergies, he had ear infections. So they gave him some medicine for that. And then I was like, cool, I'll, uh, we're all good then. I'm gonna take him to the park. And then he got stung by something, <laughs> and his face swelled up. Oh no. That sounds like a sore throat. I have had, I have, it doesn't hurt. It just feels like there's something in there. So, and the swelling hasn't gone to too bad, has it? No, the swelling, the swelling went down after a day. Okay, so. I posted the picture, like, um, the swelling spread a little bit to the other side of his face, but I posted a picture of it on, uh, on Twitter. 
I mean, it would, it wouldn't be too uh, off if it, if it was sort of like me or. Oh yeah. Sort of. Well, he also likes to play. Uh, he likes to play catch the bug. So if 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 there's something flying and he, he's gonna if there's something flying near him that's like tall or small, it's like bug sized. He's gonna try and go for it. That or water. Right. Yeah. But I, but water doesn't sting. Yeah. Not unless it's like high pressure and uh, aimed directly at your face. Yeah. Which of course means like power wash. Right. <laughs> but not like sting in the traditional sense. Not like the wrestler. <laughs> I am not a singer. Yeah. What a wrestler singer. That would be an interesting combo. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, m most most wrestlers. Well, not, I wouldn't no. say most, but like, but like, a lot of wrestlers are in show business as well. So, it yeah. it would make sense if they could if they could sing. Uh, uh, yeah, the, and some of them do like believe have a band, I believe. I think. Does Chris Jericho have a band? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's at least that's the one that comes to mind when I think of that. I was just thinking of the combination of staying as the wrestler or a singer. That would be an interesting combo if that doesn't already sing. Like their gimmick, their gimmick is that they sing. Yeah, there's oh. been a couple of those. No, I was thinking just the combination of Sting as the wrestler and the singer. Oh, oh. Uh, like like if they were to do the fusion, like if Sting and Sting were to do the fusion dance to form Sting, and they do both. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, that would be weird. That'd be really confusing if you were to like fuse, if you were to do like the fusion dance with two people that have the same name. Because it'd just be like, oh, cool, Steve and Steve fused to form like, oh, it'd be like Steve. 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 They would just like, they would just double up on the names. Steven. <laughs> Steve. Steve. Stevie. That's why. That's why. Uh, what was it? If <laughs> that's probably the only reason why Gohan and Goku didn't didn't do the uh, Potara fusion in uh in Dragon Ball Z because they couldn't come up with a name for it. Go go. Then it took like a couple more years later until we finally had a father uh, father son combination in Steven Universe. Oh yeah, Steg. Oh. oh boy, I got things to say about Steg. Yeah, raw male sexual energy. <laughs> no. And it feels so weird because there's also the, the problem with Steven involved with it, but oh god, Steg. That that was a good uh, bisexual moment right there. Or gay moment. I mean, for <laughs> me it's... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for you. I'm just, I'm just saying across the board, Everybody can enjoy Steg on a sexual level is basically what I'm saying. Uh, to an extent, but yes. Because again, there is the issue of Steven involved, but... That's true, yeah. Oh no, Yuki got an error. Oh no. Hopefully it works out for you, Yuki. Someone in the chat said bisexual panic, which just made me think of, uh... During uh during D and D when uh when when Cooley actually it like said that she she, uh, she actually had gay panic from uh Kelly's character. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So far we got Debbie's with with the gay action with uh, Logan and uh, Cicero, and now we have your group with <laughs> with the lesbian action going on with Gloria and, and uh what's her name? Uh Gloria and uh, and Pandora. Oh not Pandora. Uh, Oh, oh, Gloria. Uh, I'm sorry, Gloria and, uh, 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 oh my god, what the hell is Kelly's character's name? Yeah. Starts with a P. Uh, Valeria. Yeah, yeah, Valeria. I was not gonna pronounce that name right off the top of my head, because I am... Vidalia! <laughs> Vidalia, Vidalia, Vidalia. Yeah, Vidalia. Or Vidalia. Because, I don't know if you can hear this, but I do have a bit of a pyramid, uh, speech pyramid. So yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, uh, is it me or is this Fidelia just really give off that Tim Burton? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Burton. The design is very Tim Burton. Uh -huh. Bingo! 
like 100, 110% corpse bride energy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it's very corpse bride. <laughs> oh, shoot! Oh. It's interesting to see, like, the... Just the way your party looks in, in terms of, like, art style, because you've got Gloria, who is very anime-looking, Fidelia with the... with the tin burden look, and then Pandora... Then Pindar with a goth aesthetic. We uh, have we basically have like a mid two thousands anime convention as our as our group. And then there's Ribeye. We're just missing. No, that I mean like we're, that that's I think that still counts. Yeah. I mean, well, just for the fact that we're just missing a Yaoi paddle, and then our uh, and then our party will be complete. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Just clocking, oh. clocking. Faye over the head with the yali paddle. <laughs> oh. Well, also say though that was essentially a good clutch moment that happened during that last session. Not enough guys in the campaign for yali, but but I'd say there's there's enough people in the campaign to warrant one of them wielding a yali paddle though. Just because just because we have it doesn't mean it has to be used in the party. Also, also with size character being a changeling. He he can pretty much be whatever he wants to be, right? He's just, he's just decided to go with the... Uh, I think so. Is, yeah. I think he's just going with what we're basically dubbing uh, Sand Rising. Or Rising Sand, actually. Yeah. Uh, he didn't he didn't know about that when, uh, when, uh, when he made his character. Well, especially with the... I mean, we're mostly getting it just from the voice. Though. Well, well, here's the thing. <laughs> there are so many people that, like... Because uh, Kelly introduced her character first. And she went very, very southern with it, which made, which made Cooley mess up a little bit with that by making her character sound southern. And then Sai was next, and he just made his character sound southern, because <laughs> just because of like all the southernness that was going on around that. Yeah, and then we have a Kevin basically as a, as a, as a Ronin samurai. Yep. Okay? So, then throw in the but after that, after that first session, because of that, I was like, uh, "Sai, have you heard of Rising Zan?" And he's like, "I have never heard of this, but this looks amazing." And to be fair, not a whole lot of people do. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's a that's a pretty obscure PS One game. Uh -huh. And plus, uh, in terms of how ridiculous it is, this seem very god hand. It'll be interesting to see like if someone actually decides to remake that, uh, remake that game. Well, remake the game and remaster. And for a mod of costume, because that would be kind of fun, especially like a like a. I have I, I have no idea how or if they would do that though, especially especially considering the fact that it's like it's not like I don't think I, I like I didn't hear about it until that stream. Uh -huh. Oh, then, oh, then again, from what we have seen from well, especially from what I've seen of the game, which is twice at this point, because I believe. I know John started it up on a on a fortune cookie right before yeah right before the new right before the uh, the, the new year basically mm -hmm. because of uh he was he did that as an incentive for someone who literally calls Zan Rising and because they were pushing the game hard during a charity event and he wanted to obligate that and then the next time that happened uh, was well the stream that you were on yeah yeah. And basically, you just basically saw everything that happened during that point up to... I, actually, we saw the... That pretty much all I've seen, I think, of that game at that point. But still, not a lot. Like, the, the, the point is that, like, it doesn't it doesn't have, like, the, the widespread nostalgia factor to warrant, like, any sort of, like, a, any sort of remaster or remake. Yeah. And also, we don't know what else the game has to offer that can actually make a cohesive uh, system out of it. Right. But then again, also having a remaster wouldn't be too bad because of that story. Some parts of the story may be a little <laughs> age. I, I mean, like, that, that's, that remains to be seen because we have because we didn't get that far in it. Oh, also, the, I mean, one of the girls is basically running a bikini wearing a bikini top and sh short shorts. That didn't, that didn't stop Pyron Mithra's design. Uh... I mean, compared with the Give other girls who are more moderately dressed, like wearing asshole dresses, that would be fitting of that kind of period. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Designs may change. Uh-huh. 
yeah. You could say you, you could say you could say the same about uh, Live Alive. Yeah, but I think that, that had a significantly larger cult following than Rising Xan. Yeah. Because yeah, I think Live Alive. Uh, live Alive. Yeah, live Alive. I I, I'm, I'm going based on what the guy said in the uh, in the announcement for it on uh, on uh, that that one day. Yeah. Yeah, level. Yeah. That one fateful day. That uh, Nintendo Direct. That Nintendo Direct where they, where they announced it. It was it was live alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with that, uh, live alive at least is unique in that aspect with this, with how that got, with how it's set up, and compared to Rise of Zen, which might be a little bit more complicated to sort out. Live Alive wasn't released in America until recently. Well, neither was Mother 3, and that still has a cult following. Mm -hmm. And it's more likely still going to be an issue until they this finally decided, hey, maybe it's time. Seeing, uh, I don't know what age rating they would try to get for Mother 3, but having played the fan translation myself, I can kind of see why it would struggle to make it to the United States. Especially if, especially if they wanted to keep it as a team rating. Yeah. Or so. E10 is really pushing it. At, uh, yeah, there's no way that I could get it like an E10 rating. E T, it would be safe. Yeah, I have no idea where the Majipsies would fall on that. I mean, for one thing, probably not use that particular name because of a. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if they localize it. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, yeah, that is yeah, that's definitely a problem because uh, how long do you localize something that is basically kind of essential to the plot? Is team ready uh, for drug use? On top of, uh, on top of that, like there there are some people who who I, I've seen like arguments where it's like it probably shouldn't be officially released because they would probably change so much and like try to put in try to like a uh, shoehorn in um like uh what are they called like pop culture references and, and whatnot. Despite the fact that uh, that's kind of the point of Mother or two at points. Well, it, it doesn't. I mean, like the the charm's kind of fallen off of that. Like it's here. It, like the, the the issue is that like the issue is is less on on the front of like the uh, what do you call it? Whew. I mean, like uh, like I mean I, I mean like really shoehorn them in. I don't mean like like having them come up sort of like naturally for like what the time would would be what would be uh, era appropriate. I'm just saying like really like shoehorn them in to basically turn the game into something that like wouldn't really last. Oh, like yeah, Borderlands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tiny yeah. Tina. And, and yet and yet we do have Tiny Tina's uh whatever the hell it is called. Wonderland. Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Yeah. Yeah. I've been yeah I've been hearing some negative things about at least three, but. At the very least, when it comes to the story, gameplay-wise, it's amazing. Apparently. Hey, that's Kingdom Hearts to me in a nutshell. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Three is great gameplay. It's just too bad about the story. This is why we don't give Nomura this much power. Did we were getting a fourth one. Mm hmm. Or I kind of hope they put the I, 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 like. Just I I hope they just eliminate the Disney aspect of it altogether. Aside from like like Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Donald, Goofy, and Mickey, because like my God, everything about that game with like the 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 Disney worlds, at least in three, it, it felt more natural in one. Oddly enough, yeah, the Disney worlds just feel like padding. Yeah, what's just yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, they're like small stories that like that are just, that like kind of distract from like the major plot. Occasionally, you'll see like a character come in that like, oh, it's like, oh, blah, 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 darkness, yada yada yada. Yeah. And, and, and that's it. And that's all you'll you'll see of them in that in that one particular instance of that area, out of like the like the the three hours you're spending there. And they usually have to just do with the boss battle, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. I I see uh, Saxy SS, and I want uh my Final Fantasy characters back. I want to mind that as well, but. Then again, considering it's no more at this point, I'm very certain he's gonna insert more his characters than anyone else from the rest of the series. Yeah, everybody loves King. <laughs> he's just using Kingdom Hearts as a platform to advertise his other stuff. <laughs> was Nomura was uh, was Nomura responsible for the world ends with you? Yes. There yes, we go. Yeah. The three the, the 3D makes a lot of sense now. Mm -hmm. It. 
yeah, n yeah. If you look at uh, if you look at the art for uh, uh, World's End Review, that very that very much has Nomura's uh, art style written all over it. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting when I look at uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two and see the uh, Torner Blades. I'm just like, yeah, that's Nomura. Yeah. Although with Kingdom Hearts 4, it does seem like he is really excited to finally make a uh, versus 13, I believe. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, th uh, versus 13, I believe, was one project he was working on before that got scrapped and got turned into 15. Oh, so he's. Wow, oh, they're still going with 13, huh? <laughs> ah, man. Yeah, Final Fantasy versus 13, which I have, I heard the, the name, I don't know the full uh, context of it. At least the plan for it, that is. I mean... Yazora is literally it, Beta Noctis. It, he looks like him, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And again, there's also something I want to say, but I don't want to spoil it. Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts leaves a lot to be desired in a lot of places. Three honestly just felt like a vehicle for various other projects. Like, it was because, from what I understand, they were told to not modify Tangled or Frozen at all. I mean, at the very least with Tangled, well, I'm probably fine with that just because I like Tangled as a movie, and it is a pretty good movie. I, 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 <laughs> I, I like it on the merit that, like, at the very, I like it better than Frozen at the very least that Donald and Goofy were involved with the plot. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I think you will enjoy Tango as a movie. It is a. Good I've, movie. I've seen I've seen Tango. It's a, good, it's a good movie, but like I, I'm still I like it again. I like it better on the merit that at least there were, you know, Donald and Goofy were involved. Oh yeah, you, you said you didn't see the uh, seen the movie at, at the point. Right at the at the time of playing King Wars three, I hadn't seen the movie, but I, I have now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. With some of the chances uh, for some of the things that they did with that, it kind of works a little bit to the favor. Frozen, on the other hand, at the plus yep. side, though... You go down, you go up the mountain, you go down the mountain, you go up the mountain, everything looks like Olaf. On the plus side, though, they did a really good job mimicking the movie. I, it's, it's... But that's not that's not a game, though. If I, I want, If I wanted to see the movie, I'd watch the movie. I'd rather not watch the movie. That's what, that's, what, that's what made the... Like... I kind of put the uh, the Big Hero Six and uh, and Tangled um, worlds kind of like on the, on like the same level, because like I didn't like the way the Big Hero Six world was laid out, but like the story was fantastic. The story it told was fantastic. Yeah, at the very least, that was also technically an original story because can't uh, can't really say much on uh, on on Dark Baymax though. Tristan, <laughs> I got some bad news for you. It already exists. It is in Epcot. And it replaced, and it actually replaced a good ride. Well, I mean, like, but what Trisman is saying is that, like, it, you know, the good news is that you don't even have to go to Epcot. You can just play Kingdom Hearts 3. And you got frozen the ride. <laughs> I mean, then again, uh, Frozen has been basically in development hell for a long time. It's only now that, that they decided to do it release it as is, and then finally get a sequel, and it became, well, the first movie was a mega just enough with everything involved in it. Second one, not so much. I haven't been on Maelstrom myself, but yeah. I haven't been to Disney World in over a decade. <laughs> I've never yeah. been. Yeah. But then again, well, I haven't been to Disney technically this year, and at most, we only stayed at the, one of the campsites because we're kind of cheap and dizzy is expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we well, maybe just went just to see the fireworks, and we didn't actually see the fireworks because we we got mixed up on the time for that because we were told, oh, it goes up at 9 p.m. Turns out it was at 8 when the park was starting to close. Bingo! Well, it's mostly just because they want to do the show early so people have time to get out of the park. <laughs> those those aren't fireworks, they're warning shots. Get out of the park. Considering it's Florida, it could go either way. Heck, even tons of ice. I hear, like, something going off at this. It could be, it could be gunshots, it could be fireworks. 
Who knows? That's true. I yeah. think I, so. I, I mentioned uh, like like a couple weeks ago on the vlog that uh, a building caught fire near my house. I think whoever started the fire is still like throwing fireworks or something out of their uh, out of their car because I'm pretty sure I heard them last night. Either that or they were sh I, either that or their or their car was backfiring or they're shooting a gun. One of the two. Yeah. Yep. Texas and Florida. <laughs> Far <from> long distance <laughs> siblings that. <laughs> and we should probably keep them far away from each other. Texas, te the thing with Texas as well is that it has like. God, you have like. You'll have places in Texas that are like these stalls. And they're like, they're everywhere. They are freaking everywhere. Where it's like, hey, buy one firework, get eight free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, with the uh, since June's gonna be coming, uh, they're gonna be seeing a lot more fireworks stalls, mm -hmm, and probably a lot of fires. As if the as if the West isn't already on fire already, because I know New Mexico is a bit on fire from what I heard. Hopefully, y'all are staying safe out there. But yeah. It's, on how I, I can't believe that I, I like I, I can't believe that uh, that the 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 Americans that like expanded to the uh, to the the West or whoever or, like whoever like landed here when they were expanding to the West is like yeah we want to take this territory when so much of the United States is just completely unusable for anything nothing but nothing but prairies as far as the eye can see maybe some maybe some Rocky terrain here or there. What, like, what is the point of Utah? Anyone That's from Utah I'm want saying. to answer? Anyone from Utah want to answer, or, or just to confirm? Yeah, there's nothing out here. Jazz? Morbin. <laughs> That's the basketball team. Is the Utah Jazz? <laughs> oh yeah, the Mormons. As a for as a former Utahn, I am offended. Is that what it, what someone from Utah is called? A Utahn? <laughs> Sound like aliens. But uh, but the aliens is in Nevada. <laughs> like, Las like Las Vegas and Los Angeles should not exist. <laughs> there are still there are cities built on deserts. The only reason they're there was because there was gold. <laughs> Which shiny rock we found valuable. Yeah, I've been to, yeah, I've been to Vegas just once. Bas was, oh. Basically, California was made of fuck you money, so th that's why they were able to import stuff there to make it livable. <laughs> and it still makes money. Hmm. It's like, you can easily put your your sin cities like, in a more reasonable, habitable space out the, out besides in the middle of the desert, but then again, there maybe are some benefits to having it out in the middle of nowhere. Like, something going through all you need to hide the body. I'm just saying. Why? Yeah, California was born from gold, now it runs a silicon. And that silicon is being dried up because of cable. People decided to burn it on stupid vultures. Oh, let's not get into that. Yeah. I like monkeys. They're cool people. Mm -hmm. Until they decided to throw the poo at you. Well, it depends on what kind of monkey. Yeah, true. You don't want to make a monkey angry. Don't don't stand between an ape and what it wants. Make sure you get the monkey the, the banana. <laughs> no, no, I'm just reminded of the one Ed. Yeah, I'm just reminded of the one bit, uh, one thing from Ed and Eddie, just the episode oh, with the boys are just missing and just. They're trying to piece together everything. And I'm just reminded of Jim. 
of Jimmy going, I'm a monkey, feed me a minute. I don't remember oh. that episode. Mm. Yeah. There's a, there's some weird stuff I remember from cartoons. Like, of all things from Billy and Mandy, the one thing I remember is from Guess What's Coming for Dinner. Or, it's the scene where the principal comes up, uh, Eris comes out of the door, he, he rings the thing, and then he, she decides to slap him with a, a fish, and he goes, why do you... Oh yeah, why'd you slap me? <laughs> why'd you slap me with a trout because the halibut wasn't fresh? Yeah, I thought it was a mackerel. Well, I don't remember what fish it was, but but that was the, the joke is essentially the same. Yeah, it's just a bizarre line. To, yeah, it's just a bizarre moment for me to quote of all things from that show. It's uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's a, uh, I mean like it's also like very like. I, I like that kind of humor where it's where it's a uh, it, it's misdirection. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you're not asking why they slapped you with that particular breed of fish. It's that why, why did you slap them in general, particularly <laughs> with a fish? And then you have like a retort, which does this. Right, and, and, and the, but the retort is in regards to what kind of fish it was, not why did you slap me? Mm -hmm. It's just a bizarre moment, but it sticks. And it's funny. Like a non sequitur? Yeah. The whole show is built around severe humor and also a bit of goth, uh, gothic, Go, humor. Yeah, gothic humor. D mm -hmm. Dark, dark and, and like gothic, gothic humor. Yeah. I, I, that makes me think of that, that Simpsons quote that I've been that I've been going around with like for a while, where it's like, you know, why why do we need church sh shoes? Jesus wore sandals, and Homer responds with, "Well, maybe if he had better art support, they wouldn't have caught him." It's <laughs> it's like 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 that's not the response you're expecting. You're expecting them to be like a parent, like in in that regard. But it's but instead they come out and say like, you know, like yeah, you, you, you get shoes so that way you don't gotta be like Jesus. <laughs> and hopefully not get betrayed by your brother. By by your disciples. Yeah. And for a couple of silver coins. I don't know why the idea of Judas being Jesus' brother made me laugh. Oh, I say brother in the figurative sense. Right, right. I feel like I saw something, uh... I feel like it was recently where it's like the Terminator goes back to, uh, to Jesus' time and stops Judas from betraying him. <laughs> and Jesus is like, what the hell? I was expecting that this was supposed to happen! I don't think any of us can do, do a good Arnold voice for that as a comeback. It's a good one liner for that. Oh boy. Oh, get back on the stage. That uh, got to me rather quickly. How much would 20 silver pieces be worth in today's money anyway? Silver pieces? Yeah, silver. I don't know what the price of silver is right now. Sounds like a setup for Command & Conquer 4. All I, can, all I can think of is this one particular meme. For, I don't know the original origin of it, but I, I the only the punchline for it is 14 cents. <laughs> I feel like. Oh the, yeah. What? I, I've been thinking about this for a while. Like, like almost every decade in the 1900s was like associated with something like the Warren, uh, the Warren, yeah, the. The well, Warren twenties. Well, well, I was thinking, I was thinking like, uh, like, um, like how like the sixties was like the hippie age, and like seventies was like disco, and like eighties was like, you oh, know, yeah. was like the, was sort of like techno, and um, the nineties was oh, like grunge. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. In terms of like, pop, in terms of like pop culture phenomenon, things yeah. like that. I'm wondering, like, oh. like I feel like, I, and I, I'm not sure. Like this, this could be like as somebody who's um, who's who like currently lived through it, versus like looking back on like you know, I mean, I lived through the nineties as well, but I was young. Versus like looking back on those decades and being able to uh, to uh, generalize them in such a way, what would like the 2000s and 2010s be known for? Oh, let's see here. Yeah, the 30s start. was the Great Depression, 40s was the War Era, like that. Yeah, I I know the 90s is mostly known as the essentially the Dark Age. Also, I mean, that's like uh, I, 90s was like grunge. Like that's mm -hmm. how I know the 90s. It was it was like it was like the grunge age. All, uh, and of course, if, if you're talking to certain people, it's like the dark age of comics as well, too, because of just how edgy everything was during that. And also, that was also during the round the uh, speculator boom as well, too. And, uh, and, and also, like, I'm, I'm meaning more like in the pop culture, culture sense. 
Mm -hmm. which, which is where I'm, I'm seeing like chat's responses for this. Yeah. The age, uh, 2000 is the age of the internet. 2010s, 2010s I, I can see is like the dubstep age. Yeah. Oh yeah. 2000s I think, if we're talking in terms of music, I definitely see like, maybe like, bubblegum pop kind of, maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell, like, because I, I feel like, I feel like once the, someone, someone had kind of mentioned this, I feel like once the internet kind of took hold, we kind of lost track of like what how that worked. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, because I remember the early 2000s is definitely like the like the boy band kind of era. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see I can see that like the like the 2000s, even like in the late 2000s, like uh, I can see that as being still being the in the boy band era. Mm. Yeah, it's not as much, but but uh, but kind of. Yeah, I can definitely associate with uh, bubblegum pop in a sense. I think it, I think it also uh, a little bit to do with like when video sharing really like uh, really stepped it up. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, and also like the early days of, like Napster and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Napster was like 2005 or so. I don't remember when Napster came around. It was earlier than that. My brother was downloading stuff off of Napster when I was like 10. Mm. Yeah. Napster, bam. Oh. Yeah, for me, I I have no access to that because I was living out in the booth and we have like no source of internet outside of like um dial up like lime lime wire when everyone was wondering why their uh why their song or yeah why 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 is this thing i downloaded an mp3 or not an mp3 <laughs> an exe why is this the, why is the song i downloaded an exe no napster was 1999 yeah huh. i was way off 2010s is the EDM dubstep. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I can see that. That was definitely like a big thing that was happening like the 2010s. 2000s was the edgy age. 2010s was the digital age, and I can see, I can see that 2000s is the edgy age. Yeah. Because that was yeah, that was that was like, oh yeah, big, yeah. big time in the like the emo movement. Was was the two thousands? Yeah, there was a lot of attitude that was happening in that particular area, especially in video games. I, especially in video games, the all sorts of oh, I, yeah, there was definitely edgy advertisements in the nineties, but it's definitely a lot more prevalent during the two, or early two thousands. That's for sure. Ooh, somebody said I think somebody said twenty n twenty tens could be seen of as like the superhero age. I could see that as well. Especially, especially, like with the with the rise of Marvel, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm I'm like subconsciously being contrarian, but I honestly like DC better. Well, I shouldn't say I like DC better. I like the DCAU, like the yeah. like Bat Batman, uh, Batman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Superman, Justice League. Yeah. yeah Batman Beyond especially. Better. Yeah, especially like uh, yeah, you're more or less talking about like the Tim first era style of the AU. Yeah, which is which is good, which is good. I I honestly like uh, Static Shock. It was like Oh yeah, Static Shock was incredible. And and uh -huh. it, and like that show also introduced like like Static Shock as a legitimate DC superhero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Where's the piece uh Dwayne Badoffy? Virgil uh, Virgil Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, honestly I think uh in terms of, like the DC heroes, I think Static Shot would be like my number one favorite uh hero. Static is a good one. Mm -hmm. Uh, I liked uh, I liked the DCAU's version of the Flash, which uh, one thing I didn't realize uh until like I kind of like looked up uh or I I've been watching a lot of like uh like, um, like the, that's very uh, that's very right. No, in uh in Justice League it was Wally West, but like okay. uh but in um I think it was uh that like cause, cause during that time Barry Allen was considered dead in the comics, so uh. So when they were planning on bringing um, bringing the Flash into the universe, like that that uh, like Bruce Tim wanted to use Barry Allen, but the heads at uh, DC wanted to use Wally West. So for the first like two, the first two seasons of uh, of Justice League, they never say which which version of the Flash it is until uh, until the uh, the uh, I think I think it was the season two finale where it's revealed that he is Wally West. And I'm just remembering the the one uh, the one moment from the. 
from Justice League, where Lex Luthor decides to swap bodies. Well, he doesn't decide to do it. What what ends up happening is is um. Well, I'm trying to think. The, the whole thing was that uh, Doctor Fate was trying to use the Flash as a catalyst to locate Gorilla Grodd because uh, they had because uh, Gorilla Grodd and the Flash had um had like a mental connection before where, where Gorilla Grodd took over Flash's mind. And meanwhile, at the same time, uh, Gorilla Grodd had information that he was withholding from. He, Gorilla Grodd was imprisoned by Lex Luthor at the uh, at like this that Legion of Doom fortress. And was withholding information, and was using I don't remember the character's name, some some kind of witch, um, to try to pry into Gorilla Grodd's mind to get the information out of him. And what ended up happening is because of uh, because of that, or maybe, maybe it was technology. I don't remember. Because of uh, of shenanigans, it's that's how that's how that's how Luke Thor and um and uh, Wally ended up switching brains. It's comic book logic, basically. Yeah. They basically just needed a plot point for the reason for them to switch. But my favorite thing about that is that um. The the actor who played the Flash in the DC animated universe is the same actor who plays uh, Lex Luthor in uh, Smallville. Oh yeah. yeah. So when so when Lex and the Flash switch brains, it's just it's just the actor playing Lex again. You gotta love uh, casting choices like that at points. I, I'm I'm sure that was the entire reason why they did that episode. Yeah, maybe I just brought it up just because of the fact of just the line of. When he does the face reveal of, of the Flash, he oh, yeah. just goes, I have no if idea who this person is. If nothing else, I can find out what the Flash's secret identity is. Lifts the mask off, looks in the mirror, a frown appears in his face. I have no idea who this is. <laughs> so Here, good. It, it's also a, a great credit to both uh, both the actors uh, because because so many so many uh, like shows do this, and it pisses me off when characters switch bodies and their voices and, and like their voices go along with it i hate that i hate it when it when it's like uh when it's like oh we're switching bodies oh well now this character sounds like the character that he came from so but yeah. but they didn't do that in uh in this version no it's it's you know it's the guy who played the flash pretending to be the flash as lex Luthor and vice versa yeah yeah so, you don't so, like the whole you, so, you honestly don't like the whole trope of the uh, voice of mental sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. So yes. like so like the whole the whole um what what was the the thing so like Clancy Brown started like adopting this dude bro persona as uh, as Lex Luthor was great whoa and again that kind of reminds me of uh same dude bro that kind of I don't yeah it's not exactly the same personality but it just kind of reminds me of his uh take a uh, character the Kurt uh, Kurgan from the Highland the movie mm -hmm. just. Then again, it's not like being all heavy and evil during that particular moment. But it still has that bit of what? like, who the hell even came up with that voices are mental like logic to begin with? Because that it's it, it's incredibly frustrating. Where it's like, yeah, no, like of, of course, like the, the, it's their brain, so they they would have their voice, right? No, they're in a body that has completely different vocal cords and a different <laughs> face shape. <laughs> Yeah, I know the most recent example I saw of that was actually in One Piece during Punk Hazard, which did that particular thing. With, and that was not be because of a. Uh, was that the Shadow thing? No, 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 no. It's not Shadow thing. It was because of a uh, Trafalgar Ma, uh, swapping hearts. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it was not. I, a I, 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 I think the whole thing is that is that uh, people who make these shows think that their audiences are stupid is what it boils down to. Yeah, but, even though, despite the fact that with uh, One Piece works, uh, uh, well, at least with the line, uh, writing for that, well, then again, One Piece is more or less, at the end of the day, it's a shonen series for, essentially for young, for young boys, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, been... well, given the amount of blood and, and, uh, and skin in, the, in that, that show, I th and, and manga as well, too. Yeah. <laughs> My god, they're so ahead of us. Man, I honestly can't wait for the dub to finally get caught up where it is in the anime. Well, they did that in the, in the, uh, in Punk Hazard on the, uh, in, like, the original as well. For, for the voice, the voices being mental thing. When they swapped hearts. It, it, it was like, you know, it was, oh, yeah. 
like Nami's yeah. voice coming out of Frankie or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah, Nami was in Frankie. Sanji was in. Yeah, Sanji was in was Nami supposed... because, of course, it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Frankie was in Chopper, which would leave Chopper and Sanji. Mm hmm. Oh, no, wait. Frankie was also involved, so. No, Frankie was in Chopper. Right. Yeah, Frankie was in Chopper. Chopper was in Sanji. Sanji was in Nami. Nami was in Frankie. Okay, okay. I might have misheard that. <laughs> uh, Dub is currently at the Big Mom Mark. Yeah, it's currently going through whole cake at the current moment. I, uh, I know where exactly it is at this point. Because I, I've been going through that as of late, and I need to get myself caught up because they decided to release a new batch of episodes for that. I, uh, I, I've been keeping up with the uh, with the original. Well, I kept up with the original for a while, but uh, what ended up happening, Proton Egg, uh, what ended up happening was um, uh, I just kind of fell off of it. So like, I'm at like, I don't know what, like, I don't think I've watched in over a year, and I think they're still at the same place that they that like they were in terms of like like physical location. In, in terms of in terms of where I was at at the point, I was like before the current batches of episodes have been coming out. I was basically stuck at Fishman Island for the longest time, and, and Fishman Island was kind of dragged for a bit. This is, a uh, like, One Piece is suffering, like, significantly worse, uh, like, like, episodes dragging on than, than Dragon Ball is, because they're caught up to the manga. Yeah. Also, I think that's also because of the fact that it's also Toei doing the animation as well, too. So they're trying to keep... trying to... Well, if you know how they're doing with, you know how they did with Dragon Ball, they're kind of basically doing the same thing with One Piece at this point. Fishman Island is slow, but uh, it may be one of the most important arcs uh, to, for the end story. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, oh yeah. No, oh, no, don't get me wrong though. Everything that happens in One Piece does play in the ports in, into the grand scheme. Well, once like, they actually decide to reveal lore, mm -hmm. and it's the because basically One Piece is base. Uh, One Piece boils down to at least for me anyway. Chess piece is moving on a board, followed by uh, followed by lore dump, followed by a big battle and lore dump. Yeah, especially with what happened in the manga as of recently. Expect a giant lore dump. Also, I believe we're also just seeing the end. Yeah, with what's happening in the manga, Wano is basically coming to an end at this point. We're basically at the climax for one. God, I, I wonder like how close the anime is like to the manga. I would not mind if like, are they afraid that like popularity is gonna wane if they took like a year off from making it just so they could have like, like better paced episodes? Yeah, because at the very least there are, they're working on a new movie now. Their merchandising is still a thing. Damn. It's not like they, it's not like they can't they're not losing any money off of this property, especially considering it is one of the big three. In fact, the top manga, with although it might be so, soy impeached by spy uh, spy uh, spy family, but but yeah, I, I think I, basically what, what I'm trying to say is I think the whole thing would just benefit from. Like, yeah, yeah. Like a I break. Agree. I just think it would benefit yeah. from. I, I think the anime would benefit from a break. Yeah, I honestly agree. Because there are other manga out there that because do uh, like uh, do uh, take like years off before the next season happens. When the, when the manga ends in like ten years, and uh, you know, I'm being I'm being a, a little bit on the safe side with uh, with that one. It's probably gonna go on for another twenty. Um, <laughs> In, in like ten years after that manga as ends, we're gonna we're gonna get like One Piece Kai, where they're fight where they're gonna just cut down all of like the the filler and the padding into another thing and resell it to us like they would, did with Dragon Ball. Honestly, that would kind of be nice as well too. At the very least, it will help people to get into One Piece that are just intimidated intimidated by the sheer size of everything, including the filler as well too. There's like, on top of that, like, the, the one thing uh, about like a show going on this long is that like, have the characters 
have the main characters just kind of become bland to anybody else? Uh, in terms of, in terms of main, uh, in terms of the main crew, I can see it a bit, especially like with Zoro, who basically have like nothing going for him, as far as I know. Like none of the characters, like it's, it's, they're all basically just like they're all basically just like enablers to Luffy. Like that's their entire character. Yeah. It Like, the, the, the best parts of those characters were when they were having, gen, gen, like, like actual character development. You know, like, uh... Like, you know, Nami, uh... Like, uh, Nami and her struggle against Arlong. Uh, Usopp coming to terms with having to get rid of the, the Mary. Like, all those ones. We are way past that. Like, there are very few stories left to tell with these characters. Yeah. Because most of, most of their struggles are tied up in a bow, and it's just their end goals that we have left. Yeah, because, at least for me at the current moment, the, the current character who's getting the, the arc at the moment is Sanji. And as far as I know, I have no idea who who's getting an arc in Wano. So, as far as I know, that's no one at this point, right? Anyone Pretty much! Me? It's it's mostly just pushing the, uh... Like, probably, uh, Zoro probably gets the most character development out of, uh, out of the entire Wano thing. Hmm. Which is saying something because I don't think he has gotten like any major character developments in a long time. Yeah, Chopper. Chopper is pretty much completely developed. By the way, Liam, do you want to come into the uh, into the voice chat? Yeah, get more get more people in. You oh. are okay. You are a, a mod on here, so you should just be able to join the uh, the streaming and recording uh, yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, because I have a kept up with the manga. And I'm not going any further in this in terms of subs at, at the carbon i'm sticking i'm sticking with the dub and that's gonna be my pain for okay he's hopping in yep yeah sure just give me a minute all right cool i apologize if we're if we're born to the death of all the anime talk popsky i don't watch anime <laughs> sorry i don't know <laughs> we were just kind of going all over the place in terms of stuff going to the mall they say yeah, I'm playing uh, Vampire Survivors right now. Ah. Yeah. yeah, meanwhile, I'm just doing 14 stuff in the background. What's that uh, new vampire game that just came out? Like V, v Rising? V, v Rising, yeah. yeah. Yeah, V Rising. I haven't seen anything about it. I know uh, Brett has been playing it on mm. his side. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea what that game's about. Yeah, I got a Steam Deck and all I've been playing is fucking Vampire <laughs> Oh, look at you with your fancy Steam Deck. Meanwhile, how are you, how are you enjoying that? The Steam Deck. Okay. Uh, just loaded up with emulator. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say it's bas it's basically just like, like a, like a like a PC version of the Switch, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's pretty much a Steam Link, but you decided to make it into a Switch. Yes, to an extent. Actually. It's a Linux power Switch. <laughs> that. Oh my god! If if I could switch, if I could switch to Linux, then I then I would. I I hate Windows so much. Yeah. Well, this isn't too bad. Yeah, it's the first machine I've had with it on there. It's uh, not bad. Last night I had uh, my audio drivers just completely put on me for some bizarre reason, and then it magically fixed itself for the same unknown reason. Thanks, Windows. Wait, oh, no. uh, I could swear, right? Yes. Okay, I was just making sure. Yeah, Tom. Tom's been swearing. Oh, I curse like a sailor, yeah. <laughs> no, 110%, you're good. Okay, just making sure. I, I, I was just waiting for, like, just... I was just, like, waiting to just to hear it. I mean, I personally don't, just, just because, like... <laughs> hey, Deef. Hey, Deef. Standalone Steam OS is actually really good, Tom. Yeah, but can I play Game Pass games on it? Uh, if you. Oh shoot, it's the, the browser. Cops. It's like, oh shoot, this the cops are here. What was that, Poppy? Hey, Deep. Sorry about that. Oh, if you download a browser on it. Oh. Wait, really? 
t kinda. It's still streaming it. Oh, I uh, see. Oh, hey, Leah's here. Hello. Hello, Liam. Hey. Uh, what's, wait, what's the browser? Is it like Opera? Uh, it's Edge. Eh. Yeah, Edge is in beta on Linux. Really huh. bizarre. Interesting. We will only let you put Edge on here if we could put a ton of ads and bloatware onto Linux. Edge. Edge. <laughs> Apparently, that's Microsoft's Gabe advantage. Is, it's like willing to work with uh, Microsoft on getting Game Pass to Steam, so. Wait. I mean, wow, that'd be great then. It, like, that'd if, if that if that was the case, I'd like. I mean, there's like one or two games that I probably still need Windows for because I don't think. Uh, I don't yeah, think. Not... Um, like, I wouldn't be able to play The Sims on 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 Linux. I don't think. Yeah, a good majority of games require Windows. And oh, I've yeah, that's true. Like, Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard sort of not a whole like games on Steam. Even when you use Mac for that matter, but it sucks for Mac gamers out there. I mean, they try they, not for a lack of trying, mind you, because they did they did oh, launch yeah. uh, Steam for Mac, mm -hmm. and uh, that and now the now the uh, the the earbuds on uh, in TF2 are one of the most expensive items in the game. <laughs> also, I was gonna say, wait, you have Edge? Wait, he's like, wait, do you have Edge? I thought I got lens to get away from Windows. Yeah, no, actually, what just got. I just upgraded my computer to Linux earlier this year. It's honestly a great move. I love Linux. I like. Ooh, I nice. like this. So I guess it's like, considered an upgrade. It is. Honestly, I was tired. My my computer was uh, it was so slow and chugging for days and days, and always made upgrades. And now I don't have to worry about any of that. It's uh, just been moving smoother than it ever has. So now, uh, really I, I guess like the question I have then is like, would I need like boot camp or something in order to play um play like games that require Windows? Well, to be to be specific, I actually am just using it as a read-only machine. I still will, I still uh, would want to use Windows if I was going to be doing music or gaming or something like that, because not every uh, piece of hardware works with Linux. You yeah. have to buy specifically for Linux. I think it's called a bit Proton on Linux. Also, uh, also certain software as well too, I believe too. Maybe. But Linux is really cool. I like it. It's got a neat take on how to do UI. And it may, just makes it easy to really connect with your operating system on a personal level. Like, to me, it kind of felt like making a cool Firefox layout or something like that in the year 2000, but for your entire operating system now. Mm. It just looks cool. Feels neat. Yeah. Meanwhile, I, at some point, I wanted to try making, like, a, a Raspberry Pi computer and see if all that works out. That would be cool. Uh -huh. Hard mods are in. I feel like the Steam Deck's a really cool idea, too. I mean, the Switch was already cool enough. Why not for every game also? Yep. <laughs> welcome, to we the, uh, well, to welcome to the future where everything is a Game Gear. <laughs> yeah, they had, to s they had to sell portable Skyrim again somehow. That's true. Game of the Deck. Skyrim, and it, what was it, Anniversary Edition we're up to now? Yep. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And soon coming to the Switch. I, I, wow, I, you, know, you know what's incredible is that, like, God, I hate game development. I hate the, the modern era of game development. Because we had, like... Because in the, in the time that we've had Skyrim, we've had Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. Now it's really... <laughs> how far long ago was Morrowind compared to where we are currently now? We're 11 years in the Skyrim right now? I... God, uh, like, I hate. Mm, I can't. I can't talk about this on, on a stream. I hate the the. I'll, I'll just say it and give like give it like one mention and then I'll be done with it. But like, I hate like. I hate the infinite growth model. That that every like corporation seems to like need to go for, or that like that's just like yeah, infinite growth. Like you can't stagnate. Nope, nope, nope. Otherwise, you're a failure as a company. Yeah. Yeah, but they kind of do that anyway. It's like, what, what was it? Infinite growth when they released Fallout seventy six. I just mean like in in general. Like, we've we've hit a point in like, I'm just I'm talking about like as a whole. Yeah, no, because like you can't because you can't have you can't have infinite growth on a planet with finite resources. That's the bottom line, and that's just uh, it's, that, it's not going to stop anything. them because they're still trying to go no. for it. No, yeah. I mean, people. Yeah, greed's a powerful tool. It's interesting. 
How do, I hate it. Hate it so much. But we get some good games every now and then, so it's worth it all, right? Uh, uh, which seem to be coming <laughs> more few and far between, though. Yeah, a little bit. We still have our beacons, though. We still have like Nintendo holding up the holding up the whole raft. Yeah. Yeah. They've been they've been really kicking it lately, actually. O only because really only because they Nintendo. refuse like only because they refuse to like catch up with the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing their own thing, and I'm so, like, here's right the thing. Now. Like I am so happy that they, that they decide that that they're like that they're behind the times because otherwise, yeah. like, uh, because otherwise I'd be shilling out um I'd be shilling out for Smash coins on my mobile version of Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Getting more of that McDonald's money for you yeah, right there. Crazy. Yeah, I used to I'd think be that you know, that I'd be watching I'd be watching ads to fight Bowser again after I die. <laughs> oh no. Oh my gosh! I never even thought about that. I like, that's, well, and, and that's Imagine why and screens. that's why I'm glad Nintendo's behind the time. I do not care if their internet is <laughs> shitty. They're still putting out good games. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Here's a crazy idea, though. What if the, they uh, every game over screen you had, they did give you an ad, but they paid you for that? Would that be terrible? What if What if you got the revenue for watching the ad? If you got the revenue from it, that I don't. I don't. Bro, that's that's a good question. That that mm, that opens the that would open the door. They would never do that, but that opens the door. No way. I would no watch way. every ad. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the, at the very least, when it comes to those particular ads, they're more or less short. They're, they're not like YouTube ads. No, oh, no. Yeah, YouTube has our unique brand, like 30 seconds to two minute ads. And it's like, then you get unlucky when you have. I've seen 30 effect. minute ads. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I kind of miss that TV like, channel that was always on at two in the morning. That was yeah. just a constant, like long form. Oh God, yeah, good old infomercials. Yeah, yep. I used to wa I used to watch those like late at night on convention. Oh my God, I, I, I'm, I'm, like imagine if you got paid for watching those infomercials. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like cut us in. <laughs> if you're if you're gonna mine our attention, at least give us something for it. There you go. I, I just remember it was basically like. No, but you, no, your reward is uh, is to be a good consumer and to and to buy <laughs> the thing that's being advertised to you. That's oh, your yeah. that's that's your reward. Yeah. My, oh, thank you, glorious masters. I'm just thinking of waking up to watch like a cert, uh, certain type of ads that show up. The wink, wink, nudge, nudge to look. Oh, nudge like uh, that. like Girls Gone Wild. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ah, oh, takes it back. That's not really a thing anymore. Do you remember when EA tried to push their whole like uh like uh what was it? I forgot. I forgot what the exact wording was, but it's still the the most downvoted comment on Reddit. The. Uh, most uh, it, it, it was like it, it was like it would take like 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 30 hours of gameplay to unlock Darth Vader unless yeah. you just and it was like a, a oh, feeling a feeling of like achievement or whatever they they were saying oh, like yeah. like that was the narrative they were trying to push <laughs> and everybody hated it yeah, oh, yeah. yeah a sense cool. of pride and accomplishment thank you also I and of course that also reminds me of speaking of with TNA as well too because I know there was one particular me mechanic uh no, no, not Mechanica. One system that they had in place a while back with the uh, DLC and all that uh, for the Saboteur, because they had a DLC that basically adds a uh, TNA into the game. But if you decided to buy that use, good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that because you're not getting access to that at all. Oh, you just reminded yeah. me. You just reminded me of something that EA did that was really scummy, and like every GameStop clerk ever got like got shit for it. Uh, EA, I when you would trade in, uh, when you would purchase an, uh, any EA game in like the mid 2000s, it came with a special code. You needed that code to play online. So if you tr if you traded in that game and somebody else bought it, they couldn't play online unless they bought another code to play online. Wait, that that may be the thing I was talking so, about. So. That, that's I think almost that, how the that, Xbox One turned out. Yeah, that was, gonna, that was basically what their DRM model was going to be. But yeah. so we had people coming in all the time, be like, "Yeah, let me get a used copy of Battlefield 3. They'd buy it, go home, come back to the store, and give us shit for it. Yeah, because I believe the saboteur. You can't play like the full game of the saboteur. If it's pre, if it's pre-owned, that yeah. Yeah, and this is why EA was considered the shittiest company in in America for the longest time because like because there here's the thing there are plenty of companies that are probably doing significantly worse. However, EA's was very public and in the open. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're supposed to be good. You're, you're supposed to bring balance to the force. 
You were the chosen one. Well, no, like the, the, thing, the thing with like EA is that like uh, like a lot of a lot of other companies that probably would have gotten that worst company award, like were pretty good at keeping hush hush about the whole thing. It's basically what I'm saying. EA, no. EA, everything was in the open. You could see the effects that were happening to the consumer. Yeah, and now, <laughs> now we got Ubisoft climbing up to the ranks. We got Square Enix. Oh yeah, like like e like yeah, U Ubisoft and uh, and Square Enix like doubling down on uh, on NFTs despite the fact that we have like that all NFTs have lost like what ninety seven percent of their value. And they have value. And the scandals in the background as well too. That doesn't help. Yep, Activision Blizzard and their whole thing. I, shout out to Raven Software for winning their uh, their uh, union election. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna post that in the Discord just to be like, woo, victory! Yeah. Good, good you. Okay. I. Yep. Very okay, good. I want some I, I run, hey, I run Union Monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. They're not viable, but, oh, uh, nice. but, but, uh, the, 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 the IRL unions are more viable than oh, Union okay. Monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. That was my entire story with Toon World for, like, the entire years before Toon Kingdom came out. I'm like, cost a thousand life points to use, but by god, I'm gonna use it. Oh my god, yeah, Toon King, Toon Kingdom is such a good card. Oh, it changed the entire game for Toon. Okay, I've seen so someone nice. say first Nintendo, mm. Well, it's just, it's, it's always a slippery slope when companies tell you how to play their game. And Nintendo does that a lot. Too. Yep. It's like yeah. Particularly when it comes to Smash tournaments and stuff like that. Especially, like, especially when it comes to, to people wanting to play a game that Nintendo isn't going to make any money off of because you can only find used copies of it. Which yeah, they could resolve exactly. by just re-releasing it. But no, they, they like to have that control over the consumer is the thing. They, they want to tell you how to play that. It's not going to stop people from modding. Are you kidding? Right? It's not going to stop people from oh, no. modding. I mean, no, it, it won't. It won't, it'll just make them angry. <laughs> yeah. On the PR side of things, Nintendo is very scummy about that. On the game development side of things, give or take. There's a lot more give as opposed to take when it comes to the game development side on Nintendo side, especially like because I was watching John's um Xenoblade stream and Word. There was definitely the discussion that came up about uh Monolith Softs and Square Enix. Yes. And I believe Monolith Soft definitely has like the better work uh work environment compared to Square Enix, at least for certain departments as well. Because I know cr Creative Business 3, the people who are doing Final Fantasy 14 and eventually Final Fantasy 16, that particular environment's good and all that. But for other departments, eh, give or take. So somebody brought up uh somebody brought up Pokemon tournaments, like the official Pokemon tournaments are doubles only. I, I I'm 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 okay with that. Mm -hmm. Singles, uh, sing like I, I've I've seen like smog on singles, and it they're it's just it's not good. No, yeah, sing singles can get over competitive. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Nintendo doesn't, doesn't like things being over competitive. Also, here's another thing as well too. It's smog as well. Yeah, it's uh, uh, well. Someone else says the more diverse format as well. That that is exactly the that is exactly yeah. it as well. Because once you, once you get into smog on singles, it pretty much comes down to. May, like maybe like one of five viable uh, viable strategies. The other thing I wish I, I kind of hope wish they would do for like official tournaments in Pokemon, just to vary it up a little bit, is like more bands and uh, like like uh, like more bands on like various Pokemon. I think my my, fa my favorite time uh, of any sort of like VGC was when Sword and Shield came out because they're all because all the Pokemon weren't there and we got these very unique things that, uh, in tournaments that we've never seen before. That's always also, cool to see. That's like also, the one of the didn't they also do like a sort of like uh, a rotation set, basically? I, 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 they probably did that once, uh, once the DLCs came out. But like that was, I, I, honestly, like for all of the the, uh, the crap that uh, that uh, Dexit got, I that was the that was the most positive thing that came out of it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely know about Landorus Mecha. <laughs> Yeah, once Landorus came back, yeah, people were dreading that day. Yep. Yeah, then they put Landorus back in. Oh my god. I I'm wondering, so it, it, from what I can tell, like, at least in terms of competitive Pokemon, we're gonna have to see what Pokemon are gonna be included in, uh, in Scarlet and Violet, because it seems like this is gonna go in a cycle, where it's like, it's gonna start off with, with like, a limited format, and then they're slowly gonna add more Pokemon back in, and that's gonna affect the competitive format. Yeah, I, I don't know how they honestly get away with the competitive future of Pokemon at this point. It's like, they, there's so many Pokemon. 
then nothing like that. It's like they can't add all of them to every game, or else maybe they would. Well, I, the best thing they, the best thing they can do is make their own battle simulator like Pokemon Stadium 3 at this point, and just say, competitive guys, here's your game. Now let us have cute, fun, colorful stories in Spain for our Pokemon games. I am uh, uh, that, scene here. that also leaves up the issue of uh, what, what will be the future for Showdown at that point, because wow. Showdown is basically the free version of a Pokemon Stadium game. So maybe they'll coexist. Maybe, maybe they can coexist. It's, it's it's possible they can coexist, but like, like Nintendo, N Nintendo's, I, I gotta be careful with how I word this, <laughs> because like Nintendo is legally in the right if they were to take it down. Yes. And it. Gets more complicated. It's, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's like that. That's a that's an overall good thing. Pokemon Showdown yeah, yeah. Is, a, is a great battle simulator, but they are legally in the right, like within their right, to take it down whenever they want to. Uh huh. And also, you have international copy, uh, international laws as well too, which yep. can add up, uh, and it makes things so much of a headache to deal with. Mario Kart needs a random option. <laughs> Just play as anybody. Just like don't it doesn't matter what the character card is. Yeah. Yeah. Total chaos mode. That could be fun. So about that Mario Kart 9, huh? <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm just waiting for him to announce when the next uh when the next uh, uh set of DLC tracks for uh for eight's coming out. Yeah, I can't more, wait. More likely it's gonna happen around well, quote unquote E3 time. Basically. Yeah. E3, they, they're before. probably gonna announce it in either June or July when E3 would normally be. And it's more likely going to be June because of that's when normally when E3 happens, right? Well, sometimes or, it happens in July. I mean, I believe Xbox already announced their conference for June 13. It's I mean, we'll, we'll have to see because the, because like, do do all these companies want to step on each on each other's toes because they now have the freedom to to schedule their big conference for whenever they want. They don't have to deal with, they don't have to deal with, with like, having to compete with like the other company's airtime now. So like, so if they spread them out by like, by weeks at this point, then like that, that's, that's just good for them. That's more eyes on them. That's less of like the, the hype they have to compete with overall. In some, in some ways you're definitely right where it's nice that they could take, you know, not step on each other's toes and, but they've always been pretty good about that. But there mm. is something really good about having all of the attention in one place, having the consumer's undivided attention for a day or two or three. Yep. And it, it's nice to just like, it, it's the same idea with like carnivals and fairs and stuff like that. It's like having all of it in one place can actually cause a, more of a beneficial rising of all, rising tides lift all boats sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. It's like, it would be nice if they, you know, spread it out because then we can have more to look forward to and more to specula speculate about. But it probably makes more sense, all things considered, to just pack it into one weekend so that, you know. I would love that. It, well, I know, I, personally, I, I, I love that. I th but, I th but I think from like, I think that'd be great if it was all in one weekend. But I think from like a, from a business standpoint, they don't want to have to share the limelight with anybody else. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. And I see someone saying like, oh, they don't see uh, Nintendo doing a direct uh, the summer E3 or not, and I'm just like, uh, nothing I, this I, summer. Nothing this summer. Yeah, really? no, they, there's there's no way. It's Nintendo's definitely gonna put something out. Yeah. I have to head out. For my dinner is here. Hey, it's oh, maybe yeah. back. All right. Uh, uh, catch you later, Popski. Yeah, right. feel free to feel free to join back in uh, whenever you want. Alrighty. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely see like there is going to be a direct at this point. It's just a matter of uh, when is that yeah. going to happen. I don't know if it's going to. I don't know if it's going to hit. If it's going to be June, like uh, like the Xbox one, if they're gonna, if they're going to try and like make a faux E three by cramming them all into like one weekend, or if they're just going to be like we want your undivided attention for our stuff, not anybody <laughs> else's. Oh. Yeah. oh Nintendo, you do. Yeah, you I know. I know Jeff Knightley has uh, the Summer Game Fest, I believe. He, he did the same thing last oh, year. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the uh, for like PC games and like, PC and indie games, right? Yeah. So I'm very certain he's gonna do the same thing again as well. Uh, he, no, he is doing the same thing again. I'm very certain, and they probably will do like something to time things around that particular event, so they're not like stepping on his particular toes during that particular moment. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's just a matter of uh, 
we'll see like any other people's because I know we know Microsoft is doing their thing. And Nintendo is more likely going to do their own thing. Sony is questionable at this point. They pretty much yeah. are. Yeah, they're I pretty much doing their own Sony in the world. Yeah. I'm willing to bet EA is going to do their own thing. Like, love, I mean, as much as we hate it, it's still, it's still I'm something that we can watch. Sure. Well, I'm do you think sure EA is going to do anything this year? Because didn't they actually just lose the rights to Madden? No, no. Oh, EA? Like yeah, that? FIFA. They lost the rights to FIFA. FIFA. Yeah. That was it. Was FIFA. So, thank yeah, God. No, no. Well, then again, mm -hmm. FIFA, FIFA has its own issues as well, too, but that's... If they can't own. show... Listen, if they can't I, show sports ball, what will they show? If if they... Like, yeah, FIFA, FIFA was their was their uh, biggest thing. But, like, <laughs> I feel like... like More companies need to delve into, into like, sports franchises for, for oh. video games. It can't just be all owned by <laughs> one company. Oh, God, I really want to have some arcade football goodness. American football. Yeah, yeah no, like, uh... Like I would, I would love to have another NFL blitz. Uh, too bad, yeah. too bad. Midway is gone, but like I would love that. Maybe an NBA Jam too. Give me some. I the, think we had an NBA street. Jam fairly recently. Did we? Oh, cool. Did we? Oh no, you said NBA oh, Jam too. That was the. Was that like? The, that was the. I'm thinking of the one on like the 360. Well, My the God, NBA that was Jam like. Was the one on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, honestly, I'm. Well, no, they, they definitely made an NBA Jam for the 360. Oh, Maybe they did, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of, speaking of edgy. Speaking of edginess during like the 2000s, I remember the Streets game that during the EA Sports Big Era. Oh yeah, yeah. that was the best. I remember they tried to uh, re-release, uh, like, uh, was it they rebooted SSX and it just, it wasn't the same, dude. I know. Was there ever a Space Jam game? Because that seems like it'd be a slam dunk. Yes, there was a Space Jam game. Ha 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 ha. I heard, I, I heard that. <laughs> But yes, there was a Space Jam game. Are we talking about the original Space Jam, or are we talking about the... No, there were no, 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 no one Space saw Jam. the new... No one saw the new... I did. I'm going to spoil the hell oh, out of it. Did you? Yeah. Uh, how was it? Um, it was, uh, it was all right. Okay. Um... The... I'm trying to think of how to put my, my thoughts into, into words here. It's, it's weird that, like, all of the franchises just kind of live, like, in a computer. And yeah. like that's how they exist. Sure. And yeah, that's that's pretty much like the plot of Space Jam 2 is that like the franchises kind of live in a computer. Like Digimon. More or less, yeah. I, I don't I, I don't remember there was something like really contrived about it as well. Like It uh, sounds like Ready Player One but is more aligned with having access to only the Warner Bros. It, uh library of stuff. Not so so like, everything. So as weird as it is to say, it's like Ready Player One if it was more corporate. Yeah. Space Jam? Yes. What? Also, More corporate. Yep. Oh yeah. man. And also, and also, far less creepier as well too, because of uh, you don't have the creepiness of the main protagonist from Ready Player One. Yeah, I was gonna say, where's where's Danny DeVito in this picture? <laughs> oh, oh, you'll swing on a grass all day long, and you'll always lose. So Danny, anyway, the way I... he delivers those lines, oh, it gets me. <laughs> but no, the but like uh, the the end. I'm gonna spoil the end of Space Jam 2. I don't know if anybody cares, but I like don't. the the end of Space no. Jam 2, um, bugs like th there's like a oh do you do you care? Uh no 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 I was just I, I see something in the chat that I'm just like mm, do I do I want to uh, spoil uh, remove that or then again considering how uh considering how Twitter is it's kind of hard to ignore. miss everything yeah okay yeah. But, but pretty much. No. The, the the whole thing with Space Jam is that like is, is that they're they're playing in like a like a basketball game that like what the hell's the main character the main guy's name? Uh, Michael Jordan. No, Space Jam Two. <laughs> okay. Kevin. Uh, Durst? LeBron. LeBron James. Thank you. The, like LeBron James' yeah, LeBron son James. made like made like a, made like a uh, um what do you call it? a basketball video game, and like it was basically tricked by like this AI into like into making uh into like making the like making this game and like there's this like this whole subplot with like this AI being like aha now all of these beloved characters are going to be blah 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 should things happen in this in this game and but like so pretty much like the end of it is that like the the kid like realizes that the AI is like tr tricking him and uh like says like oh there's like this cheat code in it but like in order to do it one one guy one player has to die I'm not making this up what so 
Bugs performs the cheat code, wins them the game, and just like and just like fizzles out of existence from from like the hard drive or whatever the hell they are. I was hoping for LeBron James. That really is no, ready player. But, but but hold on. Now here's the best part. Bugs doesn't show up at all for like the for, for like the rest of the movie. And I mean like what? Great, great, there's only like 15 seconds left. Okay. Or 15 seconds, 15 minutes left. Except for like the very end when it's LeBron James like coming out of like like basketball practice and it's just LeBron and Bugs and they're talking about like they're talking about like uh like like Taco Tuesday or like some some stupid stuff about uh about like um just like, some like whatever, did, but it's but it's, it's just it, it's all it is is LeBron. Like they're outside and there's nobody else there except for LeBron and um and uh, uh Bugs. And Bugs. So what it looks like is that LeBron is just riddled with guilt over killing Bugs and that there's an illusion of Bugs Buddy appearing before LeBron James. God, that's what the end of the movie looks like. Anybody who's seen uh, Space Jam Two, tell me that's not what it looks like. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Wait, where do you shoot? Trying to reshoot those uh those ads that they did way back with to before like the first Space Jam movie? What? No, no, this is like no, 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 no. I mean that's that's that would be the more hopeful side of things. The ending of Space Jam 2 looks like that LeBron is guilty about getting bugs killed. That's the whole thing. That is the entirety of of uh, of, of like that of of the ending of that movie because that like I said that scene is it there's no other people around. They are outside in a city. There's nobody around. It's just LeBron and Bugs. But, but and Bugs died in the game. Yes. Right. Right. So, but, so, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but it's but the game is part of like the Warner but the game the game is part of like the Warner Brothers servers. Okay. So so he essentially got deleted like from existence essentially. From existence. So yeah, he that's that seems right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was he was carrying the ghost of Bugs Bunny into so the like, world. So like, we 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 were like doing like a Yu-Gi-Oh night here, and I at the end of that movie, I turned to my friend and I go, "You gotta let me go, LeBron. It wasn't your fault." <laughs> Honestly, I was also thinking of along the lines of you pull back and you see Buzz just sitting at the computer, and he recreates Duck and Buck just goes, "Ain't I a stinker?" Yeah. Oh yeah, just he's got like he's got like a, like a tablet pen or something. Yeah. yeah. Like like, but. Oh my god, like, I, I hope I'm not the only one who think who thinks that about about the end of Space Jam 2. Because yeah, cause, cause I just look like a crazy person otherwise. No, yeah, no, you, you're getting some backup in the chat, uh, Barry. You're yeah, not that's, even, that's crazier than the first one. The first one just had a Bill Murray cameo as the We all thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I like <laughs> that, that. That was good, though, because, like, at the time, like, it's the kind of thing where it's like, you like the Bill Murray character because he's playing himself and he doesn't care about yeah. anything. Not to mention, that was also a lot more lighthearted and all that. It was more or less trying to essentially take a shoe commercial and turning that into a full blown movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's you're not. Right. This was, the, the, like, Space Jam 2 was essentially the entirety of Warner Brothers was on the line. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it almost felt like very tongue in cheek about where, where essentially it was like Warner Brothers basically is being like, oh man, if things were to change at Warner Brothers, then what would happen to all these lovely characters you guys like so much? So then there's Chip and Dale. Yeah. I, I don't know if I want to watch that movie or not. Because, yes. like, my... It's an interrupting experience, I can tell you that much. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I, I enjoyed it for what it was, but, man, it did feel kind of cynical in places. Uh, oh, yeah, when you also talk about the animation... Yeah, there's definitely some very noticeable uh, some happening. I, 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 absolutely, yeah, no, I was talking about before how, like, like, uh, I, I, I hate that. I hate that, that, like, I'm, so, I'm a huge animation snob. Let's, let's start, let's start off with that. So I'm going to be complaining about this no matter how good it is. Um, yeah. And plus, not to mention, I was also saying this, though. Weirdly enough, it's, it's not a Walt Disney Animation Studio movie, so at the very least, they don't have their hands on that. But I have no idea who uh, really did the, the animation for that. I could have easily checked through, uh, check back on but, that. But but it's a Disney movie. Like they could have they could have done so much better with it. They we could have gotten like a second Roger Rabbit, essentially. Yeah. I mean, in a, but in a uh, but like what one of my friends was like it was pretty much like saying how like how bad like the Chip and Dale movie was. And like yeah. I, and and again, I'll I'd have to see it in order to give it my my full thoughts. But honestly, it just seems to me that it's like putting out like these quick memeable things is more profitable <laughs> than making something like timeless, you know? 
Are, are yeah. you saying Disney would stoop so low as to skip content for merchandise? Oh, definitely. No. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's too bad though, because it seems like when it comes to animation, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit was so much the pinnacle back in the day. Oh my god, yeah. When it comes to crossover cartoons of real world and uh, cartoons, we really haven't done better. Like CGI cartoon crossovers these days get us things like Detective Pikachu, which was good and also a little bit creepy, or something like yeah. Sonic, which is creepy and also a little bit good. But then again, like, we're using the it's nature really of Pokemon. I, I, some of yeah, I, I will. should be terrifying. In reality, they I, I will have to say, though, that, like, Detective Pikachu... Uh, first of all, Detective Pikachu was, like, after having seen it, it's definitely a children's movie. Uh, but also, like, um, like, for what is essentially these monsters that definitely would probably be the dominant species on the planet, and incorporating them into human society, they did pretty good for what they had. Oh, yeah. It, 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 don't get me wrong, just, Those models are amazing for what they are. Oh, yeah. Like, the, I'm, I'm they're saying, essentially we, putting realistic Pokemon in there, but, like, they did really well with that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, they, they did some, they knew what they were doing when they put Mr. Mime in the show. Also, Mr. Yes. Mime didn't need to be. Yeah. But, but <laughs> the, the, the Mr. Mime it. segment was, was, like, the best part of that movie, though. That's oh, good, yeah. that's yeah. I, I, like, the, the final thing of that scene where, where... The final bit of that, of that movie where, where, like, he accidentally drops the invisible match, and they all just look down in shock. Was the best. <laughs> also, another thing as well too with uh, Chip and Dale as well too. That movie also hints on the fact that uh, if you don't like the Lonely Islands uh, comedy, that's not gonna be your movie. Oh, I love the Lonely Islands. So if like, uh, so I, if if, I, if that's the case, I'd probably watch it for the writing. Yeah. But like, but like the, the, the other thing too is that like Disney is just so powerful now, so uh -huh. powerful. Back in like the Roger Rabbit days. The only way Disney would do it was if their characters uh, had, at the very least, an equal screen time to every other animated character that was on there. Es especially, yeah. especially like the uh, the Warner Brothers characters at the time. So like when um, there's like the the what is it? There's the scene where Donald Duck and Daffy Duck are playing the piano at the bar. You can count those frames like frame by frame, and you'll see that they both appear in the exact same amount of frames. And then take. Take the moment of the free fall with, uh, with the free fall of Mickey and Bo Bugs. Yep. Yeah. Take that. Take that moment and put it on campus because that's going to be the only time you see those two characters on screen at the same time. And for certain, there is, there has to be some uh, cells of that somewhere in the Disney vault. Yeah. Uh, if there's uh, yeah, if there's one frame of a Disney movie that you could ever buy, what frame would it be? Honestly, some of the adult stuff that. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I would. I have. I have stories. I, I have seen stories about that, but. Of but a in Disney terms of like, movie. I guess Roger Rabbit was done by Disney. Was done by Disney. Uh, yeah. done by Disney. I think it was released by Touchstone. But yeah. Okay. It, it's still tech. It's still technically within Disney. It's just a different uh distributor, basically. Yeah, you'd, you'd think them being as big as they are would let them take more risks, but it seems like they actually take fewer. I but, would want to. I, I would. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is my favorite movie. Um, I would want the cell, I, I would want the, the bit where, um, Roger, I would, I would want the cell where Roger's pulling his hand out of the handcuffs. Mm. Nice. You I, can, I don't you, know. Cause, cause, cause that, that, I'm, cause that is such a genius scene. You could, you I, could have escaped, escaped those handcuffs the entire time. Not any time, just when it was funny. Love that. <laughs> it's an amazing scene. That is a superpower, isn't it? Also, yeah, if you ask me, I probably would. Take something from me, maybe like uh, Everest New Groove, maybe. Yeah, that, that's a good one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we want to be like a bit more serious on that answer. Can I get Cusco sitting in the rain? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yes! I hang that up on the wall. <laughs> that's incredible! Oh my god, and you can like. No, the, the best thing about that is that like you buy, buy paintings that are like the same size as that cell, and then you just put that cell over the paintings. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. Oh, there'd be so many good friends. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no. I, I like Who Framed Roger Rabbit is 110 percent a masterpiece, and I oh, yeah. there I, I don't and honestly I don't think we've had an animated movie as good, at least oh. from a technical perspective. I'll say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's hard to say. Like, either they go full CGI and it just looks fine as CGI, but when it, when it comes to the crossover of humans and CGI, it's such a such a difficult uh, just like yeah. a difficult thing to do. Hard For, to pull it off. Yeah, yeah. Chip and Dale, at least in terms of like the like the CGI characters, they look fine for what they were. When it comes to like the t technically the two D characters, it's Weird. So, like, the extras probably look better than the, uh, than, like, the main characters. Because those I've seen, th like, I've seen some scenes with, like, the, ex with, like, the ex the 2D extras in it. And those ones are actually animated. They're not rotoscoped. Okay, if you're, if you're an animation snob, Tom, what did you think of Spider-Verse? Loved it. 110% loved it. Dude, yeah, that's so freaking good. Mm. Yeah, tell me you saw it in 3D. I didn't. I, 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 I don't like the, I don't like the, uh, the theater experience. Oh, that's too bad. That's, that's understandable. I don't love theaters so much either, but the 3D, actually, that that is a movie made for 3D. I, I can see it. I can definitely see it. Honestly, I probably would like to do doc, the, the new Doctor Strange movie in 3D. Oh, man. That would be so crazy in 3D. I, I, I love the first Doctor Strange. I really got to see the second one. Yeah, I saw that in theaters. Man, that was an experience to see that on a big screen. But, yeah. I like that. Oh yeah. man, I remember the last time I went to a movie theater, it was to see a uh, Endgame. And it was like, of course, the week after it had already come out. So I was like, this seems like a good time to go, but it was still packed anyway. So for two and a half to three hours, I was staring up the nostril of Thanos in the front row. Be like, <laughs> this is great. This is awesome. I love this. <laughs> the one thing I will say that like, that, that pisses me off about like critique of animation is when people see like low frame rate in animation and think it's automatically bad. Which is which is yeah. a, which is what Spider Verse had, and also, oh God, that is, Dra a, Dragon Ball Fight Dragon Ball Fighters got flack for that, and it's oh, like that is that is the most anime accurate fighting game I have ever seen. Oh, so accurate! It's like anime isn't sixty frames per second, not all, not often at least. Yeah, it's there like, is like a, it's a style there. choice. There's there's reasons to have thirty and sixty. It's weird because people are just like, oh, we want the bigger cool. number. The bigger number has to be better. It like, should look smooth. No, I, like, art art exists on all levels. I'm glad that yeah. you I'm glad that you feel that way, but it doesn't look shit just because it's not running at sixty FPS. <laughs> exactly. It's like my, my monitor. I, I guess shout out to Total Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, because I know we have like seen like uh. With Switch games as well too, because we have seen like Pokemon in the background and and Arceus running at a lower frame rate because of uh, how that game is optimized. Well, yeah, and, and also with uh, Kirby as well too. Which in all honesty, I think the well, lower frame rate in the background kind of works in its favor, just for kind of like a stop motion effect, which gives it like a bit of a charm to it. There you go. Well, I mean, we, we, can, we can definitely like give them a pass on it, but I don't want to give them credit as I don't want to spin it yeah, as yeah. a benefit. It's like the, the hardware is underperforming and the game was unoptimized. Like, yeah, but, yeah. I, but it's like, it's not like it's, it, it's not worth like negative 10 points on the score or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, if, if it's but, a, if it's a style choice, then it's like, like if it's a style choice to make it more accurate to the source material, that shouldn't be like, that shouldn't be like deducted points. Certainly not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the hardware stuff can work into its favor. Most of the time, it's unintentional, but maybe it can give it a bit of a charm. I think it's nice because one of the things that I think games are missing these days is you don't really get to make much of the game in your imagination. Like the games are so show and tell. It's like you're playing the game exactly as we're kind of making it for you to play. Whereas back in the day, games had to sort of be a little more open-ended and they wanted you to get lost and they wanted you to not have to reach your next objective immediately. And those were the times that you filled in the story with your own imagination. Like Elden Ring does that a lot right now too. It's like, it's not completely gone, but it's like the, a lot of games have sort of taken the uh, the reins from the player and you just, it's when it comes to the frame rates and things like that, that's just kind of a chance for you to kind of use your imagination and be like, this is maybe a better way that it could have moved or like oh it didn't move quite properly there so let's just think of a better thing that they could have uh, done it's like it's, it's kind of a like again you could you could spin it in a way that it increases your immersion but it doesn't change the fact that it's hard work yeah because i remember seeing kotaku posting up a an article about like someone made a mod for elder Ring, but the camera like pulled back and you see like uh, the animation going it's like it definitely gives it like a stop motion kind of feel to it like Kind of like the Breaking Bad era of stop motion. It, it just gives like a, a nice 
different look to it towards the console. I was gonna say, I feel like stop motion and video games are two things that haven't gone together very often, but then there's beautiful Joe. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm. I, I still have yet to actually like fully beat that game because I'm stuck on the final boss with playing as uh, Dante. <laughs> That's my next experience. I think I played in that on the hard on the hard mode, which has been rough. Yeah, it can be a tricky game. Yeah. I wonder like it... Stop motion is too cosmic. Were the yeah. were the were the, uh, the the characters in, in Clay Fighter were those uh, 3D models or were those um or were those it was that stop motion? I, I think it may be a bit of both. Oh yeah, also uh, Cuphead. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean like the, the but Cuphead also had a, had uh, an outstanding development time because just because of how technically uh, so taxing. Making it, making basically significantly more animations than a uh, than a than a movie because of video games. Yeah. <laughs> also, hey, Alina. hey, Alina! Thank you for the raid. Hey, Age hey, pancake Alina. mix barrel. Oh, I'll, I'll take a nice, uh, I'll take a nice uh, Chateau Aunt Jemima uh, from uh, 19, 1953, please. Give me some of that Tennessee bourbon and mm. <laughs> Jack Daniels. Antics. I'm in my partner, Jimmy D. Bingo! Also, so, uh, I, actually, I think Jack Daniel Pancakes wouldn't sound that terrible. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was my, I don't remember where my dad got it, but he had a, uh, a, a bottle of, um, Tennessee whiskey. Uh, that was, it was like, I, it was like a caramel flavored Tennessee whiskey and it was so good. That does sound good. I, I need to I need to try to find the uh, the, um, back. the stuff welcome for it. Back. Hey, welcome back, Pop. It says here Clay Fighter is noted for having character sprites rendered from clay animated figures. There you go. So it's stop That's motion. Crazy. Yeah, has yeah. to be. So those so so those are, those are stop motion. Yeah. Wow. That you know what? I didn't I think much about the, about the copy of Clay Fighter Director's Cut that I have, but you know what? That increased its value in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really didn't even know you could do that. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's I guess it was it's kind of the same um, uh, technique that they did for Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is just like Mortal Kombat, but instead of screen capping people, the screen capping, screen capping clay figures. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. That's it's it's, it's interesting seeing peop, uh, people people uh, reshape and work with clay figures and plastic figures. Like uh, if you ever watched Robot Chicken, yeah, as gruesome as it is, it's like it's it's interesting to see all of these things that we know as products and then how radically they can be reworked. Mm -hmm. Also, also working with liquids as well too. At points. What was that? Also working with liquids as well too. Liquids. Uh, yeah. Because I since that still can get kind of gory. The uh. uh I mean, like it, it's the kind of thing though where where you gotta you gotta be real invested in it if you wanna if you wanna go anywhere with it because like it's a process like like for the most part like art for most like traditional art you're focusing on one frame making that one frame like like pop out be, and and be like more or less like perfect with animation you don't have that luxury because you're doing that so much even with like the shortcuts you could do to make to make it look like. To, to like not have to like see where you have to draw as much or like you can um like like or, or, or do things like do things like smears animating on twos and threes like uh or, hold, holding holding poses for a long time yeah, um, so much technique yeah like uh not having to animate things that are out of frame but still giving them like context like there's 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 a lot of like techniques and even with all that it's still so difficult <laughs> And there's also like so many different like subcategories of different techniques, like smears, for example. God, like oh my god, like there are so many different uh different um like yeah, there are different ways you could do smears. In uh, yeah. I definitely remember your your when you're animating uh which I forgot what was it my SFM days. Yeah, during your SMF day, I was just trying to remember which uh, SMF you're doing because I was, I may be thinking of a different animation because I, I think was it, it the uh, was, was it the was it the pinball hazard one? Because yeah, that cause, uh, because that one does have a smear in it. Yeah, I believe you were showing off one particular smear with uh with uh with the medic. 
with how. Oh I no no no! Moved. Yeah yeah yeah! That was that that was that. I didn't animate that. That was somebody else uh, who animated that. Yeah no, but, the, no no no! I was just saying that during your SMED days, you you decided to take a break to show off like different uh, different animations, especially mm -hmm. like we were showing off the spear technique and how we were showing off an example of a spear technique with a SMF. Yeah, th like the uh, the guy who um. So the guy who made that was he was animating a, a clip from uh, from uh, Ren and Snippy. Um, it was like the uh, basically the whole thing was like was like uh, uh, the medic saying see this button, and like uh, the heavy like slowly down to to reach it and press it, and, and the medic slapping it away, going don't touch that. Do you know what you're dealing with? And like, and like you know grabbing him by the lapels. And the way they did the smears for that was. Um, was first off, he was animating at, at like a, at a lower frame rate. I think it was it was probably like like um somewhere between 12 and 24 frames per second. I'm not exactly sure uh, what exact uh, not exactly sure what, but um the way he did like the smear to make to really give like the 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 feeling of movement on the medic's um motion of grabbing the heavy by the lapels was that he extended the fingers for one frame. And it's like they're, they're they're like bent backwards and, and like it like he, he, he the, like they were bent backwards in such a way where it just looked like the if you know to somebody watching the full thing it just looked like you know like a red blur going across which is the medic's gloves. But if you pause that frame, like the fi the fingers are really like stretched back. That's Ooh. that's like that's another thing I think about too with animation is that like a lot of people judge um, animation based on uh, just they'll, 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 they'll base it on like it's in between frames. Which you're not supposed to see the individual in between frames of. Yeah, it's like I was saying with games. It's like sometimes making the viewer use their imagination is even uh, a greater tool than showing everything possible. Yep. And, and of course, the most really the most recent famous example is I'll crap with you, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Dude, the, the, mo the most the most meme. Yep, the most meme example. That's some that's some really good. Uh, the Simpsons has some really good in between frames. Yeah. Pretty much any time Homer faced the camera. <laughs> Every time. Every Spongebob time. too. Spongebob had great uh, smears. I don't know if Futurama had them. I feel like I, I don't recall any crazy Futurama frames, actually. I, I can recall... Uh, mostly from, like, the screams, but, like, the animation was... A lot of the animation yeah. was done with computers at that point, and they, like, didn't really do much yeah, with that. But, but, yeah, uh, the screams were always off the chain. But you're yeah. talking about, like, the, uh, the, um, the... What is it called? The audience using their imagination leads me into my favorite trope. Um, my, the noodle incident. Yep, the noodle incident. The noodle incident. The noodle incident was uh, the other other piece of media I've used this before, but the trope was named after um, the Calvin and Hobbes comics, where uh, something called the noodle incident would would occasionally be brought up, but never explained, and it would usually like just just garner like negative reactions from anybody who heard about it. <laughs> And your imagination of what the, like, oh, and, and your yeah your imagination makes that incident so much worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's either yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's mostly the, an unexplained situation that has it in the past and you never elaborate on it any yep. further. The, the jockstrap incident the, in uh, in yeah. in TFS, yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> the jockstrap incident. What 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 happened? Who survived? The like we we have bits and pieces of it, but not a full picture. We just <laughs> yeah. know, all all we know is that uh, Ginyu dug the holes, yeah. and that's pretty and much King, it. And King and, Cold was involved. And there were a lot mm -hmm. of bodies. Like there there were a lot of bodies, and and uh, Captain G Ginyu dug the holes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we know about about the jockstrap incident, and and it's and it's great because whatever your mind comes up with for that is going to be better than what could possibly be shown on a screen. Yeah. It's, it's like it's making it's a negative yeah. yeah, it's all about the mystery. Using 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 the power of the audience's imagination is like is such a powerful tool. So uh, yeah, there's definitely. there's a, there's a few instances of that I can think of now. Um, in Justice League, going back to the DC stuff, in Justice League. Um, what was his oh, name? Yeah, yeah. Deadshot. D Deadshot was trying to assassinate Aquaman, and uh, you know he fails. Like the the Justice League stops him, but like they're trying to interrogate Deadshot, and he's and he's like, you know, I'm not. Oh, I'm not gonna say anything. Batman pulls him aside and just goes, "Let me give you one piece of advice." And then it pans out, so you can't hear what he says. And Deadshot just goes, "Okay, okay, I'll tell you." <laughs> Fantastic. And Superman hears it because Wonder Woman goes, "What did he say?" And Superman goes, "You don't want to know." That's the scene. That's so you have no idea what he said, and it's so chilling. 
Ooh. Oh, that's so good. It plays into his superhero mystique too. Yeah, and also I think Clark is too much of a good boy. Uh, too much of a good boy to say. <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we did we we did get one scene from a uh, from like a, it was one of the newer Justice League series. Definitely not a Pr Bruce Tim one. Uh, definitely made for kids. But um, I think they were interrogating. I think they were interrogating Deadshot again, actually, and um, it uh. Clark, Clark and uh, and Bruce were going in there to do the interrogation. And Clark was like, "You always get to be the bad cop. I want to be the bad cop." <laughs> and it's and it plays out like where where Superman's being like really awkward about like about interrogating him, whereas Batman is like still in his own Batman way, off offering Deadshot coffee and donuts. <laughs> I think I remember seeing that. I, I don't know if I would. I don't it's, know if I would feel comfortable if Batman was being the good cop of my uh, interrogation. It's not I, a. I it, like it, it, it wasn't in the the DCAU. It was like it was like in one of the newer Justice League shows. Justice League even, action sounds. So Justice League action. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Even still, it's just I. I don't know. You know things are bad when Batman's your good cop. Yep. <laughs> Well, I, that also happened in Justice League Unlimited. There was an episode where they go to the future, uh, chasing after a time traveler who's trying to steal Batman's utility belt, um, just for a souvenir. And uh, they end up in Neo Gotham from Batman Beyond. And, um, you know, Batman meets old Bruce, and old Bruce is bad cop, and Batman is good cop. Because <laughs> there's, like there's like a bit where, uh, where, what was it? It's Ghoul from Batman Beyond, where they're trying to like interrogate him over where, um, where the time traveler is. And, uh... Batman, like Batman's like holding him out over like the edge of a building and goes, you know, you better start talking, my arm's getting tired. And old Bruce goes, I can't believe I was ever that green. Here's how you <laughs> interrogate somebody. And it like cuts forward to after he's done and, and Ghoul like revealing like everything to him. You know, <laughs> and, and and it's just like, we uh, we need more information that, you know, where is this guy? It's like, that's all I got, I don't know what to do. And, and Batman goes, I can't control my friend here for much longer. <laughs> Shift, shifting the power entirely, on <laughs> which is crazy, honestly, for all the stuff that Batman gets up to. It's like the fact that he could make it to old age and, and at all is incredible. Yeah, it's like it's like pirates. It's like there's no old bold pirates. The uh, the way I think they did a really good job uh, at setting up Batman Beyond because the first episode is like between like the end of Batman the animated series and the beginning of Batman Beyond, where it's Bruce in like in like the the Batman Beyond suit, like the the one that we know Terry McGinnis to wear. Um, you know, fighting crime. Uh, but like, he gets to a point where like, he's stopping like the smuggling ring, and he has like, he, he has like, like a, like a heart attack. Or like, so, something like goes wrong and he can't like, um, he can't like continue the fight. And, um, the thug he's fighting is about to like, just, you know, completely beat him senseless. Batman sees one option for him, a gun. He picks it up and points at the guy, the guy escapes, and Batman vows to never be Batman again because he did the, he broke his one cardinal rule. No killing, no guns. Despite, despite the fact that uh, there is the one comic series year one that has him. <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's year one. There's also very early Batman when he was like. Oh yeah, by, there's. By, also... by the way, Chad, are you? Are, is it? Uh, is it a little uh, uh, shocking to reveal this side of me that really loves the DC, the DC animated <laughs> universe? <laughs> No, because I don't no, think I, I don't think I've rambled. I haven't rambled about the DCAU in a long time. Although it probably came up for a few of my patrons when we did the. Um, when we did like the the Batman Beyond uh, uh, Return of the Joker stuff, yeah, I don't we, think that's a bit of a coincidence. I, yeah, I no, I love I love the I especially love like the Bruce Tim DC animated universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I definitely remember like um, I I definitely enjoy like Brave and the Bold. Bold. That was funny. That was I, my favorite bit about that was was uh, the voice actor for Hoss Delgado playing Batman, and it just I sounds know. like it just sounds like Hoss Delgado. I know that's that was been my head cannon for the longest time, but, uh, up until the point where, oh yeah, no, this is definitely Bruce. Was, yeah. I'm just like, man, I so wanted to be hostile godless Batman. <laughs> <laughs> just takes off the mask and it's not Bruce. It's Haas. Oh, what was I gonna say though? Uh, oh, I was I I don't remember like where it was, where it was bringing it back to, but just like, man, like. Uh, I don't know if this is if this is gonna sound like an insult to to the actor because I prefer their voice acting career over their live action career, but like Will Friedle is one of my favorite voice actors. T yeah. Terry McGinnis, Ron Stoppable, Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Yep. Oh, wait, he's dead. Honestly, he's he's Deadpool and Ultimate Spider Man. Honestly, at this point, I kind of enjoying Will Arnett as a voice actor. Well, oh yeah, yeah. Will Arnett's been doing some great stuff. 
Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I really like Will Arnett and uh, Bojack. I love Bojack. Yeah, a terrible <laughs> show, but it's really good. Yeah, it's terrible, terrible in a good sense or terrible. It's very well written, but yep. it's, uh, a yeah, dog, it's a, a, li a little bit too well written. If you if you catch yeah. my drift, just yeah. just hits just hits you right in the gut in the hard sense. Oh yeah, they, they they definitely know how to how to kick you in the balls and squeeze your nipples at the same time. Yeah. But at the very least, you you at least compliment them on on how well they did it. Oh, you'll watch it. You'll you'll quote everything they say. God, I forgot. If you get into it, I know some people who really want it. I forgot the name of the character that he played because I don't remember anybody's names from that uh, that series. But um, what's his name? Wilfred Dell was a uh, was I think I think he, Wilfred Dell gained most of his popularity from Boy Meets World. And Kim Possible. I, I mean, like, he probably got the gig at King Possible because of Boy Meets World. I imagine so, yeah. I, yeah. For, I forgot who he played, though. Was, was it Cory? There's got to be someone named Cory in that show, right? No, Cory was one. Corey was the guy who looks like Shia LaBeouf. I don't remember his name. Okay, if uh, I start to look like Shia LaBeouf, I'll, I'll, I'll be concerned. I'll be very Fred concerned. Savage? Is it Fred or did Fred, did Fred Savage play? Cor was Cor 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 Savage? Was, Corey was played it's by Ben the, Savage. It's one of the Savage brothers. Wade? Corey was in the house top. Thanks, chat. <laughs> Please do not associate me with that show. No, 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 I, 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 no. There was a character in uh, there was a character in Boy Meets World named Corey. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. character was. Uh, I mean, I, in all honesty, yeah. If there's any other character, any other Corys I want to be, I don't not want to be associated with Corey from uh, Bass and Raven and slash uh, Corey <laughs> in the house. Please, for the love of God. Choose your Corey. <laughs> Corey. Corey. Or Corey! Corey! Corey. Yeah, Eric was the, was the brother. Eric Matthews, yeah. That's yeah. who that's who Will Fredell played. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Fred Savage was the Wonder Years, I was gonna co uh, correct on Yeah, that. it was one of the Savage brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone so, someone blew my mind the other day saying that uh, the actress who played Scarlet Witch was related related to the Olsen twins. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I had no idea. That's I saw her I on um I saw, I saw her on uh, on Harmon Quest. On what? what? Harmon Quest. Oh, yeah. It was a it's a it was a, um, a tabletop role playing show uh, produced by Dan Harmon. Was that one of the episodes? That, that sounds really fun. It, yeah, it the, the way they go about it is really neat too. It it, it would take a, a, like a high production value to 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 make it. It, it takes a high production value to make it because what they did was they would uh so they they gather in a studio and play like play. It was it was um Pathfinder for uh, for this one. Half hour mm. one, by the way. Well, I, I don't think two of was out. out that I, I don't remember so. what, what version of Pathfinder it was, but either yeah, way, they're, they're, it's basically one, one yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're playing. Uh, they play Pathfinder, and um, uh, they played in front of like a live studio audience. So they'd be playing for like like a couple hours. But what they would do is they would condense that down into like twenty minutes and then animate bits from it. Yeah, cool. and you just kind of like cut between uh. Yeah, cut uh, cut between the live action and the animated bits. The, was, it on, the, was it on YouTube? Uh, was it like it's it was on. Uh, I can't remember which streaming service it was on initially, but it's on VRV now. Uh, I, um, I thought it was. On. No, it, it didn't start on Verve. It started on a different one. The, uh, first, the first clip I saw. So and what they would do is they would have a different guest on for every episode to play like an NPC. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the all, like, I know it's guest. Was it? Uh, just, yeah. The, the, yes, uh, Elizabeth Olsen was one of those guests. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, Jeff Davis was on. Uh... Yeah, Jeff Davis. Um, uh, Spencer Crittenden was the DM. Uh, Dan Harmon was the uh, DM, and uh, uh, Aaron, and Aaron. Uh, no, uh, Dan Harmon was the was was Dan Harmon, Jeff Davis, and uh, and Aaron McGaffey were the regular players. Uh, Spencer Crittenden was the um, was the DM, and then they would have a, they would have guests on every uh, every now and again. I'm glad that of all the things to have made it all the way to 2020 and beyond, D and D is still yeah. Like, uh, I, popular that, as ever, yeah, like, that's not more. I think that that's awesome. The thing is too, I, the one thing I love about Harmon Quest is that it's um. Have you ever like seen like like D and D shows that everyone's talking about? Not gonna not gonna name names here, but like you've seen D and D shows that everyone's gonna been talking about, and you're and you like you try to watch it, and it's like this comes out weekly, and each episode is five hours long. I can't watch this. Yeah. So much yeah. more palatable with Harmon Quest because each episode is 20 minutes. That's mm -hmm. the way it's got to be. Yeah. Some people it's strange though because uh, when it comes to that D and D content, sometimes that's the only content that people I know watch. 
It's like the, it's either that or like true crime documentary. I, I was thinking Critical Role in terms of that. So as people are saying Adventure Zone, but pretty much any D and D show, it's Hi, so man. hard to catch up with those. Like, yep. you, like it's um, what is it? Um, it, it's not as bad as like as like trying to watch every YouTube video. Cause like, and this was like 10 years ago, there was a study where if you tried to watch every single YouTube video, Jeez. every if you tried to watch every single YouTube video, every hour you'd fall two weeks behind. Might as well Oof. walk to the sun. Yep. Might as well be walking on the sun. <laughs> Just had to shoot a horn at it in. That's a good song, I love that song. But yeah. I was also thinking, yeah, because there's so many, and there's like so many different uh, other groups as well too, because you got high rollers, there's, uh, yeah, Team Four Star has good... their own group. Yeah, TFS at the table. Uh, there's, yeah. um, I mean, there's the Isleverse. Uh, there's the Unexpectables. Honest. Yeah. This um, is now getting us. Adventure Star Zone. Did, did you ever watch a, an animated D and D series? It wasn't people playing. This was actually really old YouTube called Un, uh, Unforgotten Realms. No. Oh, the only man. wait. The only, the only animated D and D show I know of was the original Dungeons and Dragons show. Oh God! What you're making me remember things, and I, God, I can't remember what exactly it was. <laughs> oh yeah, um, Rooster Teeth has there's a uh, tales from the uh, tales from the Stinky Dragon, I think is what it's called. Um, they they do it in kind of like a Harmon Quest style, where it's not animated, but it is edited down. Oh yeah, I also know that uh, uh, Zero Escape, uh, no Zero Punctuation is doing their own D and D thing as well too. So somebody brought up that like uh, that like that whole thing of not being able to catch up is how they see my satisfactory streams. The thing is, that's gonna end significantly sooner than a D and D campaign. Yep. So you'll so when it's so you'll at the very least be able to catch up on that pretty quickly. Compared to that with uh, say your Oblivion let's play, a meal Zeno Blade Two let's play. Well, I, the, <laughs> well, the other thing with the with the Oblivion let's play is that's coming out in half hour chunks. Yeah, that's true. But it's, long, but it's still a lot. But it's still the longest lot. form con. Of course, then again, there's also like the Unfor one Why Unforgotten Realm sounds so familiar, and I can't yeah. place my finger on where. It was a website called The Escapist, and uh, that, it was I forget, back when websites used to be their own sort of like uh, video streaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, was, it was in 2008, 2009. And then they stopped. They did a couple seasons and even around like an Assassin's Creed. 2006, maybe? Yeah, it seems like it was all on YouTube. It's Yo, fun, who remembers? Who remembers the freaking champion way, way back in the day? Oh, like the way mid. The uh, no, not that far back. Uh, in like the <laughs> mid 2000s. Oh, yeah, I was just calling. <laughs> I no, I got you. I, I, I got you. Um. <laughs> Who animated like uh, like this like it was like a D and D audio sketch that somebody made, and then somebody took that audio and animated it using the sprites from Final Fantasy One. Oh. <laughs> eight bit theater? It, no, it, that wasn't eight bit theater. That, that was that was a different thing. This is something done by somebody else who's probably a fan of eight bit theater. This is I think the the thing was called eight bit D and D. It, it's it's where casting Magic Missile at the Darkness came from. Yeah, because uh, yeah. I think oh, it was right. I think I think it was called the Dead Ale Wives. Hmm. Yep, where are the Cheetos? Where's the Mountain Dew? Honestly, using Final Fantasy One Sprites for a D and D thing makes it fits. complete sense. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it makes complete sense considering the nature yeah. of Final Fantasy. Exactly, it's it's crazy to think that Final Fantasy and D and D are kind of of the same sort of uh, cloth. It's like they both are fundamentally RPGs. Well, and also for the fact that uh, they took elements from D&D and put it into mm -hmm. Final Fantasy. This is why some some monsters are familiar, like uh, Tia, Tiamat is like reoccurring. Yeah. Well, Tia, Tiamat has history in hum, human mythology. That's like a... That is true as well, too. I mean, like, uh, to, to be fair, like, a lot of, like, uh, like D&D I mean, D &D is basically based off Tolkien mythology. Well, also, oh, okay. also, I was just saying, like, with Tiamat, you have, like, Iterations with her being like a five-headed dragon, or mm -hmm. or stuff like that, or you make the five-headed dragon like its own separate en enemy. Which... Well, even even still, like the class system and something like that. It's like I, I don't think there was ever RPG classes so well defined before D and D, and it's gone a long way. Yep.
And it's definitely has changed a lot over the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, D&D Tiamat is so far away from the mythological version of Tiamat. Yeah. 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 I think the closest yeah. you technically could get is in Shin Megami Tensei, but even then, it's Shin Megami Tensei. I love the, uh... Oh, God. The, uh... Any, like, those personas and whatnot where it's, like, it's, like, the mythical mythological... These mythological beings being represented in persona and just, like, how different some of them are... are. Hey, Shiva. Yeah. It's, it's like there's, there's always a hint of it, but it's also, uh, they get a little monster fire. Yeah. But, uh, and I, I enjoy that. I like that there's something creative instead of just being like, it's the guy from the myth you know. He looks yep. just like how you think he does. But could you imagine, like, yeah. like, oh my god, imagine, like, Imagine if like they did that like the Marvel universe where it's like where it's like they had to get like for some, imagine if if you will the copyright free mythos Norse mythos was a uh, like had a copyright so in order to actively use Thor in like say Marvel they had to like make him like a monster <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be creative. Uh, that could be very interesting. It'd be like a Daredevil or something. And it's, and it I, says I have seen a I have seen a Thor here in fourteen, and it's kind of monsters in a sense. But even then, that's only like a like a book monster. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's a book monster in the Raid series. I mean, you would never see this monster anywhere else in the game other than this one particular Raid series. <laughs> but for anything else. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Now go, I'm just, now I, just thinking, what would be the most horrific thing you could do with no key per se? Do you want to keep it as a change link, or do you want to do something completely different? For Loki? Yeah. I mean, if you want to do, like, uh, copy, uh, copyrighted free... I mean, Loki. like, he's the son of a frost giant, so you can do a lot with that. Okay, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, but do you want to also keep it as a, like, a god of... Uh, a trickster god, or do you want to? Yeah, no, I mean, like, there's, there's a there lot you can, you can do with, the, with like that character in general. <laughs> Deep with the three months of tier one, saying, just realized that I'm not subbed. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for not, like, for not reading the other ones that have been coming in, but that one just made me laugh. Thank you, Deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> Keep on supporting. Uh, what is it? The, uh, like, Yu-Gi-Oh had like the, uh, the Aesir ar <laughs> uh, archetype. River Birch turned Loki into Frosty the Snowman. That, incredible. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like the uh God, what what the hell is the name of that anime anime animation company that did like the like um uh like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and all that? Just turn him into one of those. Rankin Bass, is okay. He, is he a Rankin Bass or Ruby Spears? But it's more likely Rankin Bass. I missed a white Christmas. I missed the snow. I don't. I never remember the the rest of the lyrics of that song because I end up going, "Ah, Mr. White Christmas, Ah, Mr. Snow, send me a kiss by wire, baby, my heart's on fire." <laughs> oh, what a crossover! Let's go. <laughs> You'd have to slow down the tempo a lot on on a uh, White Christmas to make that work. Nah, speed it up. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta. Ah, Mr. White Christmas, Ah, Mr. Snow, send me a kiss by wire. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> yeah, that's bumping. Yeah, You're so back. Fun. I'm remixing that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I'm trying to remember if uh, Alex Roshan uh, did a? Did he did. A yeah, he, he did. He did one of those uh, uh, about a uh, Spamton. Mm -hmm. I think the, I still think the best one he did was the the uh, Big House uh, audio. <laughs> Oh yeah, fuck you, Baltimore! If you're dumb enough to buy a buy a car this weekend, you can shove it up your own ass. <laughs> you can kiss my beautiful head. Your hot mama. Popski.bandcamp.com. That's Popski with two Y's. Home of challenge pissing! If you can piss six feet, six feet straight up in the air and not get wet, you get zero, what was it, zero down payment? I was gonna say, is this, is this the new Mr. Beast challenge? <laughs> challenge deep seat. So I can't challenge. wait to see the title and thumbnail for that one. Have you ever had Mr. Beast Burger? No, no that sounds no. awesome. I'm a burger connoisseur, tell me about it's, it. It's really good, but my god, I, th I thought I was gonna have a coronary while eating it. 
That's exactly. That's a point. That's worth it. Yep. Let's go. No, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit on the health nut side. So that so that that was that was a point <laughs> against it for me. But I can see why people would would have that a point be in their favor. Tom, Tom it's called a cheat day. <laughs> you you can't, can't argue with that. Yeah, you might have to write that one off as a cheap mom. Followed by a nice recovery coma. I had a, I had a Poke Bowl uh, oh, today. So good. Yeah. These I, burgers I have... are like getting Chuck E. Cheesed, right? Wait, what? Okay. Do you know what getting Chuck E. Cheesed is? No. Okay, what? so it's basically you order something from somewhere that sounds pretty good, but it... It can come from Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's that's brutal, actually. Yeah. This is why I can't trust DoorDash or skip the dishes or whatever. This yeah. is like, what, what if they just get the food from somewhere else? Yeah. I guess they don't. Yeah. But it's like that could be a problem. The uh, yeah. what was it? Uh, I don't know how like you're supposed to make a poke bowl, but this poke place I order from, you can replace the uh the uh rice with uh with kale noodles. And oh my god, they're so good. Hmm. Nice. That sounds. Fantastic. Yeah, I was just thinking. Oh, hey, hey, there are poke bowls in Shante and Sarah Cyrus. I was thinking maybe that kind of influenced things a bit. I don't know. Trisman, I like that. G Max Alchemy is cheat year Alchemy. Change my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, from what I understand, based on reading the Pokedex, Alchemy is apparently a non-Newtonian fluid. <laughs> maybe. Because apparently, if you hit it, it gets harder. Whoa. Whoa. Science, man. That's like when you make that uh, that cornstarch slurry. If you try to punch it, then it uh, then it like it just stiffens up. Does that play into its ability? Does it have an ability that like raises its stiffness? No, no, no. This is based on his Pokedex entry. That would be cool if it's it did. Lore. It's lore based, basically. Yeah, it's more or less just a uh, uh, gameplay story segregation, basically. There's, there's a few times where it actually does integrate into the games, but most of the time it's just fluffy Yeah. Basically. And a machine, flavor. son. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna say because uh, I remember when you were starting up uh, a Blue Santa play on stream. I noticed you you had Seven Sirens up on your on your. You know, it's just like hmm, that was curious. And what? I wonder. Uh, you had Cyrus Cyrus on your uh, on your dashboard for on the Switch. Oh yeah, yeah. I was doing the Let's Play that at the time. Yeah, it's like yeah, you didn't announce it at the point. No, yeah, no, I I I. I, I I think I announced it an hour before it went live, and I just zoomed in on uh, on the part of Shantae where her ponytail. I zoomed in on the base of her ponytail. Yeah. And that was that was the uh, the announcement. <laughs> yeah. I just and I just paid a little attention to the to your startup on the on your Switch for the stream, and it's just like, hmm, Shantae and the Seven Sirens. I wonder what this is. I about. bought I bought it when it first came out and never played it. Yep. I bought it from Limited Run because I had the uh because I've got the uh, the physical copy of it. I I got my copy of uh Half Genie Hero oh, a limited edition that I got from uh, Best Buy for Christmas actually. Ooh. It, it's not it's just the regular yes. game, it's not like the complete complete version. Mm -hmm. But Tom, did you did you finish that Mother 3 let's, let's play? Yes! Nice. What'd you think? It's really good. I I, I like how the uh the um the ending is left on like like for like kind of you to d to interpret how it went. Yeah, so interpretable. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that game did so much. And it's also yeah. it's, it's a little bit it's a little bit long. It's a little bit grindy, but it really is worth the experience. Yes. It definitely the one thing the one thing I will say though is that I didn't get a chance to go back to um I forgot what the name of the castle is, but oh, I never so I, I, ne I never yeah I never got a chance to go back to Oh So Hey Castle after uh, after I beat the boss there. And, oh, and, and everybody in the comments was telling me to go back there. Oh, Maybe just yeah, because yeah. The it, there was the ultimate weapon for a uh, duster, I think. Oh, is that is that yeah, what was in? Right. I thought it was like I thought it was like a cutscene or something. Yeah, that's where his ultimate staples are. Oh, you know yeah. what? Since I, I've got quite the uh, the uh, uh, audience here, I, I should uh, let you all know that uh, I've got a new merch store up, TomFox.com. We uh, we I just launched it, um, and uh, I finally have the uh, the pizza shirt. Available. Snazzle. Yeah. Yep. Of course, if you, of course, if you happen to be a tier three sub or paying twenty bucks on the Patreon, you, you would... can get behind the scenes stuff where Tom could post uh, previews. Pre previews of whatever the hell I got coming up. Yep. Including uh, <laughs> including sneak peeks at uh, at design concept for what my VTuber is gonna look like. And also merchandise idea because yep. 
the teaser shirt was initially pitched there, you'd be like, hey, choose which ones look the best. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've done it yet, but I can remember to give Shul the, uh, the, uh, mod role. Or, like, I gotta start, like, making roles for people that aren't mods. Yeah, you probably should've. Because I have, I have one. I have, I, 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 I did make a, uh, I, I just, I've got the mod role, which I've just been using as a, as a way to, like, get people into the, the recording, uh, room. But, like, it's basically the catch-all. It's basically the catch-all. I did, however, make for, uh, for when uh, when a meal was coming out, I did make the the friendo Krug roll. <laughs> <laughs> a meal it is a D friendo Krug. So, but that's supposed to be like the, the one for like for like the people that aren't mods. <laughs> mm. I should probably also make like an artist uh, uh, and like a like an artist one as well. Like uh, probably like something special for like a uh, for uh, Austin Dan and um uh. Uh, who's about to? <laughs> Austin, just Dan, and and Shul, and Shul, yeah. Yeah, Discord's pretty awesome about that. It's nice that you can make so many different rules. For yeah, you can even like a full while. Maybe from Austin in there as well too, considering well, I, he is I, an, a bit of an artist. I feel like I'd have to. Uh... Oh wait, what did you, you say? I was just saying maybe throw in Popsky because of a, yeah, yeah. a bit of an artist in that. That's me. So think of like make, make, like a, make like a make like a fan, fan artist. Uh, think of like maybe like a fan artist role as well. And like I've seen some yeah, people where it's that. like where it's like they have roles where um or they have like like bots in there where if you like respond to it with like an emoji uh, or if you react to the message with like an emoji of like a colored circle, it'll oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, give yeah. you like that color role and your name will be that color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd ever implement that, just because I feel like it'd be a giant hassle, considering how deep rooted we are in here. But we'll uh, see. <laughs> yeah, I'm very certain we could. There is a way to actually set up a custom box specifically for that purpose. But yeah, that can get very chaotic in yeah. places. Yeah, bots can be handy. I actually had a bot in my chat that I used to distribute those rules, but I did. I had the rules listed as RPG rules, so people could just have like warrior or fighter, or white mage or whatever. That was a nice way to do some rules. Ah, thank you for editing that, uh, Mega Swool. But yeah, TomFox.com. We got the pizza shirt. We have a new Tom Face shirt. We've got a bunch of your old classics like um, uh, Big Puppy Energy, uh, Cannaman, and uh, and of course the Screaming Quagsire. I was thinking. I was thinking on that in terms of like actual merch, because I believe you posted out on Twitter, I think, about suggestions. I was thinking like maybe some pins. I was, well, I was okay. thinking like- Well, so, okay, so what I'm going through, uh, the, the service I'm going through right now, um, I have to be, pin, pins might be a bit of a tall order because they could only order them in, in batches of 300, and I have to make oh. sure I fill those pre-orders first. So, uh, so we'll right. see on that one. You're gonna be throwing those through the convention floor, like. The well, that's the problem. Well, uh, well, the, well, I mean, the other thing too is that, like, I kind of have. To, I think I probably have to prove that I can that I can move those numbers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, because I think for those it's based on a pre-order system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe but I would I would I would make like a like a Tom face uh Tom face uh, enamel pin. Uh, for that one, if that's the case. We don't, we'd have to see because like uh, some of them are, are very like uh are yeah, very uh, uh what do you call it stream specific no i wouldn't say stream specific um detailed like really detailed to the point where they probably wouldn't be able to go on like oh, an yeah, enamel yeah, pin yeah, yeah. yeah you're right so like uh like the screaming quags are when i probably have to see if i can get a larger version of like the screaming quags are emote and make that into a pin although oh, uh, that's also another that's another issue as well too yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> Also, that would be another thing as well too. If like if you decide to make a an animal pen of your a vanity, how else would that work? Yeah, that? it's very it, it, I, I, like I, I mean like what I did for the emote was I um I just uh, on the levels for it I just increased the the white balance on it. The white balance? No, that's not what I'm looking for. I increased the levels on it so the white side was brighter and it made and it made the 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 more darker portions of manatee uh, stand out. That's not the one picture that your dad took. Yes, no, that is not the picture that my dad took. Um, the emote is, uh, I don't know if I posted it to my Twitter or not. It's just a picture of him I took from uh, from him being on the, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, just Mega just saying, give, just give Quaxar a giant thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, or just make it Potato Quag. 
As someone who's uh, who's worked with someone who sells pins before, that batch size isn't too far off from what she usually receives. It's mostly in case uh, some mistakes in the plating or the paint. Interesting. Mm. Yo, Deef upgraded to a tier two sub. Thank you, Deef. Oh. Hey. Hey, now he gets to hang out with us for oh, movie Yeah, nights. for movie nights. Hell yeah. <sighs> Is that you moving your chair? No, that's actually my controller. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, occasionally I am moving a chair, but yeah. That rumble you just heard, that was a uh, controller, actually. I wanted to confirm. Cause in my head cause cause there's been like there's been like a small portion in the back of my my mind where it's like Is he farting really loud? <laughs> I am I am not at 10 levels. I'll be jealous. I'll let you know if I wow. let one rip. <laughs> <laughs> Got yeah, I'm not. I got farts like a Beyblade. I'm letting them rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've been. Uh, yeah, it's mostly because of the fact that I've been running a an instance in the background. Is because of my control being plugged in. It's just like a way, a way of just like saying, "Hey, your thing popped up. Yeah. Do like, something, damn it!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. You only got like 45 seconds. You, you want to confirm or deny? And your reply is. <laughs> Cutting the cheese. Cheese. I'm very allergic to cheese. Where does that even from? Uh, I first heard it on Game Grumps. Uh, it sounds like a face someone would say. It was a. Uh, it was one of the. Uh, I'm trying to think of what like what exactly was being said. Oh, it was um. He was doing like a sassy nerd voice. Like, he's talking about like going on a date, it's like... <laughs> We're going to an Italian place for dinner, and I'm very allergic to cheese. You're, you started off doing your Jewish butter. That's what it sounded like! <laughs> Alrighty then. It's I'm giving it back to you as I heard it. We're playing the telephone game here. <laughs> yeah, now you gotta say it, but different. What are you gonna say? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I'm not cheesy. He cheesy's doing his own thing. I'm not sure what he's doing. It's so not easy. <laughs> cheesy. Yeah. Oh, also, I'm if uh, if you uh, order from uh, topfox.com, um, I'll send you a personalized thank you in the form of a video. Because that's part of how fourth wall operates. Like you get, you can, I get, like they. Part of their app is that I could just like make videos to send to people who buy stuff. Oh, fourth wall is the co that's that's the service. I thought you were just breaking the fourth wall. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The service is called fourth wall. <laughs> okay. It's certainly better than certain other uh, storefronts out there. <laughs> just like, yeah, that's how the fourth wall works. Of course, guys. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you've heard of the fourth wrong. wall before. What fourth wall? <laughs> like, like when you, when you purchase something, you can, like add a comment underneath it. So like if if like you're looking for something specific, I can I can go based off of your comment uh, <laughs> for what you said. Because uh, I remember I can't remember who it was, uh, but somebody purchased one saying now I've got some, when they purchased the pizza pizza shirt, they said now I've got something to wear out. Well, except for maybe New York or Chicago, and uh, <laughs> and I, and I responded saying uh, you might you might want to avoid Detroit as well because uh, oh. because they've got their own style of pizza and all of Italy. <laughs> so what you're saying is don't hang out with chill with that shirt oh my god i'm totally going to <laughs> <laughs> oh we got you gotta vlog that moment <laughs> that's gonna be so amazing <laughs> I'm, hope, I'm hoping to build the website up more to kind of be like a, like a central hub so like, so you got your, uh, you got the yeah. You'll be you able to, you'll be able to like go YouTube. go to that website specifically to see like, like. I'm I'm I'm, I'm wondering like how robust Fourth Wall's uh, web designer is, but like maybe be able to see like if I'm live, uh, what the latest video is, what the latest on my Twitter feed looks like, uh, what the latest what what's coming through on like my TikTok, like that kind of thing. No, no, no. Oh, Becca, so. Becca has a better idea. Do us a secret Santa. Oh my God. Oh, I don't want to buy somebody my merch for a secret Santa. <laughs> that's that's I, I I I I wouldn't I I wouldn't mind getting that like myself from somebody, but I, I I don't know. I just feel like that that's not like 
I think it'd be funny if someone gave me their own merch as a secret Santa, but I, like, I would, um, I, like, but that's me. I'm weird. <laughs> I wouldn't want to give somebody my own merch as, as, like, a secret Santa gift. That's, no, it's okay. That's considerate. Here, chill. Uh, now, like you can, now you can, uh, now you can whore my brand out on your channel. <laughs> by, by having this legally non destroyed pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shul did such a great job on that design, because I was wondering how we were gonna do, like, the quotes in pizza to make them, like, very distinct and stand out. He did a great job with that. Yeah, the other designs were very nice. Oh, no! Honestly, I think oh, the combination of, like, uh... I think, yeah, I think the combination of, uh, two and three were probably the best. Yeah. Well, I, I, I released one that was just white. Um, where that didn't have like the the back the, the shirt was white, and it didn't have the back but the design didn't have the backdrop on it because like it you know it's supposed to look like a pizza box. But then for like the shirts that are in different colors, um, that one does have the white back background on it, which is why there's two different listings for it. Yeah, try <laughs> I know what you're laughing at, Corey. <laughs> was it what, what I, was it what I posted in there about like about the naming convention for uh oh. for the. I don't think it was that. I was oh, okay. I, th I thought that's what you were laughing at. Oh, I was trying to read a uh, Christmas uh, bit. Oh, 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 okay. Uh -huh. I was just trying to reply to that, basically. Uh, Trisman with 100 bits saying, Tom and Corey, I deeply appreciate you complimenting my comments. It's funny as someone who deals with the, the demon of self-doubt. Same, though. It genuinely means the world to me. Well, you're very welcome, Trisman. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm lucky in the sense I don't have something like that, but there may be moments where I do have like that, but it's very rare. I don't want to put that on. It's complicated. Like, my, people are complicated. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel like one thing as well is that like kind of going off, off subject here, but like, you know, just to help you brighten up a little bit, your stuttering has gotten a lot better. Oh, that's good. Oh, he's talking about mine. Yeah, I know. I was, you, you yeah. Hey, oh, I, I didn't even know. Yeah. Am I, am hey, I, I mean, you were talking about it at the, at the beginning. Yeah. Honestly, not stuttering on Mike is hard. Yeah. <laughs> We're big challenge. I, I think it's just maybe just hanging out with people and just kind of loosening up a bit and maybe just talking for a bit kind of loosens me up a bit. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, like, uh, it's also the kind of thing where it's like, I generally don't have people on here very often just to like chat with so like yeah. so like you haven't really gotten a lot of practice <laughs> yeah it's always nice to have someone to bounce off of yeah oh god another thing is what i was thinking about as well oh i know there is like the whole thing with you doing like voice acting and all that it's just like hmm if you ever were to get into this, this is just for everyone else. Uh, if you were to get into like voice acting, don't aim big, aim small. Because there are plenty of people out there who are offering like various different jobs as well too that seem like it's small, but it does help out in the long run and stuff. Oh yeah. And also make sure, uh, also make sure you are getting your fair pay as well too because voice acting has been getting some bad stuff because of people not paying out the well, actors. Well, the other thing too is that like when you're starting out, it's probably good to look for those free, uh, those, those free gigs because they're less competitive and they'll help you build up a, uh, a portfolio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're going to be starting out, just see if it just gets you interested in all that. And, and also it helps out as well too because at the very least you have something to look back on as well too. Cringe or not, it's always nice to see where you start out from. Yep. A, I, I had I had the uh, the the misfortune of uh, of um, starting my career publicly, so you know I've kind I kind of have like all of, all of my uh, my my early stuff is is burned into the memories of some people. It's yeah, always you're... it's always very bizarre when I enter a stream or like or like and I'm just like chatting with somebody and they're like yeah you know I I oh god yeah I remember I watched your machinimas and I'm like oh no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you only get one debut, Tom. You know who the you know who the last person I was expecting that to come from was? Freaking Haruka! Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. Sounds, sounds like she she's known 
Tom Fox for a long time. You knew me back when I was Tom Kasune, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, doing like small jobs or like even doing like fan animation, uh, like fan stuff online, it, it's nice to have like at least a portfolio going. In, although in certain cases, it might be good to might be X on certain projects just because of a uh, certain. People may, may not be so fondly of certain projects and all that. Is there any, like, <laughs> totally. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give some content creator advice here. First off, if you ever want to get into, like, into, into, to streaming, the, the first thing you, you should know is to not get into it expecting, like, fame or, or like, anything to come from it. Do it yeah. as a hobby, do it as, like, a fun thing with your friends. Like, that's, that's, that's how you gotta, that's, that's where you gotta start. Second Stop thing, me. second thing is that if you do gain some kind of like, uh, some kind of like notoriety or success at all, the biggest enemy I think of any, any like content creator that wants like stability is viral success. Yeah. Because well, you gotta you, stay home. Well, no, well, well uh, that, that's one thing. The other thing too is that like, is that like you'll hit something like really big and then like for a long time it's gonna be a steady decline. And it can yeah, be, yeah, it, and it can be very, very hard to deal with uh, from like a mental health perspective. Yeah. Because it, you'll see like this number blast up, and it's like, oh, I finally made it, and things are gonna go great, and then like that number just slowly decreases. Viewers, yeah, viewership so isn't as good. Like you know, you can't, you, can, you can't catch catch the lighting in a bottle you once had, and like, and and eventually it just it just gets to you. One yeah, of the, it's actually really common to get all of your success all at once. And yep. then it's like, what do you do then? It's like, I feel bad for a lot of those one-hit wonders of the 80s and stuff like that. Because even if you do play it out to its end, it's like the flock of seagulls still had to play I Ran So Far Away yep. every weekend. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you've ever seen them play that song, but it's got like one chord in it that <laughs> just goes on for two minutes. Oh. Yeah. But it's, actually, it's like, you, you gotta acknowledge, you got you gotta really like enjoy your path is the thing. It's like, if it's, if it's an activity you wanna do, you shouldn't want to do it just because you're famous and you shouldn't right. wanna stop doing it just because you're not. And it's like, if it's something that you're gonna be in the game for for a long, long time, then you'll, your success will be inevitable because you'll succeed eventually, not all the time, but you, you'll find your success as long as you acknowledge the inevitable and work within the immediate. It's like you you gotta you gotta have the short range goals, but also you know try and keep your eye on the long range goal too. Right. Yeah. There could be like small bursts and whatnot, but just but like like the the like if if you want like that stability, then like then getting getting viral su success can can be like oh yeah can, it can <laughs> viral it, and stability are two very yeah. very far different things. Yeah. No. No. But like but that 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 viral success can like put a huge toll on your mental uh, on like your mental health if like you're just like continually watching that number go down cuz cuz like you had that one viral thing and yeah. it's just not going back up. I think one of the most dangerous pitfalls you can get into is making it a numbers game. It doesn't really matter yep. what the number is, if it's viewers, if it's dollars, if it's subscribers, if it's whatever. Making making it a number game makes it like a lot it ma it magnifies the pain when the number is smaller. But if you just recognize, it's like, you know, there's ebbs and flows, things are up, things are down, people are busy, people are here, it's like, it, you can respond better in the moment to how you should be feeling about where you are in your uh, success, where you yeah. are in your journey. That goes with music artists, too, I mean, going for that shit right now. Yeah, just, oh. yeah, just remember, you want to do this for fun, not not for this, this, until you want to decide to uh, Yeah, well, uh, not when you decide, until, like, un until those numbers do hit a point where, like, you theoretically could do it as, like, a business. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the, the, the... There's a lot to go on, but, like, one thing, too, is that, like... One thing that YouTube really pushes is, like... They want each of their channels to be focused on, like... On like one thing specifically, because like they want a lot you to of be known for one thing, and then you're like yep. you're the you're the like jazz funk guitar guy, or it's yep. like you're the uh, or the you know, or like the Minecraft guy, or like or things the like that. Guy. They but want the, you to be the one central hub for the thing that you're known for, so nobody else has to look elsewhere for your thing. And it makes a lot of sense, but it's really hard to do, and that's not a it's not an easy demon to feed. It is very easy to get burnt out on that. And the, the and the other thing too is that like, you know, let's say, cause this happened to so many like people who got big doing Minecraft in like the early 2000s. They, yeah, like, they got, they gained their success doing Minecraft and they just did Minecraft for like two or three years straight, maybe, maybe even longer. 
And then they were like, well, you know, maybe I should try something different. And like they tried to branch out into variety and the numbers just weren't there. Exactly. And and they got and, and like they got depressed by it. Yeah. And they, and, and, they, and they inevitably stopped doing content creation. So it's very easy to like yeah, there are still uh, that's that that not to say that, that that's like the inevitable like downfall of every content creator. There's plenty of like of content creators who were focused on one thing that managed to escape that, branch out, and still maintain an audience. Yeah. But it's really hard and really difficult not to get um uh it, it's really hard to do and really difficult not to get like downtrodden on yourself for that. Because yeah, because if you're known so, for that one thing, they're gonna look like I'm looking for this plus this. If you remove something from that equation, not as many people are gonna be looking for one part of that. Yeah, it's not yeah. like uh, yeah, not everyone could be like a Captain Sparkles in that sense. Yeah, or, or Yogscast. Like Yogscast's been doing great since uh since they kind of like what uh I wouldn't say went back, but like kind of like um what do you, what's the word I'm looking for? Reduced the Minecraft content if they even still do it anymore. If there's anything I've learned about being like trying to do content on the internet or just trying to stay on the internet as like a place that you want to hang out, is like it's it can be a, a really shaky boat sometimes, and it's uh, it, it's more of a game of survival than you think. yep. Like it makes sense to want to have that viral that viral success, but the survival is that that's where the real game is kind of played. And it, I was gonna say this back when we were talking about consoles, because the console situation kind of mimics how the, or rather the content creator situation mimics how the consoles kind of went. Because for a long time it was just this rising tide lifts all boats, and everyone was just like, oh yeah, now we just gotta see how far the boats can go, and whoever reaches the finish line wins. But then the tide went out, and now it's the, the only questions about like who can swim, because your boat, yep. or you rather your your boat like ran out of oil, so it's like nobody's moving anywhere now. And growth is hard in 2022 because gamers are already on the internet. Dude, we're not gonna find too many more gamers who really aren't on the internet, so the demographic's kind of locked in. Yep. Now it's just like who's watching what and where are people looking. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of growth left to be had. And I've noticed that across a lot of our favorite content creators, people who are doing great things, people who are really trying to push the envelope. It's like they can get the attention, but the attention is attention that's already in the industry, especially mm -hmm. after 2020 and all that we just went through being locked in for years and years. Like it's like people, gamers who wanted to be on the internet are already here. It's like the growth is going to get a little bit more difficult now. I went from first to ninth. Like it's, it's always been sort of a game about survival. And it's like, you gotta know what's going to work and when what's working isn't working anymore. And yeah. adapting is just so key. Because that just reminds me of the whole situation with the Xbox One was first announced, where Microsoft wanted to have the Xbox One be like the universal like uh, multimedia box, but that didn't work out for them, especially the whole always online deal. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean like on top of that, Sony really shot themselves in the foot uh, after they they gained so much of like the. Uh, what is it? They gain like so much ground over over Microsoft in the uh, in like the PS4 Xbox One era, and just did nothing with with it. And Microsoft was able to catch back up and surpass them. Yeah, it really feels like the PlayStation 5's release was poorly timed, and it there still hasn't been very many good games on it, as far as I can tell. Yeah, at this point, like uh, at this point, like. Like you really got to be into Sony exclusives in order to be going for a PS5 at this point. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I got it for Spider-Man. And then. Yeah, I, I I have two games for it. I have Spider-Man and Shantae and the and like was the Pirates Curse. I've got like it's it's a really weird like <laughs> game that I shouldn't have for the PS5. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's unfortunate that it's turned out that way, but it's not that I want to buy a console because I want to support the company, or even that I th feel like there's a lot of games that I want to play, but the exclusives that they create, are they're holding them hostage. It's like, if I want to play this exclusive, it's like, I have to buy your machine, because yeah, yeah, I might yeah. never be able to play it otherwise. It's and like, that's it's also so a bit of a consumer, it drives me crazy. Also, I consider it a bit of an investment as well, too. It's like, how much, how much money are you going to make your... It's just, how much bang for your buck are you going to get for this one particular console that Man. may or not may or... I could not really I don't know if I could see a console as an investment per se it's like well, even, even it, oh yeah no they they, they depreciate out of, they, they depreciate the second they come out yeah there's yeah. just no turnover on them it's like it's yeah I'm, I'm just talking about in terms of like game value and not like like okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Get like for time, a time. Right, yeah, yeah. That, makes, uh -huh. that makes much more sense. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about strictly for the game side of things. Yeah, not... like 
I bought a PlayStation 4 and the only thing I've ever played on it is Kingdom Hearts 3. And that was, well. And, and, and on top of that, you didn't even need to buy a PlayStation 4 for that. Yeah, yeah I it guess came, It came to Steam at some point. <sighs> oh, no, 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 not Steam, uh, the Epic Games Store. Epic Games Store, store right. Oh yeah, boy. On Xbox. Even better. Yeah, because yeah, I believe probably. Square has a deal with the uh, Epic for that. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. I think it's mostly just because of the fact that they're, they're using a uh, Unreal Engine. Square is straight up a wild game these days, and I kind of love it. For the most part, mm -hmm. the the way the most recent decision of them selling off some of their uh, uh, second uh, second uh, uh, second tier titles, I think uh, second rate. Well, that, that's how they that's how they survived the last 10, 15 years. Is they they were publishers. They they had things like Tomb Raider. So that's not exactly something I think I think of Square Enix. But it's yeah. cool that they bought it and provided it. Yeah. But if they don't need don't... it anymore, they think that you know someone else can use those IPs. That's even cool too. <laughs> and of course, they decided to invest that money into other things. God, I hope Konami sells their IPs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. I would really, I, I would really love an actual remake of Metal Gear Solid Three instead of having to see the uh, the cutscenes on a pachinko machine. <laughs> or maybe, maybe a new Castlevania, maybe in the classic style, maybe as an Egophania. Who knows? Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh Cross. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. How Pokemon would versus Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I did try. Would get I, I, I was fiddling around with the idea of making a um uh. Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, like... It's like a Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, like, cross-play sort of thing, in the style of, like, Puyo Puyo Tetris. <laughs> yeah, 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 I love those big, big crossovers. How would that work? I mean, you probably just go back and forth between the two, but it, I wonder, like... It, you have to figure out, would it be on, like, a turn number or, like, a timer? Yeah, Puyo, yeah, Puyo Tetris is on a timer. That was a Pokemon Dynasty that was crossover, wasn't it? No. Uh, no, po there's a Pokemon kind of Fire Emblem crossover. Well, I guess it was kind of a Dynasty Warriors uh, crossover because I think it was, because I think it was produced by Koei Tecmo. Was Pokemon, I forgot what, the, what game that was. Conquest, I believe. Pokemon Conquest, yes. Was that produced by Koei Tecmo? I'll check. Mm, I don't think so. I Pokemon Samurai Wars. You think you're talking about Pokemon? Yeah, yeah, Tecmo Koei. That's Tecmo Koei. Okay, I thought oh. so because because a lot of the characters in it are also in Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, oh, it, oh, it, oh, but oh, it plays oh. like Fire Emblem, which is yep. really interesting too. It's like there's, there's, there's stranger things have happened. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Nobunaga's ambition. A Nobunaga's ambition. I've never heard of that actually. Yeah. yeah. It's a completely different series. But even then, that's not exactly. Uh, then again, Dynasty Wars is based on actual. Uh, uh, actual, on actual Japanese history. Yeah. It's also produced by Koei, so same developers but different series. Interesting. Yeah. It play, looks like it plays basically the same. But with Samurai <laughs> Warriors design, is Samurai Warriors also yeah. Koei Tecmo? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a Bushido game. Bushido, is that what that's called? Yeah. Like Bushido. Yeah, it's Bush. Yeah, Bush. It's a very yeah, interesting. Bushido. They've got very interesting fighting game mechanics for Samurai Warriors, don't they? Because it's it's not like it's not combo based. It's more like it's more like kind of like a watch and wait kind of thing. Is that a, yeah. Am I thinking of that right with Samurai Warriors? Well, that would make sense because you sound like Samurai Warriors to go. No, that, that might be Samurai Showdown, actually. That's Samurai Showdown. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Samurai Showdown is a different. Uh, is more of a wait and see kind of game. Since I think that actually. But, that, but, but that's, that's different from Samurai Warriors, though. Correct. Yes. Yeah, I believe Samurai Warriors is. Uh, hmm. it's, it's like a Dynasty yeah. Warriors game, right? Yeah. It's. Yeah. Yeah. It's within the Warriors style game, but it's like totally different, I think. Okay, I was getting confused. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Samurai Showdown is completely different compared to Warriors. I should I should like look into running a because like I saw that uh that um uh, Koei Tecmo is running a uh Monster Rancher tournament. Um like in the style that they used to run them back in like the old days when when it first came out. I kind of want to see if I can like like look up like rule sets and whatnot. And maybe run my own tournament for uh for like you know viewers and just like people who are fans of the game. I, I I get the feeling I probably attract like a like a fairly high range of people playing, so uh probably would be uh probably have a, a bit of issues with uh with like some people entering the tournament being woefully unprepared compared to the people who are prepared. 
that, just that, reminds me. That, that, that was just my favorite, right? That just reminds me of when I was co coming with you during uh, Pokemon, Pokemon uh, when you were trying to hatch your uh, shiny Quagsire. Uh, yeah, trying to get a shiny Wooper. Yeah. Or, and, and at the time, that was the around uh, the Proton Splat League and Season 2 happened with the. Uh, oh, yeah! <laughs> with the professional Splatoon team entering the tournament. Yep. And you you and you make the call and post to be like, hey, hit me up. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god! Well, what were, uh, some someone was saying something else though, right? Yeah, I was just asking. Like, uh, does the Switch version have online play? You can it's, actually make a tournament for online people. So it's not online play. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, download like the data for the monster, and then they kind of like go at it by themselves. It, it's functionally okay, like, so it's, it's functionally like you take the same data from your memory card on the PS One, and put it into another switch in a sense in that sort of sense it's like okay. take your, it's taking you're taking your memory card and putting it into the second slot basically yep makes sense uh -huh. i still find it funny that the on the on the uh -oh. steam version that we have technically unreleased games on the nintendo switch show up in the library yeah. <laughs> for, for like the the disc list or whatever they could they could like read for that. God, that was like, nuts. Un, un, untitled po po uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu 2 sequel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and also, untitled Legend Zelda Metroid. Breath of the Wild sequel. Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we know that the games are being made, it's just a matter of when they're coming out. Its titles have never been Nintendo's strong suit, though, let's be my favorite, probably my favorite um, special monster in any of the Monster Rancher games is uh, the Forward Golem, which is a, uh, which is one you get from the NFL Blitz disc, and it's just a golem wearing football attire. <laughs> I'm sure, I think I've seen that. Yeah. Is, it, is this in one or two? That's in two. Okay. I played three the most. I, 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 was, have a lot of I also monsters. try to remember asking you specifically this as well. In Monster Rancher 2 for DX, uh, what is the card on Kuzumi, uh, on Kuzumi's, yeah, what is the card for Kazumi's save? Because I remember in the original, in the original yeah, game. Yeah, didn't it just card, mention something about her bust size or something? Yeah, her breasts get more attention than her battles. That's the, that's the actual quote on the original disc. It's probably, it's, well, uh, mm, I don't know if they, if they relocalized it because a lot of the stuff is still kind of the same. For the most part. So I don't know if they, if they relocalized that. Yeah, I don't know if. Which is why I'm curious about it. Like, can anyone check on that? Anyone who has the game and can summon up a Kazumi. I'm a, I, I'm a little bit like. Uh, re, someone, someone in the chat was meant, was talking about like Pokemon remakes. I have no idea what, like, if they were to re, re, do a remake of Black and White. They could not release it this in the same way that the original Black and White was released because everybody would just be incredibly angry. Was that the one where they released it at the same day? Uh, yes, but the 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 issue the issue kind of doesn't come with how they re released it. It's uh, it's what they did. Uh, it it was great for the time because it was it was great for for like how Black and White was kind of presented. So Black and White was like the first game to uh, to be in a region that was based that was based on a region outside of Japan. Because of that, they made it so none of the old Pokemon you could encounter in in Black and White, which work which only worked in which the only reason that would work. Oh my God, I'm screwing up so bad in this race. The only reason that worked was because nobody knew what all was coming in the game. If they were to uh, do a remake of Black and White and just have the 152 Pokemon that were in Black and White originally be the only Pokemon in that game, there like there would be riots. Like that would like nobody would like that. There, were, there wouldn't be riots. There would just be one team and one That's, team. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, because I I actually got I, I got hosed because of that. I ended up using one of those monkeys at the start. It's just like the worst Pokemon. Yeah. Ever. Like, and it's I'll, like, I'll, like I'll, I'll remember that. But even like with some of that stuff, like it's it's not it's not a it's not bad like when it first came out, just because like you were able to discover so much, like that everything was new. 
until you <laughs> ran into Starly, or not Starly, uh, PETA for like the 800th time on, on the route. It was pretty much just like Gen 1, but without like the fact that Gen 1 was kind of not like, Gen 1 isn't that great anymore. Like the, the like that magic has kind of come and gone. I guess, in a way. I mean, BDSP did exactly that. Yeah, but in BDSP, you at least had like 250 something Pokemon. If, if they were to do black and white in the same way they did black and white, then you'd only have 152. And you'd have plus a lot more repetition. And plus not to mention, if you want to get everything else, you have to go for post game. And, and as the meal said, too late to use, too late to use, too late to use, too late to use, too late to use. Yeah, yeah. So on and so forth. Hmm. I'm going to head out. Little... I will see you guys later. Later, Take Bob. Care, Bob. Okay. Later, Bob. Thank you for stopping by. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks for having me on. It could be interesting in a Pokemon game if they make it so that there's like a... Like if they really dig into that migration thing that they were doing in like a Gen 2, where okay, Pokemon would be like... It's concentrated in certain areas and move around. And it's like that could make it so that it's like you could find different Pokemon in different areas at different times. And uh, it would just shake it up so that they could not just have the 152 Gen 5 Pokemon, they could like substitute in Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5s as wandering Pokemon. Yeah, no, exactly that. Yeah, they could be, they could be, they could do some cool things, but I, I, I don't know, maybe they will. I mean, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, they, they had the Underground, which was basically kind of like that. Yeah. It's like, okay, they could do, they could make it work. But I, yeah, I, they, if they, if they just do a carbon copy work. remake, yeah. It, it would, it would suck to just be stuck to that 152 of Gen 5 Pokemon, which in my opinion were generally underpowered, except for Excadrill, who was way too big. Yep. <laughs> Excadrill was the one everybody used because it was really, really powerful. I, I'm still mad at, uh, I'm still mad at, uh, Bianca. Yeah, I'm still mad at Bianca because she killed a shiny Excadrill. Uh, oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> I know. I know. Someone said Gen 5 had way more than that. Yeah, but you had to wait until post-game. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, post-game. Well, and as Emil said, too late to be helpful, 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 so on. To be so fair, far. it had one of the most developed post-games of any Pokemon game, and not only that, some of the Pokemon, if you wanted to experience them at all, would have to be raised up to level 50, 60, or 70. Mm. Some of the highest leveled Pokemon or from Gen 5. And that that does speak to how profound it's... Oh my gosh, I saw losing going to back, which my blue shell. That's crazy. <laughs> he, tried, he, tried to, he tried to get away from it. <laughs> I don't think it helped. He tried to kill me with a blue shell. But, uh, right. what, what was I saying? Yeah, like, oh yeah, this, the, the post game really did matter there. And it's like, it's nice that they gave you up to level 70, if not 80, to really play into it. But with only 150 to maybe 250 Pokemon when it was all done and said, it's just like... It was it was just poorly balanced. I I still think that like they they've mentioned before that like the remakes are different like what 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 would you what, what was it that canon. they said yeah like they're all like the remakes are all different canon from like their original counterparts. Mm -hmm. What I think would be a great idea is if they did it, it would shake it up as well. Uh, yeah. r like regional variants of Pokemon that were released later. So like, yeah. so yeah. like maybe maybe like for for I don't know, like uh like if they were to do a Gen Five remake, they could do like, uh, let's say, you know, Unovan Spritzy, like take some from like from from a future generation, give it a variant that would exist in Unova, in Gen yeah. Five. I think I that'd mean, be great. I think that'd be. I think that would, that I wouldn't it wouldn't shake up the series that much, but I think it would at least give us a little bit more variety. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Yeah, don't leave it to like games like Legends to introduce new stuff. Ugh. Like how they did in Legends Arceus. The problem I have with Legends Arceus is that it was. Uh, well, I, I don't, I'm not saying that it's like it, this isn't really a problem. But I'm saying more in terms of like to make remakes feel a bit more fresh. I think they should start adding Pokemon from future generations back into those generations with a different form that only exists in, that, that exists in that area. They're so close to doing it because even in Gen Four, like they included the fairy type. And so that, that's yeah. actually, that's pretty game changing. Like, yep. like they to include that. Like they kind of well did that. Of... They kind of did that with um, what do you call it? Um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where like, even if you were before the post game, you could still get those new evolutions that were in Gen Four. So also, cool. also you have these the physical special split as well too. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that was—that's like, from a mechanic standpoint. I have no idea what Pokemon can do mechanically to make to make the game more interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. It's like it was adding more to the answer. Like so. the problem is, is I feel like the problem is that they that like they perfected the formula in like Gen five. Well, yeah, I wouldn't say Gen five exactly because that was Weather Wars. But like, all they could, all they could really, they, they more or less perfected it in like Gen Four, and we've only really had minor tweaks and gimmicks since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to say. At this current point, I think Gen Six is probably the, the biggest in terms of like gameplay mechanics. Because you have Fairy, I believe. You also changed the weather as well too. I feel a few other tweaks that have happened uh, in Gen Six as well too, like. Uh, a legend types getting its own immunities to stuff. Grass type getting its own immunities to stuff. As yeah. well. But again, that's that's, that's still just like minor tweaks. Nothing to really like change up how like the 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 base mechanics in and of themselves. They tried a yeah. bunch of things. Yeah, um, I, I think Mega Evolutions stood a really good chance. I'm actually surprised they didn't continue to dig into Mega Evolutions because that actually was a big enough change to make combat really exciting, and it brings mm. old Pokemon into the new sphere, and it could bring new or new Pokemon into the well, maybe maybe not bring new Pokemon to the old sphere, but it did bring old Pokemon back better than ever. Yeah, like, that Me changed the competitive in a lot of way. It, it may have still been just a combat mechanic, but they worked it into the lore so interestingly that it's like, uh, despite immediately my my thought about Mega Evolutions was like, what. What is this Digimon? This is crazy. This is stupid. This will never work. But they worked it so well. It's mm -hmm. like, actually, I love this. This is really well done. And then they didn't do it anymore. They're yep. like, we're doing Z moves now. And I'm like, well, now I hate it. I mean, they kind of, I mean, it's kind of the, sort of like that with Dynamax in a sense, but it's yeah, not no, the same. It, it they needed to be the same. That's the thing. Yeah, the, 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 thing with, the thing with Mega Evolution is that it gave you options. Um, Because you could be like, okay, am I going to run... Cause like you could have like, well, I guess in competitive play you really couldn't, but like you could probably have like something with like with multiple Pokemon with uh with uh well actually you probably couldn't competitive play if you weren't using them. You could have like multiple Pokemon with uh with um Mega Stones, and then like decide which one, at least in competitive play decide which ones to use, and then like depending on what you were going up against in some cases decide whether or not you were even gonna do that. Kangaskhan was really versatile in that regard because Mega Kangaskhan was not only incredibly strong, but base Kangaskhan had Scrappy, which meant that it could hit, they'd be able to hit ghost type moves with normal attacks, meaning its stab could take down normal, or it could take yeah. down ghost types. They're like two different Pokemon. It's like yeah. having a seventh Pokemon. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's too, it, 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 there was so many opportunities and there still really are. Like if they could jump back into Mega Evolutions, I'd be like, yeah, let's go. Show me Mega Meganium. I can't say, I can't say it five times fast, but show me. I really, I, I, I think, I, honestly, even though like Sword and Shield was kind of like men in terms of like the overall adventure, I've never been more interested in Pokemon VGC than than during the beginning of Sword and Shield, just because, just because like it wasn't all the same Pokemon we kept seeing over and over and over again. They had to change things up because of Dexit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right, no. that was, again, that's more of a fan name, but yeah. yeah I, I understand, but it's 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 how people commonly refer to it as. Yeah. He's the competitive. Like I think, I I honestly think there should be rotations like that. That would be the best. That that's I, I think I think it's exactly what the the competitive like Pokemon needs is it, are those rotations. Yep, I agree with that. I, I'm just hoping they also stick with the guns on that as well too. The what? Uh, st uh, sticking with just not bringing every single Pokemon back. Yeah. If they do want to do like the the whole thing, what they did with uh, Sword of Steel with uh. It reintroducing certain Pokemon back into the game. I'm, I'll be fine with that as well, too. It's just not every Pokemon in the game. Yeah, there's there's just some that are genuinely unnecessary to have to the experience. Like, do we really need to, like... Do we need Metapod? Is, is Metapod really going to add to the game? Well, I mean, like, I if, if you plan on bringing Caterpie and Butterfree, then yes, you need Metapod. <laughs> yeah. you, you need those awkward teen years to really flourish. I mean, unless you want to do, like, a different uh, cocoon stage. Forms, like, here's the thing, like, I, I think the best thing that happened to Pokemon was giving regional forms. Uh -huh. Because it made old Pokemon, it gave old Pokemon, uh, like, like, a fresh coat of paint and new viability. 
Yeah, it, it gave us something to look forward to in every region too. Like now it doesn't matter and, where in the world we go, we can still keep some of the old Pokemon that we love and see them in looking better than ever. Muck. And, and then you get some <laughs> ridiculous designs as well too, like Overquill. Muck in particular is the best like reason for that because nobody used Muck. Nobody had used Muck for a long time. I think the last time Muck was competitively viable was like Gen 2. Yeah, Gen 7 rolls around and we have this ultra powerful tank that is only weak to one type. Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly everyone's using it. Yeah. Alolan Ninetales, like Ninetales is not that good of a Pokemon. Alolan Ninetales is great on any ice team. And then oh, you, yeah. got, you got Alolan Volpix, which equals more merchandising as well too. <laughs> there, there you go. Good merchandising opportunity. Good from a business perspective <laughs> as well. Yeah, there's, there certainly is a lot of things you can do. It's like from, from a business side of things, Hey, you can easily make some good merchandise off of this as well, too. From the gameplay side of things, hey, it gives new love to some old Pokemon and hopefully gives them some, some viability in competitive play and all of that. Or maybe some love in just casual play as well, too. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. So, so, somebody in chat was saying they just need to get out of Kanto. They're never going to do that. <laughs> if they if they want to sell, like, if they want to sell, like, Pokemon, like, merchandise and whatnot to, like, the generation that grew up with it, they're never leaving Kanto. Yeah. yeah. Until we put off our nostalgia goggles. Yep. Like, you know, didn't get I, I, I don't know. It's even still, I wouldn't mind going back to Johto. Oh yeah. Like, I, I, if they if they made a let's go game of Johto, I'd be all over it. Okay. Let's, let's go. go for it. <laughs> let's go for it. I want it so bad. I would not want. I would. I would not want. Let's go Wooper because that means my Wooper would never evolve. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the perfect pair. Let's go for it. Let's go Wooper. But I wouldn't want oh, that because I would want Quagsire. And then the Wooper oh, would never. Uh, the Wooper would never evolve. It would just be a really strong <laughs> Wooper. <laughs> that's okay. I do the same thing with Wingles because I love Wingle way more than I love Pelipper. But I love Quagsire. <laughs> it's the opposite. Oh, I guess, yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because you can't evolve the Let's Go Pokemon. Oh, you. Yeah, It'd just be one to be Let's Go Togepi. Yeah, that's it. Because that was for a long time like the new mascot. That was that was the it Let's did. failed. It, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It, it wouldn't actually sell. Like Let's Go Togepi sounds like such a good idea on paper until you realize nobody actually likes it. It'd be it'd probably be Let's Go Togepi and Pichu. Yeah, and I just don't see those being. I don't see those flying off the shelves in the same way that uh, Eevee and Pikachu did. And they they would probably just call like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee two or something like that. I'm just still do they could still do Eevee. Yeah, yeah, they could definitely do Eevee and they could and you know what maybe it'd be like let's go like the Pikachu would start off as a Pichu and it would be the one thing that evolves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Magma Cody, uh, let's go Meryl Ivy Pika Blue. <laughs> <laughs> let's go Meryl let, let's go Meryl probably wouldn't be a bad idea. We just need a counterpart for that. Yeah. Maybe just let's go Meryl and Eevee. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's go Dun Sparse! <laughs> <laughs> Mega Dunsparce needs to happen. Something with Dunsparce needs to happen. No, you know what? Nothing needs to happen with Dunsparce. It's based on Tsuchi Noko. It's Fat Snake. I like it the way it is. If there was a regional variant that didn't evolve, I'd be happy. But for now, I like Fat Snake. Okay. Dunsparce is cool. Okay. It's, it's, original variant of Dunsparce is just fatter snake. Yeah, no. He <laughs> <laughs> just gets chunkier. Dun Dunsparce is based on my favorite cryptid, Tsuchi Noko, which literally translates to Child really? of Dirt. <laughs> Or dirt child, I love it. Best of best of is appealing to me. Let's go milk tank. Oh god. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, let's go nipples. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Nintendo's got a new mascot. Yeah, no. Uh, we st in this household we stand dirt child. <laughs> there, was a, there was another snake that was based off of the dirt. Or there was another ground snake, wasn't there? Uh, yeah. Um, Santa Santa Con, that's so good too. Don't want none unless you got on, son. Santa Con, I don't want none unless you got, I don't know, HMs? I don't know. I'll see myself. Penelope. It had a very interesting ability. You know how, like, um. It was, it was actually a pretty damn good ability, uh, in hindsight. Um. You know how, like, uh, some Pokemon have, like, the Sandstream ability where it's, like, they come out of the field and the Sandstorm appears? Yeah. Santa Con was that if it got attacked, then it would create a Sandstorm. So it, it, it was arguably more viable because it would, uh, because uh, if, 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 your, if your sandstorm got overwritten by another piece of weather, the Santa Cana could get hit and then just create it all over again. Oh, it was only for one turn, really? Either way, it's still good. It's still pretty good at deleting weather. My question for that is, 
does that be affected by uh, the uh, the sandy stone? What's the? Oh, I know. It, it won't. If, if it's if it, if it states that's only for one turn, if it's not like a range, like uh, like the other weathers are, then it probably it probably doesn't get affected by it. Is there a similar ability for Sandsman. range? That's like, the ability. Is, there, is, there, is there an ability where you can hit no. someone and they're like the moist ability has caused it to rain? Uh, nothing, oh, nothing like the... that yet. I don't. Uh, I, I really wish you didn't use moist for that as well. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry. Let me take closer to the mic now. Moist. moist. Megas, thank you for the gift subs. How are you two friends? <laughs> what? Yeah, we are. We are friends. I'm, I'm just asking. How are you two friends? <laughs> we're, we're two friends very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> I probably met you. I, I, I definitely the first time I met you was uh, was at a con when we were just hanging out with like with like the the oh, TRG extended family, as it were. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the TRG extended family. Oh, it must have been years ago. Like almost ten years now, like 2014, 2013. Oh, Sandspit summons a Sandstorm in battle for five turns when uh, a Pokemon Sandstorm is hit by a damaging move. Unless a Sandstorm is already present, this can be extended to eight turns if the Pokemon is holding the Smooth Rock. Okay, oh, so rock. so it does last for that long. Doctor Zeos, okay. thank you for the five gifted tier one subs. Okay, okay, so it does be affected. Okay, that's just regular old sandstorm. To be fair, I was being rhetoric about that. Do 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 do. The whole most at the, the moist comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to run it back, I I remember finding Tom maybe through uh from, through Smarty when he was uploading to a certain uh, site that will not be named when he was back doing uh Darkness Against Humanity. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember, and of course, I remember like Tom would, was like, I believe the 100 subscriber thing back when the, yeah, back during the days of Skype. I remember oh, getting, on, yeah, I remember getting on to call for that as well too. Jonah and, Hill in the void. What? I, I, I don't remember what site it was to be perfectly honest. To be fair, it's best, it's best not to be remembered. <laughs> is I, I mean, is it like, is it still active? Oh, you, yep. No, I remember. I remember what you're saying. Yep. Oh, I mean, like, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up because there's something really funny I, uh, I remember about, uh, about that when that whole ordeal was going down. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, here's the thing. Tragic that happened. I'm glad everybody got out. But <laughs> my favorite part of that was <laughs> this freaking Gulu Larry. <laughs> Try, oh, no. try basically saying that he had won like the survival games of Channel Awesome to be the last member left. <laughs> right, I remember that. Oh my god, that was the best. That was such a troll move. <laughs> oh my god. Der Derps Against Humanity did not age well. Yeah. I. I the best part about it is probably you just coming with the various different czar titles. Yep, the incredible, the the, uh, the the various czar titles that we had. I think the shark, the shark czar is probably the most popular out of all those. Shark, because whenever when you played uh, Cards Against Humanity on um, whatever the site was, oh, right, yeah, you, were uh, the you would come up and say like you were the card czar, and so every time I'd come up with it, I would say I am the card czar or something similar to that, and I would come up with variations for it. Um, one of which is very at, uh, NSFW, and I will not be repeating it. C Cards Against Humanity? Yeah. NSFW? Where? Well, that's true, but like still, it's something that wouldn't, that, that wouldn't fly by today's standards. Yeah. yeah. Gee, I don't know anything about NSFW stuff. <clears throat> no, all I know is TOS. <laughs> and and uh, ASMR, oh. which I always confuse when I see hear people talking about ASMR. I'm just like, guys, it's spelled arms. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? How, how, how dare you besmirch this classic fighting game with motion yeah. controls by spelling it ASMR? I'm just like, this is why it didn't take off. This is why Nintendo's stuck in a rut with it. They're like, oh man, I, I, we, we gave them arms, but all people kept typing in ASMR. Come on, guys, it's not that. I was watching. I uh, I feel bad for the deluxe people out there who, who get that confused. <laughs> I was watching um uh, like these old like gaming news clips, uh where this person this person was like doing a review of Arms and they were like like you know generally positive they had, they had like good things to say about it, but at the end of their their review they were like so I guess I could say that Arms and then realize what they were saying goes I guess you could uh, like turn like it makes like a sly um 
look at the camera and goes, I guess you could say that ARMS has legs. <laughs> oh, come on. That was the peak. That, he jumped the shark for the entire series. There you go. <laughs> ASM arms. <laughs> See, where's Troy? Going? Boy, Tom, that's a stretch. Oh, come on, Troy. Troy, you on in the call? Boo, get off the stage. <laughs> or in this case, Boo, get on the stage. Troy's our boy. Oh yeah, Apples oh. to Apples was like the SFW. That was, that was like Cards Against Humanity before Cards Against Humanity because everyone tried to come up with the most... The, basically, everyone played oh, Apples first. to Apples to make everybody laugh. I didn't know I'm going first. Yep. I did it again! Man, that takes me back. Cards Against Humanity and Battle Pass. That's, that's, the, that's the sound of 2013. I remember you used to, uh, used to do like uh, races in Battle Toads, right? Yeah, yeah. Just against whoever, whoever was also into battle tables. Yeah. Time. So, but so, like, so, like, John. I used to, <laughs> yeah, like John and Tim, and uh, yeah, just a couple people. I think I maybe just that at one time that he screwed. It was uh, funny though. I remember I did. I, in my first year of college, I spent most of my semester actually just playing battle toads in business law. And I just be like, he'd be like telling me all this stuff about like, oh, this is what a tort is, and I'm like, yeah, okay, just playing through snakes. Though, still managed to get a B. Battletoads was the real beat. I remember I had a, I had a friend in uh, in when I was going to a. Uh, I only spent one uh, one year at uh, at um, the college I went to at Ohio University of Dayton, but I had uh, I had one friend who had brought his NES with him, and like I hadn't seen like any of my video game stuff like old video game stuff in a long time. It was just buried somewhere, no idea where. But like uh, I had um, you know there was there was one night. Probably, probably like the most fun I had at that school because I hated that school. Uh, was just like him and me in his in his dorm room. We got him like pizza and soda and like we <laughs> we slammed our our heads into TMNT2 arcade over and yeah! over again, trying to beat it without the Konami code. What does that do for that game? The Konami code gives uh, in that game gives you max max lives. Neat. I think it's Max Lives Continues. What's going on, Troy? Hello. I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I was just, I was just waiting, waiting for the moment to say, oh, hello, Troy. Say that again. Hi, hi villain. Here we go. <laughs> he says hi. Howdy. So how's it going up there in the lovely going. land of Canada? It's good. Just got off work a few hours ago. Been adjusting to... Night shift life. Every time, every time I hear Canada, I want to sing the Canada song from Mystery Science Theater, but the but the lyrics without context border like border terroristic threats against Canada. Oh Why is it always the case? South Park had a Canada song that was basically like that too. Oh, speaking of speaking of songs, uh, I really wanted to bring up the fact that uh, I know. If it's, you're doing this just for fun, but I just really want to call you out on you doing your your cover for Toss a Coin to, to the Word Show, Tom. Wait, what? It, it's just more or less, it's just like, oh, I originally planned to do like a cover version of Toss a Coin to your Witcher. Oh, yeah, yeah, where, 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 I just, where I'm just getting the tune and lyrics. I've never heard that song before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, don't get me wrong, though. Your version is funny. Toss a Coin to your Witcher. <laughs> I, I just, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh my god, it's causing you physical pain! That is incredible! <laughs> the cringe is felt. Yes! That's There's exactly... That's entertainment, baby. But yeah. Oh my god, I don't do it because it makes other people laugh. It makes me laugh. <laughs> I know, I know. I know, I know. You're doing it for fun. I, I get that. I completely understand it. But at the same time... <laughs> Honestly, I think... I think you would... Probably enjoyed the original song. I should probably I should probably explain the uh, the context for for MST3K's Canada song because it starts off with with Tom Servo or it starts off with uh, with Crow and uh, and Mike making fun of Canada, um, and Tom Servo comes in dressed as a Mountie and he's just like we need to stop this this Canada bashing has gone on for far enough we have to stop it and then, like he gets into like this song about like about like the praises of Canada. And then uh, Mike and uh, Mike and Crow are just like, ah, oh, come on, like it's not, like you you can poke fun at them if you if, if you want. And, he's, and they start singing like like a uh, a song like gently ribbing Canada. 
And then they're like, yeah, come on, go ahead and try it. And Tom Servo's like, all right. And his lyrics are just like very, very violent against Canada. Unleashes. And, uh, and like, yeah, he just like, he just unloads on Canada. And like at the end of it, like uh, Mike and Crow like stop him. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've got no sense of proportion. I'm sorry. <laughs> Besmirched the beaver. I, I definitely remember seeing Tom Silver dress up as a, uh, as a Mountie at some point. I just if, don't know. If you get a chance, look it up because with context, it's hilarious. But you can't sing it like <laughs> you can't sing it like any, in any other circumstance because it just sounds like you're going to do horrible things to Canada. Yeah, you got to keep that on your deepest inside voice. <laughs> and even if you give the context, all it takes is one person to take it away. <laughs> yep. That's a series I need to see sometime is... MST3K, I've seen clips, miss, barely, but that I really need to get into that sometime. Uh, yeah, there, there definitely are ways to watch it. They're, they're on, they're on, well, I don't, I don't know how different Canadian Netflix is, uh, is to American Netflix, but like, um, let's see. MST3K is on American Netflix, at least, uh, which isn't I believe. It on, isn't it, isn't it on Twitch? Doesn't it, doesn't it stream constantly on Twitch? Uh, yeah, no. Shout, Shout Factory will sometimes do marathons of MST3K, um, and then there are, so, there are some oh, free yeah. episodes on YouTube. Yeah, also on, on thanks, uh, American Thanksgiving, they always will do a marathon of that, yep. because they literally, they did something for that on, back on, when they were on cable and all that. And so it's basically tradition to basically have a marathon of various oh, episodes Jesus. of the show. So yeah, it's either raining very heavily or hailing. Is the gauntlet different than just straight up MST3K? Uh, no, it, it, it's basically. It, what? That was villain in the background. Right. What did she yeah. say? Um, she got a notification I'm... that uh, that ne someone logged into Netflix on a new device because I just logged into Netflix to check. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. No, the gauntlet is basically. Their gimmick for that particular episode, uh, season was basically like, let's basically turn MC3K into a into a Ben series, basically. Uh, Which okay. is, yeah. Was the, was the Gauntlet see. the first season that came back? Because they they had a, they had a few they had a, uh because they had like um because it's I I'm trying to think of like who even returned for like that series of MST3K because I think like the actress who played Pearl came back because it's. Because she plays a clone of herself. Um, I believe. I believe Kevin and Bill. I think Kevin and Bill uh, returned as well too to reprise their roles. Kevin definitely does not play Tom Servo though. Kevin plays um, Doctor Bobo in, in a couple episodes. Uh -huh. Professor Bobo. I know Joel is there as the one guy delivering the boobs. To oh yeah. The yep. Yep. <laughs> down the hatch or whatever he says. Yeah. Move me down the hole. Yep. Move me down the hole. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else all it reprises their roles. But uh, a good starting one, which is on YouTube, I think, is um, uh, Samson versus the Vampire Women. If you know what, if you know what the spoiler is in uh, in that chat, don't say anything because it's uh -huh. be it's much better with that, with with no knowledge going into it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm putting. I'm... Don't, don't don't make our don't make the choice that we, Tom, and a few others did, and start with Monos the Hands of Fate. It's that yeah, is... Mon Mon uh, Monos the Hands of Fate is a good episode, but only once you've kind of immersed yourself into MST3K. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And also starting off kinda, with, and also you kind of note about the history of of Monos as well too. Yeah, it's, uh, also... I mean it's kind of it's kind it's kind of a rough movie in general, but there's but the comedy wise. Um, there's a lot of dead air in Monos the Heads of Fate, so they so the people watching it just have no um just have like no like con nothing to like make jokes of. So occasionally yeah. they'll like there's like a long pause where like someone's walking and just be like, Yep, Monos the Hands of Fate. Uh Samson. Samson I versus the vampire woman. What you're thinking yeah. of is Santa Claus versus the Martians. Yeah, there's no P there's no P. There's it's just Samson. Sam uh yeah, S A M S O N. Samson. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, and also another thing as well too with uh, Manos is also a Joel era episode as well too. Yep. and Joel's humor is dry. Very dry. Very dry. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. What, what was that? Uh, Space Mutiny is also a good one. I don't know where you can find that one, but Space Mutiny is a really good episode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that sounds that's like during the bike era. Yep. That sounds like a top rated game. 
Yes. Green <laughs> <laughs> colored nope. bean. That is a red. That is a red brown movie that is taking homages from uh, Star Wars, as it were. But I think I think most of the I I recall like a detail from that is like I think a lot of the space uh, battle scenes came from Gla Battlestar Galactica. I think. <laughs> Would not surprise me. Yeah. But the main thing from Space Mutiny is... The Mike list of the manly boss. names! Yeah, Mike's the boss of list of names for, for Fresh Box character. My favorite is still Bob Johnson. Yep. Wait. I feel like I have heard that at least. I'm part of the list. Roll Fizzle Beef. Chuck <laughs> Steak. Oh, yep. Yeah, and also one of the, uh, one, of, one of the usual viewers of the strength here, <laughs> Tom, giving them the... One of the names from Oh, yeah, yeah, Enormous98's nickname here is Big McLarge Huge. That's <laughs> it. That's so good. Reminds me of the, um, I think it was like originally a Tumblr post that Prozy D voiced over of the uh, American names from a Japanese yes! baseball game. Sleeve McDykel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Truck. I'm trying to remember some of them. So many good ones. Hey, Silver Conversation Ninja. Hey, Silver Conversation Ninjas. Thank you for the, thank you for the raid. Oh no. Oh no. So who's winning the who's winning the chicken dinner? Yeah. Onsen Sweeney. Jeremy Gride. Dwicht Rochigal. I'll, I'll be uh I'll be I'll be right uh I'll be right who. Uh, right who? Right back. I saw somebody say sleeve McHoo. It's <laughs> th the name is is I should probably explain sleeve the context McDykel. It's it's Sleeve McDykel, but Dykel is spelled like Michael. <laughs> yes. Oh no. I, I probably should have given context oh, yeah. right beforehand. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. I, I gotta check something oh, yeah. real quick. Oh yeah, MSN 3K has done like a bunch of uh, Gamera episodes. So yeah. Yeah, this, several of these names are clearly just an actual professional like MLB player, but they changed one letter like Todd Gonzalez, <laughs> Mike Sernandez. Mm. Meanwhile in 14, I just see in the chat, it's just beans with questions. With three question marks. Beans? Spelled exactly like this in chat. And then another person just just has like a bunch of exclamation points. Beans. Just like that. I have I have no idea for the context. I am not gonna bother with it. What is their urgency? What what is their bean emergency? <laughs> I'm just and this just has me think of the one video of it just Yeah, it's raining real hard out there. Ah. Is it? Oh, it's raining. What? It's oh, raining sideways. I watch a. Uh, it's I watch a source raining. filmmaker animator. I don't know how much he's done recently because he's kind of he's um he's been taking a sabbatical for uh, for mental health. But um he did a uh is a uh, lazy purple. He does like the how it feels to play this class in TF2. Hmm. And uh <laughs> his soldier one is one of my favorite like jokes ever, where. Because, uh, you know, a lot of songs are, are, are copyrighted, right? Yeah. So... Uh, do you know what the Trollger playstyle is in TF2? No. Uh, the, the Rocket Jumper, the... I think they're called the Man Treads, and the Market Gardener. Where basically all you're doing is rocket jumping on top of people to, to either land on them or hit them with the shovel. Okay. Um... So he, so he, he prefaces it by going, uh... I'd be remiss to talk about uh, talk about rocket jumping without thinking about one uh, one specific play style and like those equipment items fall in there. And it's raining. Men starts playing, but it's played by a text to speech robot. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, just about half past ten. For the first time in history, it's gonna start raining men. It's, it's raining, raining men. men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! It's raining men. Amen. <laughs> Unlike today's episode of Oblivion, where you had raining dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Poor dogs. Uh, Poor dogs. That, that's Shayagorath. I wonder how long those dogs have been hanging up there. <laughs> yeah, because he, because like, because Haskell said he had prepared that, for, that uh, the the old Shayagorath had prepared that for a long time. He's been waiting for like. Like maybe years at that point, and all of a sudden here comes Krug, just minding his own business, does does the day request for Shirakora, 
Asma brings up and says like, oh, I have something the old master has left behind. You do these two tasks first and then I'll prepare the third. And even and like, like the, the other thing too is that like, when you finish the quest, Haskell's like, here, take the Wabajack. I probably should have given it to you a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you don't get it while you're on the aisles or out there. No, you have to get that back in Cyr Cyrodiil. Yep. I also, spent, those dogs like, were on fire as well, too. I wonder how long that fire was burning for. I, I got through, like, half of the uh, Shivering Isles DLC, like, watching your playthrough of that before I realized, wait, this is the same Shero Garath from Skyrim where you go into his random realm and get hit the Wabajack. Kind of. Ooh. Uh, uh, isn't, isn't <laughs> hey, if you hear a, if you hear the sound of like of oh, like I, I'm, here, I'm hearing it. Do you hear you hear that like clacking? Yep, yep. Uh, uh, it's hearing. hailing. Ah, the, the size uh, of what? I don't know. I haven't looked outside. The size of heavy smacking things. Thank goodness yeah. my car. Thank goodness my car is in the garage. Hopefully the uh, yeah. hopefully uh, hopefully the solar panels in this house don't uh don't break. Oh no. Mm. Oh no. Oh no. It's hailing men. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's hailing men. Amen. Hail, hail yeah. Hail yeah. <laughs> oh, hail no. Nah. Oh, <laughs> Villain, oh, I oh, wish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all want <laughs> Although hailing men would probably be worse than compared to rain. It would be a lot of blood. I can't yeah. imagine it'd be a different process from rain. Like, oh yeah, rain the the only difference is that the 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 hailing men are, are frozen. <laughs> oh. It's gonna hit harder, and then it's you have a yeah. bunch of just shattered body parts everywhere. It's gonna be a mess. <laughs> God, they break like glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'd be you know in in that regard, it, there there wouldn't at least wouldn't be as much splatter as there is when it's raining men. Yeah. Because raining men, they're like room temperature. <laughs> so, so they'll just, just be like, like throwing a bag of meat out a window. Yeah, you know, oh. we'll, we'll be able to sweep up. Yeah. Oh, then exactly. Gets, so, so long as you get it fast enough yeah. before it melts. Yeah. But then you get like sleet. Yeah, but on, on the bright side, it's not gonna get on any walls or anything. Like there might be like one or two like like things that just like kind of pop here and there. But like, you know, you're, it, you're not. There's not as much cleanup, I think. A lot of that will go down the drain when it starts raining men. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, that's what takes him away. Is the hailing that the hailing man is swept away by the by the wind. Yep. Um, this is the first time oh, in no. history this has ever happened. There's no. There's no yep, just around half past ten. You heard the song. Yeah. <laughs> you, you heard the text to speech song. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh my God! Who timed their lightning so perfectly? Oh yes. Look at look at a. Uh, uh, TF2 uh, source filmmaker and also animation as well too. I remember a while back I, s I saw a clip from one particular thing. It was it was definitely used in the context of like commission people. I don't know who the uh, I I don't know who the animator was, but the way they animated the whole entire that particular video was definitely like in the style of, like the old, like the older like Warner Brothers style cartoons. It was, Especially with the way they animated the the Pyro's face, mm -hmm. it, it's definitely had a very cartoonish look going on for them. It was like it's so weird, but it works in their style for that particular style. Yeah, yeah. Of, of what they're going for, like, like there's definitely <laughs> so many. Jeffrey Reed is a chat said best allegory I've heard is it's raining men and let the bodies hit the floor of the same song from different perspectives. <laughs> 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 You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is something uncanny about the whole uh, off model factors of T uh, using TF2 models. But at the same time, you get so many good uh, mean potentials out of it. Gotta so help me to my windows break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's uh, Manatee? Is he hiding under a thing? No, he does pretty well in thunderstorms. Okay. I think he's just downstairs watching where traffic would be if anybody was driving right now. Ah. Uh, does he have like a perch like on the window where he's? He'll uh he'll he'll, he'll like oh, oh. he'll he'll lean he'll lean on the back of the couch to look out the window. Okay, 
that's what I figured. It's just his natural instincts kicking in, right? Yeah, uh, Sharpays were bred to be guard dogs, so even ah. if I even if I didn't like do anything at all, he would. Uh, he, even if I tried to like, oh, unless I actively trained him against his guard dog instincts, like he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, he would still be doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Tr Tristan is just reminding me of the uh, of the Windrow tweet of just <laughs> they banned me from the zoo and so I'll face God and walk backwards into hell. <laughs> That, yeah, that totally. particular tweet, yeah, that particular tweet is ten years old now. Which tweet? Uh, 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 it was a drill tweet uh, about. Uh, oh yeah. About being banned from the zoo, facing God, and walking backwards into hell. The most poetic thing is just from this uh, this complete random on Twitter. <laughs> I can't believe I, I I can't wait to get my uh, I don't care if the meme is gonna be old at this point I can't wait to get my VTuber model just so I could do the um because I, I I mentioned before how I was planning on doing uh the sort of like having each uh each like quote unquote mascot I have be the uh be like representing the different branch of my content so like live action me is the vlog um the top face is the let's play and the VTuber is the streams so <laughs> the idea was to do the uh the Villain mentioned it, the Misery CPR Rhesus Puffs crossover with oh. the three of them. <laughs> yeah. I was just oh. thinking of that as well, too. <laughs> what was the best one I saw recently? Um, the Lu uh, Peach, Luigi, and Daisy one is really Peach, good. Peach, Luigi, that, and Daisy. Yeah, that's yeah, the Pringus McDingus yeah. did. Yeah. Um, I, I saw I, One Piece one. It was awesome. with uh, Zero, I, Nami, and I know this one person, uh, Kai Mai, had done one with Jesse James and Meowth. That one's <laughs> really good, yeah. Honestly, oh, uh, with, with with their dynamic, you could put you could put all three of those in any of those positions. Yeah, <laughs> really. No kidding. There sure. was one Persona Five one of uh, the main character Akechi or, and um, uh, a Yoshizawa. <laughs> Steel Bowser, yeah. who's the Family Guy one then? <laughs> god damn it! Oh my god, Steel makes some of the most cursed fan art of of like all of us, but. We do not talk of on-cover YouTube. <laughs> he draws me as Chris Griffin. <laughs> what? It's the best. Oh, is that so okay? Yeah. He also, of all things, Luca actually made. Uh, uh, yeah, Luca uses uh, the Peter Griffin model as an actual VTuber, and I believe one of her mods actually he uses yeah, it she... on on the stream. That's incredible. Yeah. I think I used I'm, to be Cleveland. Yeah. Because it's John is Lois. I mean, it kind of makes sense where you used to be. I think, uh, <laughs> I think Steven is Quagmire and, uh, and, uh, Jared is Joe. Yeah. I mean, right. at least in terms of, like, the main crew, I can, I can at least see you being Cleveland, but, yeah, there's some problems with that. So, making you Chris probably seems like the safer option. Gotcha. Now, who's, who's Stewie in this place? That could be anyone. Well, one thing I hate about our culture is that I feel like you should be able to draw fan art of like any character in any skin tone, but because of our culture, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, sadly. Like, Jared is Patrick Warburton? Eh, I can see it. I can see it. There's also the people that, uh, there was like that one fan artist, uh, for Steven Universe that got harassed because they drew, uh, Rose Quartz, uh, skinny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Honestly, Bagel as Stewie probably makes the most sense. Speak uh, wouldn't it be Brian? No. Mm, no, it's Bagel. Yeah. Yeah, Brian's Bagel. Bagel's much, much too chaotic. Whose leg do, whose leg do I gotta scratch to get led outside? <laughs> It's, uh, sometimes it's mine. Yeah. Apple, uh, those breaking up, uh, Apple Sarah Moon. Yeah. A lot of those arts are very well done. Sometimes you gotta gatekeep the gatekeepers. Yeah. yeah. Not so much gatekeep, uh, the gatekeepers, just pull them back from the jaws. Fire them. Fire them is always a good option. Who's Meg? I have no idea. Uh, Ask Steel. Uh, he's the one who 
basically his entire thing during uh, Coliseum this year was making everyone into the Famicat characters. Yep. Meanwhile, my particular thing was I decided to dress up my particular Lollafell in Final Fantasy XIV as a miniature Tornator. Yeah, that was awesome! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, with the way we were going about it, I was a bit worried about uh, just the, the amount of it, but if you enjoyed it, then by all means, yeah, the, you never see thing about that particular thing was just. Well, here's the thing. So, I also played a, a Star Wars: The Old Republic on before I decided to go into 14 and all that, and I actually did straight up make a Lord Donator in, in uh, the Old Republic and all that. Uh, those were those particular gift that one particular gift I did, where he was just doing like the. Essentially, the Saturday Night Dancy uh, Disco Dance. Uh, that was from uh, the Old Republic and all that. Yeah, I actually asked people to be like, "Hey, what does Sega do want to do with Lord Donator?" And and I'll go from there. And surprisingly enough, for what I did with Lord Donator was I made him into a Sith Inquisitor, and basically he played like a rogue. Basically, someone in chat <laughs> asked for the CPR Misery Reese's Puffs crossover. Uh, who in TRG would be each part? Oh, I have seen that one. I have seen that one. Tim would definitely be Reese's Puffs. No, no, no. He, I, re I remember John was Misery, Tim was CPR, Emil was Reese's Puffs. Interesting, because Emil's been getting a lot looser with the uh, with the innuendos recently, so I would have put him at CPR. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I could it, see that. Yeah, that, that could yeah. work. Yeah, John, John is John is the straight man. Tim is CPR. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, but yeah, he, he he is straight up a uh, John is straight up misery. Regardless. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Playing the Old Republic as Donator was an interesting experience. Mostly because of the fact that well, we all know what War Donator. <laughs> his, bi like. his build sucked. No, no, no. He was he was really well fun to play as. The main my main issue was two things. One, his voice. This is just mostly because of the fact that. In the Old Republic, you don't get to choose your voice. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. What happens with your voice is that it's based on your gender and the class you pick as. So, interestingly enough, a uh, female, a female scoundrel in that game is voiced by Cat Solsi. Oh, weird. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Phil and Lil on Rugrats. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, they're. There's definitely like a mix of like uh, I somehow LA. won. Yeah, there's like a mix of LA and Dallas people. Yeah. What's interesting is that we know how Lord Donator sounds like, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Sith Inquisitor is very much well a Sith, so they're much more British, much more evil, and much more much more smooth, to say the least. Smooth so, British and evil. How dare you? <laughs> I know. It's so weird hearing like the smooth, suave voice out of essentially what should be a deep, gravelly voice. It's so weird. And another thing as well, too. Ooh, the second issue I had with it as well, too. Every character in, at least in the base game for uh, Old Republic, has a romantic thing, and it does depend on your gender and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The one you get uh, for the Sith Inquisitor as a male is a. Essentially, I call her a. She's basically the Old Republic version of Ahsoka. And I just found the whole situation kind of awkward. And just like the. I just feel like there's a bit of an age difference between the two, and I just feel very squicky about it. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I also kind of feel like Lord Terminator wouldn't exactly be the one to be in a romantic relationship, so it just made things super. He's in a relationship awful. with the lamp. Yeah. Uh, can't. <laughs> now, yeah, Lord. <laughs> now, Lord Donator's airways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You go in to kiss the lamp, and it turns off, and you're like, I'll get you something. <laughs> yeah, that's the, only, that's the only. Damn it! That's I the, thought I turned you on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the only can do relationship I have. But yeah, that's the main issue with that. Is like if I was playing like any other Sith Inquisitor, I wouldn't be too much of an issue with it. Besides maybe the whole age issue that maybe the character has. I don't know the the actual age of the base character compared to Ahsoka Light. So there is that. She's a, 
She's a Twi'lek, right? No, no, no. She's not a Twi'lek. Uh, she's a Tortuga. They they look very similar. No, uh, they're completely with different races. I know, I know, but they do look pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tortuga. Yeah. Torguta. Oh, yeah. Torgruta? I see so many different spellings in chat. Isn't Tortuga just like this Spanish turtle in Spanish? Turtle yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say that sounds like a Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Turtles. Turtles. Yeah. So Touching yeah, a man's have... turtle without permission. Yeah, I, I have this like, to say the least though. Ooh, yeah, I have a very complex thing when it comes to uh, Lord Darnator and the Old Republic. Meanwhile, in fourteen, I just found a cloak that. It, that was basically red in default and it had a mask. So I just decided, hey, I could be Lil Darnator. Is then, uh, when I was opening those those Yu-Gi-Oh cards, there was an Eldlixer card that looked like uh that looked like Lord Donator. I can't remember what it was called. For the life of me. I also did a, I also did like a group photo with uh, back during the first uh online call scene as well too with a couple of people who oh, that is essentially the Tominus uh guild. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to remember, Tom. The, the first year was it just your red bathrobe, and then you got the new robe the, for the next year, or when yeah. did you switch to the special one? Uh, I, I, I switched to that. The, that was that was the second year. Okay. That I switched to the new one. Yeah, because the first year it was just that. Like I just made a joke where it was like, "Ha ha, mm -hmm. uh, I'm in my bathrobe. I look like a dark lord. I am reading the sacred text. I am Lord Donator." And then that mm -hmm. evolved. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Honestly. Out of the shots that I did for that particular session, uh, my favorite one was basically me recreating the scene from a uh, you don't know we don't talk about Bruno basically when it's <laughs> just just holding up the just holding up the lamp basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it took a little trickly of using like an outside program for that particular setup because I need to move this move the lamp into the hands and also do twist the hands in a way to actually make it look like you're actually holding the lamp as well too. It's also kind of bad that you don't actually see the smile behind it behind the lamp as well too. But it's basically doing the that exact shot from you don't we don't talk about Bruno. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah. El Eldlix or the Scarlet Sanguine the card you think of? I don't. I, it was a it was a spell card that had to do with uh, like Eldlich and Eldlixer stuff. I, I going back to Star also, Wars. Um, God, I really want to rewatch it. The uh, the Gendi Gendi Tart uh, Tartakovsky uh, Clone Wars series. Oh my God, that was so good. Yeah. It was it was like very what, what's the word I'm looking for? Very like thematic, like very very like 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 emotional, very tense. Like a lot of those ba battles were choreographed great. I saw the uh, uh, what was it? I saw like one, I saw one of the uh, the the scenes um uh coming back up recently where uh like somebody had posted it where it was um anakin like anakin and uh, and obi-wan were like stationed at like a place for for months uh trying to like figure out how to pad like penetrate a a fortress mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> anakin comes back with like <laughs> he comes back with like this giant like sack of of like bugs and grubs and he's just eating them in front of Obi-Wan to troll him while he's explaining the fact that he that he actually found a place inside, a way inside the uh, the compound. Yeah, I remember it's, that. It's such a good scene because it, it perfectly describes the uh, the uh, dynamic between Obi-Wan and Anakin. Yeah, yeah, I remember actually binge binge watching that whole entire like. Okay, so this yes, and that did have the best General Grievous too. That is 100 percent true. Yeah. I actually did like a whole chronological order of the Star Wars stuff, which also include uh, the the Tartakovsky series, and and I decided of all things to throw in the holiday special, <laughs> just because I wanted to watch it after. Yes, Elixir of White Destiny. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, and interesting enough, uh, this is at the point where Discord actually introduced custom uh this uh custom status messages so ah. what i did was for episode one i actually quoted all of the saga begins as my status messages as i was watching through the whole entire movie my god <laughs> i was hoping for someone to pick up on that 
but I managed to go through the entire movie of that, just quoting the saga begins. <laughs> that was probably incredible. The that it was... shows your dedication to the craft, that's for sure. I know. <laughs> Whether or not it's just me recreating a scene from a movie I have yet to see, which was, again, we don't talk about Bruno, oh, or just me just quoting a song while I'm watching a movie. And also, not to mention, this also includes the fact that uh, I did chronological order for the CGI Clone Wars series mm. in the intended order, not uh, not in the original era order, the original... Uh, but chronological think, order, from where, where they take place like in the story. I, I think it may be, yeah. I think it's maybe either production order, yeah. Yeah, it was in chronological order for the story, which did make that a whole lot better in terms of like, the actual narrative of the thing. What do, you, what do you guys think about watching things in chronological order as opposed to watching a prequel and then doing a part one and then part two or I, I think Re release order versus heavily. release order versus like yeah, yeah. broadcast order. It barely yeah, heavily depends on the series. We're actually yep. going. Villain and I are going through the MCU right now, and I decided I wanted to go through in release order rather than chronological order because there's so many tie-ins allusions to, to other to the previous movies. Yep. So if you start with Captain America first, there's there's a lot lot of you know mentions and throwbacks to uh, or not throwbacks but allusions to Iron Man in it because Iron Man came before it. Yeah, because that uh, you would just miss out on because you haven't seen Iron Man yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe he had like the early days of uh, Stark Industries. Uh, in that yeah. Particular. yeah. So you're saying the content is too meta to watch in chronological order? Eh, on a second watch through, then maybe, but yeah, like I you mean, know, if, if, technically at this point, if now, it if it is a first watch, generally you're gonna want like you're gonna want the uh, the the experience like. Kind of as is, I guess, would be the best way to go about it. Yeah. What about like, uh, what, what about like the Hobbit versus uh, Lord of the Rings? I don't mm. feel like watching the Hobbit and then watching Lord of the Rings. That, see, that one's hard because the the book was written before the movie. I mean, before the movie, before Hobbit book Hobbit, was Hobbit before was written Lord before Lord of the Rings. Of the Rings yeah. yeah. But movies were released opposite, and I just recommend not watching the last two <laughs> Hobbit movies anyway. <laughs> Yeah. I, I watched I watched Legend of Smog four times on planes. I really enjoyed it. But I, okay. I, get, I get why everyone doesn't. Yeah. And the third one was a sleeper. Yeah, most I guess. Oh, Legend for God's Smog sake! Yeah, mostly because of the fact that the the whole entire thing is just like one giant battle, basically. It, it's it's just too bad because like in the first like fifteen minutes of the third movie, they take your mm. smog. Oh, I waited. I, I I watched that movie a bunch of times. I waited years for this conclusion. Yep. I've never watched the dragon. Oh. I've I, never watched the third one. My god. Well, it's okay. It's not okay. No uh, I, okay. When, <laughs> when when I like when I I didn't watch Lord of the Rings. I, I, I saw Fellowship of the Rings when it first came out like a long time mm. ago, but I hadn't like watched any other Lord of the Rings stuff since then. I wasn't expecting to watch a uh, uh watch a a trilogy of of Frodo slowly getting tortured for, for 10 yeah. hours. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus oh, Christ! <laughs> Watching uh, Stephen's uh, review of the Lord of the Rings series, where his description of the Frodo and Sam segments are Frodo walking, Frodo fall says Sam, and then Frodo falls down. Cut to other part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, because it just, it just makes me think of like, like, that four group of hobbits, the, the group of four hobbits there. Because, mm -hmm. like, Frodo definitely had it the worst. Yeah. And Merry oh, and yeah, Pippin yeah. did, like, nothing. Well, they had a great time, honestly. They had, they yeah, no, they had, the yeah. they had the best adventure out of anybody among them. Yeah, no kidding. They found, the they found the legendary pipe weed. Exactly. <laughs> Smoke made a different day. We are sitting on a battle, or on a victory. Cameron in one. Yeah, they, they just got to ride trees into battle and just stay in the shadows. So. Like what like like what was their what was their role? Were they just like ambassadors to the tree people? Like that was that it? Uh so oh, Villain and I have been going through the books a bit with while we were. Uh like uh, audiobooks on road trips and oh, you shit. do learn that they have a lot more of a role there, I guess. Kinda. Six hours long and they still took out Tom Bombadil. 
because he doesn't really have a. I know he does. He does nothing in the, like narratively, but still, he's fun. Yeah, he's, he's the, the easiest like thing to take out, but the most in, one of the most interesting things to take out too. Yeah, yeah he's theoretically the strongest character in the entire world. <laughs> I and it's like, love and you're, that. And you're like, you're like, yeah, I think you'd leave him out. It's like, yeah, yeah, yep. better make a whole new movie. <laughs> oh my god, I would love an entire movie dedicated to Tom Bombadil. Yeah, me too. Make it a three-hour epic. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll have to do a trilogy. That's what yeah. <laughs> trilogy oh, exactly. of Tom. <laughs> the, the Tom trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, I actually do have the Lego versions of that, and I need to get around to that at some point. Also, I got a they lot of my Michael Hogs to finish up. I get that it's like for Frodo's generally kind of, you know doesn't really do very much either. He kind of just walks around and follows and stuff like that. But it is kind of that uh, contrast of someone who's like so physically feeble for having <laughs> the most strong relic in the entire world. That's slowly yeah, corrupting yeah. him as time goes on. But, but it doesn't give him power. That's the thing. Is like you yep. don't see him get stronger as a result of the ring. No, it's he, he just it's a very it's very interesting because like usually when you come out of like a hero's tale like that, you're stronger for it. But Frodo ends up bedridden. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he ends up basically screwed up for the rest of his life, like just well, com the bomb never recovers. Yeah, I was gonna say Glow Stick of Destiny is the best uh, name for it. The Bombadilogy. <laughs> so good. I, I gotta say that again because it sounds so fun. The Bombadilogy. That's our right message. Come read it, Speaking of speaking of stuff, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, wait. It was Breaking Bad that did a animated uh, Hobbit. It's, uh, was it Breaking Bad that did like an animated Hobbit movie? Are you talking about the one that uh, that Zach based, uh, uh, yeah, Mip on in Smiling Friends? I think so. I. It was like a nineteen seventies like animated uh, Lord of the. It was on the Lord of the Rings of the Hobbit um, so movie. I yeah, I know there were two. There was someone who made The Hobbit and then also Lord of the Rings after it. And then there was someone who I think who just made Lord of the Rings. And that one was like rotoscoped for oh most of God, the animation. Oh my God, the, the dodging Gandalf is... gif. I forgot <laughs> about the dodging so Gandalf uncanny. gif. That oh, yeah. Yeah, is incredible. I oh, yeah, love Ralph. that so much. Oh yeah, Ralph Bakshi has done, had a hand in that sort of thing. And I think that one, they only did two, they only got through two towers and then they ran out of funds and Oh my Basically god. Could one of you please find the uh find the dancing Gandalf gif and put it in chat? Hang on. The people have to know. Oh no, I'm only getting I'm only getting in color. Dance again. Or is is it's uh, like it should be like dodging. Like he's dodging arrows. Okay, I think I got it. Live action stuff. Is that? Wait, is it from the uh, animated or is it's, it? It's from it's from the animated. It's definitely from the animated one. I got it. Cause like it's like a rotoscope dodge. Could could you just pop that into uh? Yeah, I just threw it in. Okay. Well, Twitch chat. Let me see. Oh, that that definitely. Yep, looks that's like it. Bad. That's the one. I love that <laughs> gift so ooh, much. Ooh. Oh yeah, that definitely looks like Rob Bashi's work. <laughs> God, the, the animation on the skeleton. Uh, wait, are those orcs? I think I those, I, those, I, I think those are goblins. I don't know. They, it's a Hobbit movie, right? Yeah. If they're if it's if it's a Hobbit, then they're then they're goblins. If it's Lord of the Rings, no, they're I, probably Orkai. Uh, I, I would assume this is in the uh, Mines of Moria. Wow, this is so silly. That's, I, I love that gift so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm just eyes are so wide. He's just like like bobbing back and forth. It's the best. I'm, I'm just looking at the arches. I'm just looking at the arches. And I'm just like the animation on that, that just looks incredible. Yeah, I, it's rotoscope. It's rotoscope. So it's like yeah, drawn over live action video basically. It reminds me of a uh, Dragon's Lair, the arcade yeah. machine. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Going back to Chip and Dale, there it's like yeah. When you compare like the older rotoscope movies of the time, I mean, and then compare that with Chip and Dale, it's just like. There's well, such, there's such a major difference between the two, and it's also, I think it's also because of the fact that, well, you had like the hand-drawn style versus digital animation. That's exactly it. Like, I'm pretty sure like Dale was done through like sophisticated AI, or sorry, Chip. Yep. No, yeah, yeah Chip. Chip. Yeah. 
Oh, actually, Chip and Dale. W oh, yeah, Dale was uh, 2D at some point before he decided to go. Right. 3D. Yeah, because the the whole part of the plot is that he got he got the he got the quote unquote surgery to make him 3D. <laughs> said sophisticated AI, and I really thought, wow, that couldn't be me. <laughs> it was a sophisticated intelligence. Now. Sophisticated yeah. AF. Yeah. The 3D surgery as opposed to the triple D surgery. Yep. <laughs> that would be some crazy. Did, did they give context as to why Peter Pan is old in that movie? Oh, yes. There, uh, okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, there is, there is context. And it's kind of tragic if you... Look up the history behind that. Like, considering, like, the actual, uh, actor behind who originally played Peter Pan. Ah. Uh. Yeah, it's... It, it's kind of... Tra yeah, it's definitely tragic, to say the least. But yeah, beyond that... Hmm, I'm not gonna say anything else. Yeah, there's also the one thing that was, like... Uh, yesterday I kind of timed it out, but, uh... Ugly Sonic! I, yeah, I, I've seen I've seen the clips of that. Mm -hmm. Like that that's this that's the kind of thing where it's like the, I feel like the writing of that movie is probably good, and like the the acting probably takes it pretty far. But my God, just like I can't get over how just I can't get over the rotoscoping. Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, yeah, I definitely remember like towards the very end. I remember seeing like one particular uh, animated character is like. You can tell it was rotoscope because you see the head and the hands, but the the body is human. Like it is clearly a human body, but they decided to uh, overlay it with a with a like a deer head and and hands to match. It it was distracting, very distracting. It kind of reminds me of the deer from Adventure Time that has the human hands. Oh yeah, but then oh. again, that's but then again, that is a pure two D animation compared to right. But is uh, that I, the I, one? I, well, I, yes, it's, it's the one where like, the gif of taking off the hooves. Yeah, yeah. But then again, that's also. <laughs> but then there's also at least some context to that compared to just a deer that just just this <laughs> deer Trisman, deer. I hate that deer. Oh, <laughs> uh, that that kind of animation is. I've kind of been on a um, Ed Ed and Eddie kick on YouTube, just going through all the clips, and man, do I love some of the things they did with the animation in that show. The the Especially. episode where they were trying to like take apart uh, take apart things and, like and like learn yep. that was such a good episode. That's where they got to have as much fun as they could with doing whatever they wanted animation wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one person one person in the chat is saying like my eyes glaze over for the most of the movie until I heard J.K. Simmons and it's just like yeah. My main issue is Bailey Chip and Dale's uh, VA just because of the fact that I'm not familiar with Lonely Island all that much and. Honestly, is Monterey Jack still played by Jim Cummings? I don't think so, but I do know Jim Cummings is in the movie. Okay. Beyond that, I'm not going to say anything else in terms of like, the actual uh, casting, to say the least. Because, for the most part, yeah, the, the whole movie is basically just a freeze frame uh, reference to the movie. Oh, God. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so yeah, speaking of like animation. I was thinking back to like um, to Steven Universe, uh, yeah. the exposed for Steven Universe, by the way, uh, <laughs> like pretty much like the the, the finale, pretty much like the the series finale to, to base Steven Universe, not uh not not future, um, yeah, okay. where uh, Steven gets his gem ripped out, mm -hmm. and uh, and there's like the, the 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 scene where it's like he's getting put back together. There's one part of that scene where, like, it's kind of like, it, it, it's, I'm trying to think, there's like, um, like, it's, it's them sort of like, uh, like, coming together and like laughing and dancing and whatnot, and then they kind of do like a, uh, God, what would you, it, uh, it's when, like, I think it's when, like, Steven's, like, glowing or whatever, uh, yeah, as he's being put back together, and, and it does like a, it does like a, like a, like a dolly shot, um, like 90 degrees around the front of, uh, White Diamond's head. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And then like her eyes open, she's like looking at the uh, at the she's looking at them, like fusing together. I think so. Yeah. I, I thought that was 3D animated. That was 2D. <laughs> that was hand drawn animation. Damn. There. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you could you do.
all I can remember from that part is just Pink Steven yelling, she's gone. Yeah, no, that, that was a, I love that one. I love that bit. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen James Baxter uh, in the chat. And I'm just, I have to say it. James Baxter. Yeah, yeah, the, oh, from when he was in Adventure Time? Yep. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to see if I can, if I could find exactly where it is. Yeah, okay. So, let me mute it just so I can take a look at it. My god, that looks so good. Okay. Uh, copy you are at, uh, at current time. I'm gonna, I'm just pasting it in the chat. But like from seven, like from 17 seconds to 20 seconds, where it, where it, it, they do like the dolly shot to like, to, to turn towards White Diamond. That's not, that's not a 3D model. That was hand drawn. Wow. Oh, right, this. Knowledge of perspective. Yeah. Good night, villain. Hi, villain. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Hmm. It looks like a 3D model. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think there was another, there was another movie that did this same thing, and I cannot remember what it is now. Like, I, I, think I, think the, I think the illusion comes in from this, like, you're also seeing the, ro it rotate around yeah. Steven. Yep. So you're seeing mm -hmm. different sides of Steven as you're seeing different sides of the in the back. Oh, I'm just thinking well, about it, I, I, I'm just like, I, I'm so impressed with how talented, like, like, yeah. well, legendary Disney animator James Baxter is, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but just like how talented people can be in general with, with, with yeah. art like that. It's, it's incredible. Oh yeah, we, we live in a really, really good time. There's so much talent. It's like in, in every industry, like guitarists are insane. Yep. It's like Eddie Van Halen was really impressive in 1977, but there are a lot of people even better than that. And it's like yeah. the animation industry is really the same story. Yeah, new styles are being developed entirely. Yeah. What what kills me is that like nobody, it, like, because of how we live, it doesn't matter if it's if it's like good or like artistic or whatever, as long as it's making money. Yeah, it's so yeah. Much, hate that. Value, it's crazy. It's like so much talent goes into you're, it. It's like you, then you get to like make a meet your salary. It's great. Yep. It's like, or, uh, it's, it's like, it, like your we, we live in an age where it's like where your worth as an artist is seen by like the as seen by like the general public and the people who, who pay out is determined by how profitable you are and it sickens me I, well, I feel like and I, I, I went into this a lot on my stream but I feel like if the rules around copyright were changed in some large degree this would solve itself a little bit easier. oh yeah I don't know what these are, but I know that at the heart it's a copyright issue. I don't know. I don't know what the fix is, but yeah, our artists need just so much more, so much more respect, so much more value. And, uh, it's, like, it's just so good. And those are the things that's like stick stick in your head. It's like this, the way you felt perceiving some art. Exactly. So long as they're not chasing, the yeah. So long as they're not chasing the copyright law for petty revenge. Obviously. Uh, let's not get into that. I know. And I have to deal with that on my end. <laughs> God, I can't wait for November. As an aside, Mickey Mouse's copyright's up next year. It's a hundred. Uh, classic Mickey Mouse. Yes, yes. there's a distinction. Yep. Yeah, Steamboat Willie, Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> well, well that, but it'll be a little be a watershed moment. We'll have to see what they do. Which, which is kind of like how like uh like Winnie the Pooh's copyright was up last year, and uh, but that's like Winnie the Pooh without the shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the, the book Winnie the Pooh. Yep. yep. But this is th this is a hundred flat years. Like, if they try to push it back up past a hundred years, it's going to be like, all right, well, how long that? It's like a hundred years seems like a pretty long time. On the one hand, though, I do at least agree with the fact that we need to cut back on the copyright stuff. It's just what's attached to it that we're taking issue with. I, uh, it's, it's gonna, not, I'm going to play really cut back. It's just give the copyright to the artist. It's like that, that is yeah. Also, yeah, command yeah. their art. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. That, that's a good because I was gonna I was gonna play uh, devil's advocate and be like there there is good that comes from copyright even even if it does like suck. It was like what was it? I I, I think like I feel like um like I want to say Jared went through this at one point where it's like uh members of like Dragon Force gave him the thumbs up to do his uh to do like uh, the drum cover of uh, of Through the Fire and the Flames and and the record company's like nope. Yep. Yeah. Dude, heck, Metallica got their own concert muted on Twitch last year. Yep. They did I a concert on Twitch, they played their own song, they got themselves muted and muted for sure. 
It's like the record. That's the thing. Is like when it, when it comes to musicians. How, to how dare you, Metallica? How dare you play Metallica's music, Metallica? <laughs> and then there was the. Don't you know that, that Metallica owns that music, Metallica? I, I just remembered the the copyright free music that played on top of it. <laughs> oh no, that was during the. Uh, no, I know what you're talking about. That was during. Uh, that was during E3. Right. That was. Uh, I don't think that was Metallica either, though. There was there was there was like there was like a concert during one of the uh, during one of the presentations, and they put copyright free oh. music over it. I, I definitely remember it happened with Metallica, and people were. Or maybe it was like, it was like maybe it was like a member of Metallica, because I remember it was just one guy with a guitar, and they put copyright free music over it. Oh, it was Timber has it. Yeah, Timber has it. It was Metallica. Metallica at the Game Awards. That's right. Yeah, it was BlizzCon. I don't know how I'm still in first, but I guess I'm gonna win. <laughs> you did it. Roy's our boy. Hooray! Yeah! Woo! Ever played Fossil Fighters? I have not. I've seen the Jaden Animations video on it. I'm just... I was just thinking, wait, does he not have an animated series? Then I'm just thinking, oh, right, that's Dinosaur King. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about Dinosaur King. I absorb most of that anime through four kids. So it's probably not the best, even even so, oh, Dinosaur King was probably made for children anyway. To be Always fair, it was also because of the fact that it was, it's technically a sequel series to uh, to some arcade games that uh, Sega, Sega had, and they decided to make a dinosaur theme, and then they decided, well, make an anime series, and yep. then based, based that series on having a DS game. Aeroblade 21X, I unfortunately do remember fighting Foodons. Oh, I love fighting food on. Let's uh, go. I, I, all I remember is like is the oh. fact that they took a, a god like the Can Can song and turned that into the theme yeah, song dude. for it. That theme song has been stuck in my head for twenty years. It's really quite incredible. These monsters once were edible. <laughs> oh, um. De what? Depending <laughs> on the spice you use, your food on could be really bad, 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 bad. Fighting food dogs. It's great food with attitude. Fighting food dogs. Like oh okay. my god. Oh, it was, it was the, it was the biggest earworm ever! Oh my gosh, Tom, I think I need to link, link you to a bad anime. A <laughs> bad on, anime? It's on YouTube, it's only three episodes long, it's called Dragon Half. And Dragon got, Half? Dragon Half, yeah. It's about H -A -L -F? a half girl. H-A-L-F? Oh, okay. Yeah, half. Wait, yeah, she's half, is half it about Coco Kiryu? <laughs> no, no, kind of, actually, looks just like her. Uh, it's, it's, a very it's in the game. 90s. It's very poorly made, but it's hilarious. I, uh, for the three episodes, honestly, you just spend an hour watching it, and it, it, it stuck with me. And the ending is that same sort of can can earworm, but it's some like classic Mozart stuff. Wait, and I've, was I, that's it, another it, is this a dub of it? It's a dub. It's a full oh! English dub, yeah. And uh, the, the, the manga goes into depth quite a bit more than the show does, but the show basically is just like, why are we making a TV show? We should stop right now. So, it's like the, really crazy. I searched this up and I found one gif of, I assume, the main character's top exploding. <laughs> that also happens! So, you have lots to look forward to in this one hour, as you can see. Yeah. I recommend it to everyone, Dragonhead. I, I hesitate to, to talk about this because it... It didn't age well when it first came out. Uh, the, uh, the Ghost Stories English dub? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <sighs> it's a. Oh, it's a. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> okay, the, I've uh, seen clips. It, so, Ghost Stories was a really bad horror anime that mm. uh, didn't go anywhere. It was probably more when of when it was it when I guess I don't know who approached who, but like a dubbing company picked it up and made it into a joke dub, but a very offensive joke dub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember watching that on a, on a str uh, someone hosted it on their own private stream, just, just showing off for a bunch of people, yep. It's, I mean, here's the thing. It is really funny. Wait, But it is incredibly offensive. ADV picked it up? I mean, that wouldn't be too surprising, but still, ADV was the one to pick that up. I'm pretty, I, I, I don't, I don't have a source for this, but I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that the creator of Ghost Stories liked the English dub better. 
because of the fact that they decided to just go completely off oh, the road. Completely, yeah. 100% ham with it. Oh my god. I'm trying to think of like what I can quote on this stream that won't get me canceled. <laughs> okay, t Tom, maybe if you could do a dub, if you could do a fan dub of any show, what would be your first one? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, oh, so it wouldn't even, it probably wouldn't even be my favorite anime either. It doesn't have to be. Just what do you think has some funny situations? Like, you think you could do a Monster Ranger dub? That'd be funny. Oh yeah, that'd be, that would be, that'd be pretty funny. Yes. There's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of potential there for uh, not not even for like a fan dub but maybe even a little like a, like a bridge series. Yeah, bridge. Maybe that's what yeah. I'm that's the okay, uh, that's a good that's a good line. There's one character in it who's just like probably not written this way in the original, but she's a devout Christian, and she and she there's a, there's one part where they're talking about like a uh, like the internet. It's like the internet was a is a is a a gift from our devout Lord and uh, Savior Jesus, and like but like. Uh, I can't remember the rest of the line, but but you know I just realized that I can't even quote that because that also has a pretty pretty racy stuff in it too. <laughs> oh my god. I think, uh, the, I think one of the tamer lines is like the the devout Christian girl saying like, "Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior?" And one of the characters goes, "No, I'm Jewish." <laughs> no. I, which in and of itself isn't funny, just that it's funny coming from an anime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, like, that, the context of, yeah, an anime. Honestly, I was thinking if I were to do a dub, uh, it'd probably be One Piece, but then again, there's so Oh my god, Tenmar, Tenmar, thank you for reminding me of that. The Christian girl has a cell phone, she goes, Verizon, like Jesus, it never stops working for you. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Honestly, oh yeah, the girl, the girl who was in love with a rabbit. <laughs> Just like, oh my goodness, uh, I. <laughs> oh, the little things he'd say. Touch me. His reprimands. Touch me harder. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen None Piece. Is, None Piece. Uh, I mean, I, I think I've seen like maybe like a clip here or there, but I haven't really actually seen. Then again, I. Hmm. I may have seen something else. But it may be just uh. Random Beyblade. That could be fun. Which one? <laughs> I mean, then again, how is it when he handled the G the Moses scene? Do you want to do that uh, in a joking manner or just play that completely straight? Oh wait, the the uh the the Mo the Moses scene from Beyblade. Oh, from Beyblade. <laughs> yes, that's. A How does Sekui do you do that? Do you want to handle like a, like, uh, what Loda Kuripo does occasionally in uh, in Yu Gi Oh! the Grid series where it's just like play, play out like completely straight but in the voices? Or do you want to do something like, comedic in that matter? But then again, playing this straight. Hmm. Sometimes, you know, if, if it gives you the option to play it straight and be even fun with doing it that way, then that's a good opportunity to take. Yeah, because, yeah, because I know uh, Loda Kari will, will say like actual lines from the four kiss dub. Yeah, as as the character. Uh, very, 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 very good. Like, uh, like uses of them too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's, it's it's a good thing to do every now and then because sometimes the writing is just on the thing. Yep. Ooh, yeah. They don't Actually, have to throw the baby out with the bathroom. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful Joe the first. That that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching that, uh, when that was airing, not too bad. I, there was, I forgot there was a Beautiful Joe anime. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be fun to do an Inuyasha bridge, actually. I was one of my favorite scenes in that is uh, in the start of, has anyone, have any of you guys ever seen Inuyasha? Oh yeah. I've seen oh, part yeah, of it. One of the, one of the things that happens a lot is they go from, they're in feudal Japan, but feudal Japan's being like constantly attacked by demons. And they have to like, they go from town to town on their journey and they're traveling with this Buddhist monk who's like protecting them from the demons and stuff like that. And Inuyasha is also doing that. But anyway, so when they go from town to town, they're always like, what? The villagers are always like, oh, we just got eaten up by demons. Half of 
everybody is dead. And and the Buddhist monk's like, oh, of course. Well, for food and lodging, we will bury your dead and say prayers for them. And th that happens like seven times. Yep. And but every time that they're every every time that they're like burying the dead, it's always just Miroku and Inuyasha. It's just the the monk and the dog demon. And I, I'm always just looking at that. And in my head, I'm just I've got the abridged and going on. And it's like. Inuyasha secretly loves doing it because <laughs> not because he cares about the humans, just because he loves digging. Because <laughs> he's a dog. Oh my god. Because he's a dog. Dig a hole. Dig a hole. Dig a hole. Dig I, a I, hole. I, I, I take my choice back on the uh, the uh, Monster Rancher one. I would do uh, fan dub of the F Zero anime. Oh yeah, that would be good. <laughs> oh dude, that'd be so fun. You could do. You could probably rock an awesome uh, Captain Falcon. Uh, oh my god, like, well, my my favorite thing about that is uh. Uh, Rick, Rick, Rick Wheeler in that in that anime is, is played by the same guy who plays Tristan in Yu-Gi-Oh. Wait, was that four kids? You did that? Yes, yeah, they they did do the dub for that one. Okay. And I'm just thinking of the uh, Phoenix Wright anime. Oh God, yeah. Being a nice friend with that. Right, right. It's, it's that. My God, like. They did shot for shot recreations of some of those freakouts. <laughs> like th they'll yeah. just be like, they'll just be like standing in the same pose in the same area, freaking out over the fact that like they were caught. I will say, ver very, uh, very true to form, I, I suppose. Oh yeah. And of course, people were bringing up uh, you being Helsing at first, and just like, running in the back of it. Yeah, don't be afraid to actually join up with certain uh, groups as well too if you want to get into voice acting. Uh, yeah, well too. Like a there's, a, there's, a, there's a Discord group for, uh, for, um, uh... For stuff like that? Well, for, uh, I'm tr I couldn't think of the word for it. Bur burgeoning voice I'm trying to think of the word for it, because the first thing that came oh. to mind was wannabe, and that's not what I wanted oh, to no. say. <laughs> we're, we're both aspiring. Aspiring, aspiring. thank okay. you! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Words are hard. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad Wannabe was not where I wanted to go with that. <laughs> I see budding, and I just also, think of SpongeBob. I, yeah, I, can you reproduce by budding? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Oh, shoot. Fun fact Rick Wears Japanese BA is also freaking Sephiroth. Uh, which. Which one? Uh. Is it the Evangelion one? <laughs> I aspire to. To. I, I aspire wannabe. to be a wannabe voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> Good just lord. Like, just like. All right. I think I'm gonna uh, end the stream here. We've we'll been going for over four hours now. I think we. I think I've made my points about animation and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a rather pervasive topic. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's this throughout. Hey, someone got a uh, tunic. And also, apparently, the uh, the oh, somebody somebody in chat picked up a tunic. Yep. Nice. I actually. Nice. I actually just beat that the other day. I need to go back and get all the uh, the rest of the stuff I'm looking for. But the uh, the yeah. in, the instruction booklet. Yeah. Hell yes. I think I've got two pages to find, maybe three. Do we have any fan art? Hi, bud. I'm almost done. You just sit yeah, there at me with the big old brown eyes. How'd that hailstorm turn out? I, apparently fine. I hear th I still hear thunder, but nice. Well, at least uh, at least you still have electricity. Power didn't go out. Yeah. Nope. No power outages. Yep, actually, the, uh, actually, the power might have gone out, and no, we actually never mind. I was thinking the power might have gone out, and I might still be up because of solar panels, but I don't have like a, I don't have a power bank, so, mm -hmm. and, and it's night, so. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing solar about the night. Nope. Bingo! Solar wind. The solar wind. Captain K man with the 17 months of tier one. He's a sub for your sub. Mwah. Uh, I guess. Uh, also, once we're done with fan art, I'll read the uh the uh all the notifications that I missed. Got a few pieces of fan art. All from the same person. All from uh, Tina Katharina. Uh, ranging from like the Smash Bros stuff to the uh, uh, Ocarina of Time randomizer I did. Nice. Ah, the Marshmallow Bunny. Thank you very much for that. Oh yeah, with the uh, Ocarina of Time randomizer, me and Liam kind of trying to <laughs> help out what we could. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, just both of us, like whenever you were trying to uh, remember things about like dungeons or stuff. We, oh, yeah. We just both, like, 
Did, did you did you have like the uh, the the like the guide open or something? No, we just both do randomize like on our current time randomizers every week. Oh, <laughs> we were we were both holding each other's hand, but also holding your hand. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yep. This is it's uh it's as Tina put it uh, Manavi. It's uh, Manatee as Navi. Oh. Meanwhile, oh, I'm, I'm just thinking, I love it. Meanwhile, just speaking of dungeon stuff in in a more on tension sort of thing. I still can't get over the fact that your Krug voice and uh, Mawman's uh, Zug, Zug voice, voice are very similar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love yeah, the scrunched little nose. Yeah. That's like knee. Bubble. Uh, ha the hatless havoc fishing hole, the fishing hole man. <laughs> you get yeah. his, you get his hat, it, take his hat away from him. Yeah, I'm just thinking like at certain points uh, when you do Krug, it, when you get high, it definitely sounds like a bit like Zug. Yeah. <laughs> And the person tongs, and then uh, the newest uh, Adult Swim series, uh, Pit and Palatena, from the creators of Rick and Morty. It's Pit and Palatena. Pit, I'm gonna give you the power of flight, Pit. Just uh, go, go take, go take down Medusa, Pit. He's like, oh, I don't know. I guess oh, jeez, I, I, I don't know, Palatena. I, I, I can't fly that well, and I, I never learned how to read. <laughs> No, no, it's easy. You can you can go left through the screens, Morty. Uh, you can go left through the screens. It's, uh, no, it's, it's fine, Pit. Just just use just just, just use phonics, Pit. Oh yeah, just the answer. You'll from, be able to learn uh, how to read in, in in no time, Pit. Oh yeah, just the answer from the uh, from that Smash Mass. Finland. <laughs> Every time you have to ask me that when I when I get hurt during that when you ask me specifically, are are you okay, Corey? And I have that. Re Good lord. All right, uh, Bub. If you want to pop that into into fan art as well, because th that counts. Like, if you if you got like video game versions of of stuff that that relates to like the stuff we've been doing, then yeah, pop it in here. Uh, Cyber Mink was sixty three months of uh, tier Violet, one. Finland. I mean, Dra it's not Dragon like level the hundred bits. Say before we get started, I have today's volcano news recently been discovered that climate change will have an impact on volcanic activity due to the fact that pressure dictates eruptions. The absence of glacier ice will increase the rate of eruptions, but decrease their explosive power. So more eruptions, but less like, uh, less big eruptions. Gurganov with the 690 bits saying, ah, that's right. Boo lust. Uh, Storm exploding with the 67 months of tier one saying, I don't catch your streams as often as I wish I could, but I do keep up with the VODs when I can. Well, thank you very much. And that unknown skull to 72 months of prime saying six years of being a sub man time sure flies glad to continue supporting you your content has helped cheer me up through tough times and i hope to continue supporting for years to come thank you very much crimson wolf 733 with the eight months of tier one logan grub with the 68 months of tier one queen nero with the 16 months of tier one saying 16 months of tom mega dude 64 with 100 bits saying for the record tom i'll have you know that i'm a regular 200 cc man myself so i know exactly what you're talking about go fast eat ass exactly Gurganov with Leonard Bits saying, we are escaping to the one place that has been corrupted by capitalization, streams. <laughs> uh, the Maskey with the tier one sub, thank you very much. Cosplayer Dork with the 13 months of tier one saying, three Dan's is too many. We need to Highlander the situation. Oh my God. <laughs> Enigmatic Iconoclast with the five months of tier one saying, five months, woo. Gurganov with Leonard Bits saying, they'd become Steven. Oh my God, T I forgot, like a tune of the Italian Greyhound with the Steven look. Drumbox. One of these days you're gonna get that sword. <laughs> Dr he's never getting that. Well, I don't think we're ever coming back to that fair. Dromok with the 21 yeah. months of Prime. Uh, Magma Cody with the 15 months of Tier 3 saying, 15 months and what a fine day to take a drive. Wait, is that a blue shell? Have fun racing. Nerd Art and Games with the 500 bits saying, here I have 500 bits since those are those of you who don't know. I always get fifth in Mario Kart, so there you go. Shigami Nekamata with the 59 months of Tier 1. Steel Bounce with a bit saying, and before we fight Sora, this fight is sponsored by Puzzle and Dragon Battle Tournament and Raid, Sh Raid Shadow Legends. Rising Sun uh, 98 with the 9 months of Tier 1 saying, I mean, I only went to Disney World back in 2004. I kind of found it overwhelming. Like the amount of people, or I, this is four hours ago, so I probably won't get an answer out of that one. <laughs> Hadrini Master with the 56 months of Prime yeah, saying, Love fair. watching your streams when I have the time. Best of luck tonight, Tom, and may everyone have a good night tonight. Also, how is the video game museum in Texas? It's pretty good. I would uh, I'd check it out. There's a video game mu museum in Texas. I think it's north of Dallas. I don't remember exactly where it is. Like Plano or something. Give it a, give it a look. Uh, oh, if I ever have a chance to go to Texas, that'll, that'll be option. Well, if you go to Dallas anyway, because Texas is big. The only one of the few states where you can drive for 10 hours and still be in the same state. 
Seal Sprigs with the 10 months of tier one saying, hey, Tom, I've been able to catch a stream for a while and I have to get back to work, but I look forward to the VOD. Good luck and have fun. Thank you. Ty the guy 1117 with the tier one sub. Stunt Muppet with the 100 bits saying, I assume we've seen the challenge of the Super Friends Cartoon Network bumper of Solomon Grund Grundy wants pants to fame. I have not seen that one, but I'll have to look it up. Suave Ass McGee with the six months of tier one saying, woohoo, Morrow Kart. And it's going to begin now. As we end the stream, it's going to begin. Also, looking at the 28 months of tier one saying, yo, Tom, how are things lately? I'm just getting over some real bad food poisoning. I'm fine now, so no, no worries. Anyway, I hope you have some fun carding tonight. I did. I do. I am. Ricky the Hero Pong with the 54 months of Prime. Uh, Red Cinder with the 56 months of tier one saying, gotta go fast. Death Gift with 32 months of tier one. Uh, Gamer Girl Life tw 2108 with the th three, uh, 300 bits saying, so I've officially beaten Kingdom Hearts 1 blind. I'm playing the 1.5, 2.5 remix. Next up, uh, Chain of Memories. Oh, good luck with Chain of Memories. Aelita with a raid of 25. Captain Joe with the 60 months of tier one. Captain Joe gifting a tier one sub to Aelita. Dr. Zeus with the 100 bits saying, to be, to be honest, Tom, I, I feel you. I adore the DC animated universe. It's really good. Frosty 80 with the four months of prime. Deep Dragon with three months of tier one saying, just realized that was not sub. Tiger Tiger with the 100 bits saying, I get coconut mauled. Dr. Zeus with the 100 bits saying, oh, hi, Tom. Welcome. Dr. Zeus with the 100 bits saying, I am chibi, by the way. Uh, I am horrible at this. You're uh, you're you're a uh, a short gremlin of a VTuber. Uh, Trisma with the 100 bits saying, Tom and Corey, I deeply appreciate you. Okay, yeah, we read that one before. Complimenting, uh, complimenting my comments is funny as someone who deals with the demons of self-doubt. It gen genuinely means uh, the world to me. Well, thank you. Phoenix926 with the 75 months of tier two saying, beep, beep, I'm a shoe. Dr. Zeus with the fighter bit saying, was fun playing some kart with you, Tom. I'm still baffled how I got first at last race, but besides that, hope you have a good night of racing. The Marshmallow Bunny, hey, we just saw art from, from her uh, with the two months of tier one saying, hi, Tom, this is my first time subbing for a Twitch channel and you are my pick. Apparently it's not because you were subbed for two months. You're a super cool guy and a fun watch. I hope you like my art, the art block at the end of the stream. Well, thank you very much for the, uh, for the sub and the art. Dr. Zeus with the 100 bits saying, yeah, it's sort of a spinoff of uh, Warriors focusing on uh, no Nobunaga with more strategy. I'm assuming that was going back to the Samurai Warrior stuff. Also, uh, it was Pokemon Conquest for uh, Nobu Nobunaga's ambition. Yes, yes. And uh, Damien Harbinger with the 9 months of tier 1 saying, hey, Tom, just turned to say, what's up? Domari Gato, 137 with the 10 months of tier 1. Damien the Harbinger, uh, Damien Harbinger gifted the tier 1 sub to Panic in Sky Awkward. One of my soundproof, one of my sound fo uh, foam panels just fell off. Mega Swole gifting five tier one subs. Dr. Zeo's gifting five tier one subs. So more cousin, I just want to say, here's food for thought. It's raining men, let the bodies hit the floor could mean the same thing. There you go. Uh, so for cousin, I need with the hundred bits saying, okay, half past 10 in which time zone? That's for the, it's raining men thing again. So for cousin, uh, oh, wait, wait, what? Oh yeah, Misfit AF with the 20 months of tier one saying, hope everyone's having fun. So for cousin, I need with a bit saying, she's a ghost and a bitch. I don't know what that was in reference to. Uh, Ghost Stories. Oh, yeah, yeah. Queen Nero with 100 bits saying, Hello, Thomas, someone who owns the original box set of Ghost Stories signed by most of the cast. There is still a lot of misconceptions about how misconceptions about how it went down. I really recommend checking out the cartoon Chipper's video on it. Also, has a great line. Uh, drop the Krispy Kremes, uh, Serpico, and you can fuck with my friends, you can fuck with my family, but don't fuck with my cat, and fill the hole, hole filler. Yep, I remember fill the hole, hole filler. Captain K-Man with the 17 months of tier one, and that is it. Thank you all so much for subbing. Here is a here's a sub. Just there it is. Ooh, good chat. So like we need a disowning in categories recap lineup. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we did have a very like like talkative uh thing here. We also got one more piece of fan art. It's uh it's me and uh made in Dragon Ball Z universe by Bubba Z. Mm -hmm. You did say you wanted get back into this at some point, right? Yeah, I, I kind of do. Whoops, I need to full screen that. There oh, we go. Oh, wow, it looks just like you. Yeah. It's pretty good. I'm just a person with a pants, actually. Yeah, with the with the jeans, the, the very, <laughs> I like no. I, I like that the gi is tucked into the <laughs> pants. They are so oh high up. <laughs> oh man. Super soul, just... oh my God, the super soul thing could be becoming a god tuber. I was impressed that it's like, oh, he's got an orange shirt. That's very tall. It's just the, the blue pants. It's, it's like, oh, it goes so much farther than that. The Goku key. I love the, uh, what's the lower body? That's the baseball uniform that looks like uh, Android 17's outfit. Yeah, he's got the, yeah. he's got the same sort of uh, cuffs at the bottom of the leg. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the Android. Like the look. socks, uh, it's kind of like going for the socks kind of look. I think in, I think in, in, uh, in game discussion as well. Let me see if I could find it. I think Bubba also posted the, my move set. Yeah, here it is. 
uh, Ill Flash, Super Dragon Fist, Critical Upper, Maximum Charge. I mean, Maximum Charge is just a staple. Uh, Innocence Breath, Spirit Sword. Potential Unleashed is my Awoken skill. My evasive, evasive skill is Dimension Cannon. You're a spear, Spirit Sword kind of guy? Yeah, I'm, uh, what's his name? I'm Kuobara. Oh, okay. You're a messy. <laughs> I can't. I can't not do that voice. You're a messy. There we go. Move set still a work in, in progress. Uh, Ill flash, Innocence, breath, and dimension cannon are all shouts. Oh, fantastic! Very on brand with how loud I can get. Yep. Whoops. I keep full screening OBS instead of not full screaming. Screaming. I'm going to bed. All scream. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah, it's like 1 uh, 1.30 over here. It is 12.30 here. I need to rework those uh, sound foam panels. All right. So we're oh, no. The echo. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> why? Why? The, why? Why? The foam, 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 foam. Put it back up. Up, up, up. Uh, you know what? Let's make somebody's night. Let's see who else is streaming Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. We're still gonna ring with the Bombadilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Last time I raided somebody who didn't have a lot of viewers, they thought I was a bot. So <laughs> we're gonna, uh, we can't, we, no more, uh, no more references to VPNs in our raids. Oh, right. <laughs> well, what about Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sure that'll go over great. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Let's not try to make us uh, get banned just because of... J just shout, Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. <laughs> eat them up, Peanut eat butter them chocolate up. flavor! Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. I still love that one a bit of fan art from the Deadbeats. <laughs> just Hellboard eh, singing it and Dash <laughs> just dancing. Yep. Hellboard is definitely Reese's Puffs energy. <laughs> Can't wait for that on uh, Thursday. <laughs> Also, I can't wait for. Yeah, tomorrow is uh tomorrow's um uh oh no wait we're not doing it tomorrow because uh I think one of our players is uh oh, right, right, is away. Right, yeah. We'll be back on uh, on June first. Yeah, June first. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I I, ha I finally have a day off. <laughs> Hooray! Ooh, Ray, hey. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, we have Steph with us, so they can endorse the raid. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know what? We'll make this guy's night because he's sad. Uh, oh no. All right, oh, so no. we're, we're reading with the Bombadilogy. Bombadilogy, there we go. I, I realize that I might, uh, I, I realize there's an inherent risk with sending people to random, uh, uh, streamers because they could be saying anything. Yep. <laughs> and we are going to raid, uh, Nate Dog 10 247. Well, you know what? We got staff, so if, it, if he is saying something that he shouldn't be saying on stream, <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be able to take care of it immediately. He's just trying to be under the radar. You're, you're putting this yeah, exactly. Right I'm putting it on here. Uh, he's streaming Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as well. Uh, stream title is Mario Kart Stream, and in parentheses, I have Joy-Con Drift. I am sad. So be sure to give him some of that oh. time and his love, and I will see you all back here on Thursday for I don't know what. We're not doing Z the end of Xenoblade yet. We're probably actually going to do the rest of um, uh, Ocarina of Time randomized with crowd control, and I'll turn on Channel Point Redemption for uh, for that one as well. Give me some of that oh, Tommy's Tom. Tom love. i got to set the prices super high. Give me some of that Tommy's love, and I'll see you all back here on Thursday. Uh, so, yeah. Later. <laughs>